Hey! Why? Let's go! This show fucking stinks. And the fact that you listen, we are very, very thankful for it. AJ, you never cease to amaze me with your toxicity, pal. You got a couple of these? God damn it! <laughs> what the fuck are you doing? Fuck, fucking fuck! Hello, beautiful people. Welcome to our humble abode, the FanDuel Thunderdome. On this winter Wednesday, January 25th, 2023, this dumbass sports show starts right now. Football! We only got a few weeks left. Yeah, I in. You know, we've been pounding the drum hard that we need to enjoy every single NFL game that we have. And although the Philadelphia Eagles just beat the fuck out of the New York Giants, yep. the New York Giants had a hell of a year, all the games have been fantastic as of late. Mm -hmm. Truly been barn burners. And I've been trying to be positive. Hate to be the bearer of bad news. Like to be old positive Pat, but I want to let everybody know we don't have a lot of football left. No, we don't. So every conversation we have, let's make sure we take it for what it is, which is something that is valuable. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Not only what's well, not the sports media world, but for us, because we are just a few weeks away from having to talk about so much bullshit yeah. that mm -hmm. we have to act like matters. So whenever we're talking about this weekend's matchups, where the AFC championship is on the line and the NFC championship is on the line and four teams are vying for two spots for Lombo. Let's remember that this is the best time of the year. Hell yeah. Let's remember that we're living in the good old days. That's right. Mm -hmm. And let's remember that when we break this thing down and we get a chance to chat with incredible people today, tomorrow, the next day, wise, the next wise, week, wise, and then wise. at Radio Row, obviously, we have a wise, stacked wise. card mm -hmm. uh, from out there in Arizona. Let's enjoy the hell out of this. The Talks to Tables yeah. here. I know you guys enjoy everything. At Boston Connor, at Ty Schmidt. Not wearing the same uniform today. Is everything okay? You guys all, you guys off? Uh, yeah. Chemistry oh, yeah. good? Everything's good. Yeah. Everything's, Everything's fantastic. Good. We did our day yesterday. Had no idea, of course, because that's just kind of how it goes. But I did wear something I knew Ty didn't have just in case. What was that? This, whatever this is, this button down, little lumberjack, warm lumberjack shirt, lumberjack jacket. It is kind of a flannel, but without the flannel appeal. Bingo, there it is. I will let everybody know, and that's one half of the hammer. Don! Cowboys tone digs looking fantastic. And joining us, speaking of looking fantastic. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Cooler every day somehow. Yeah. Mm -hmm. No idea how that works. Must have a. I forget who it was. Maybe I saw a video or a report on the internet. Chris Brown has so many clothes. He has like a department store as a closet. Yep, saw that as well. The rack's in there. This guy has to have the same exact thing yep. because he shows up looking has cool to. all the time. Host of the Man to Man podcast, nine-year NFL vet, ladies and gentlemen, Darius J. Baller. Yeah, D-Butt! D-Butt, storm out there, real. Oh, yeah. Yeah. So a couple weeks ago, we got the, uh, the freeze storm yeah. right mm -hmm. the flash freeze where it was it, it wasn't a flash freeze certainly did freeze everything but the way they were pitching it was uh whoever mother nature mm -hmm. was going to left hand like a snowball left hand rain and then right hand <laughs> ice it down yep. that's right like jack frost or whatever mm -hmm. yep. that didn't happen now it did get very cold a lot of ice a lot of bad things happened a lot of people lost power and it was crash but it was nowhere near as big for us here in indiana we don't know about everywhere else. Right. But for us, what we were being told what it was going to be, it wasn't necessarily still a pain in the ass, still a lot of busted pipes, electric mm -hmm. down, everything like that. This one, I've only heard about it for the last couple of days, and it was supposed to come overnight. Mm -hmm. It did not come overnight. No, no, no. no. It's right now. Yeah. It is coming down out there. Oh, yeah. I had to drive. Uh, wife and I had an appointment we had to go to early this morning. We went after hearing what the storms are going to be all night. We woke up a little bit earlier. thought it was going to be a little bit longer. Not bad at all this morning. No. Yeah. It was supposed to come overnight from like 3 a.m. to 8 a.m. Then I guess what, after we had fallen asleep, before we had woken up, they had adjusted the time that the 8 a.m. hour is actually going to be when it is. Our appointment was at 8 a.m. So getting there, no problem. While we're in our appointment, we come back out. <laughs> Holy shit. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Whole new world. Cars, side of the road, everywhere. We hope everybody's safe. We hope everybody's comfortable. Appreciate all the boys coming mm -hmm. in here. But, D-Butt, this is now two times where you've shown up yeah. and just, like, huh. miserable cold weather has come. Yeah. Happy I you're mean, here. You know, it's Indy, and I heard, you know, you shot the texts out. Hey, be careful. It's going to get be ugly out there. As soon as I read them, I just Fuck. heard A.J. Hawk's voice in my head, like, you know. <laughs> Nick, you got to mute yourself. You're yelling back there. I, I didn't hear, hear exactly what. What's that, Nick? No, nah, somebody <laughs> Someone's is. Not. Is Somebody's back on me there. In the back there. Thought I heard the rack. There it is. There it is. There we go. Hey, Nick. Woo. Done, boy. Way to go, Nick, back there. Um, 
AJ Hawk just talking about how yeah, we're soft. Just, yeah, just don't be soft. Don't be dramatic. Whatever it is, we'll deal with it. We'll get here. It is yeah. ugly out there, snowing sideways. It's good to look at and see for a Great couple days at. and not sure. postcard. Sure. You know, shovel yeah. and do all the shit. I'm sure you know you guys got to do. No, so. Tim McAfee was outside shoveling his fucking place. Yeah, well, shout out to him. It. I got some. Beast. I got Put some salt I've been waiting for some fucking accumulation. I need some. Yeah, absolutely. You're a snowblower guy in the neighborhood. Let's go. Oh my! I moved in <laughs> what two years ago to my house. I was the only one on the block without a snowblower. Okay. I have people coming over a fucking snowblow on my driveway. Oh, as no. a human, <laughs> as a homeowner, as a man of the house, and now, now a father, dad, yeah. Couldn't have, have that, that, that happen, okay? Can't this year that. I purchased a new fucking snowblower. Now I, I got the fucking biggest baddest one on the block, okay? So Ooh. fucking step aside, boys. Congratulations, boy, Tony. Tony. Are you taking it over to somebody else's I'm house? Gonna, yeah, I'm going to fucking dunk on somebody. <laughs> hey, I see your little, uh, what if you just, <laughs> yeah. right next to them? Mm -hmm. 100%. Just blowing a much bigger little. Yeah, it's happening. Is it gas powered? You got to plug that thing in? No, no, no plug in. Oh, it's Mickey all... Mouse. <laughs> is, it, is it electric? <laughs> huh? It's electric? It's battery powered. Fucking, oh, fucking. Even more Mickey Mouse. That thing's got to be gas powered, Tony. No, no, you know up. that. Uh oh, you look know it that. It's the biggest, baddest one on the market, my friend. <laughs> You don't even, so you don't even, yeah, you, you have don't, to, you have to just, just flick a button. Just like your car. Like just push to start? You got to fucking hold the gas in and fucking press start. So there's so gas. The, hold the throttle. The throttle in. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Okay, we'll dive into it deeper. Hey, congratulations, that's a big step. Okay. Oh, yeah. yeah. I used to, uh, obviously. <laughs> yeah, shovel. Shovel, snow, mm -hmm. the whole thing. Great workout. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Absolutely. Yeah, Makes money you, off it, too. As a kid, you have to, yeah. They were talking about, we're only halfway through winter right now. They're saying another half of winter coming through. If there was to get. <laughs> what? <laughs> that happened yesterday too, Tone. Yeah. That literally happened. Just a different what yesterday? Yeah. You choked over water, and in the middle of a conversation <laughs> with no context nope. at all, what? What? Uh, <laughs> Diggs are just moaning into a yep. into a microphone in the middle of it or whatever. Yeah, they're saying we're halfway through, and I only know that because I was watching local news because we had that appointment this morning. We had to yeah. get to with what they were calling with weather. It was like we might not be able to literally get out of the house or whatever without the highways could be. And they were like, "Well, if six inches comes, we'll be at." Nine inches or something, only halfway through. 27 inches, I think, is the record for Indiana. So they were starting to talk that. I think we're halfway through. I think we still got – Yeah. I still think we got a lot of time. I think it's only going to get – I don't want to say worse, but I, I feel like this – we're in it now. Oh, right? yeah. I feel like we're really in it. Because it was up to like 55, 60. Yeah. Mm -hmm. After that freeze. Yep. After yeah, that yeah, freeze yeah. storm came in, nice it got back up to like 55. I thought – no, I thought – I thought – I was the, done. I thought we changed. That was I, it. I thought maybe the four Spring seasons – Spring is here. I thought we had changed. The news told me that is not the case. Nah, it'll news. go till April. Well, it'll be cold probably till I think it's like the national championship for basketball. The end of March Madness is when we start to see it really kind of yeah. turn into spring. But there'll still be cold days all the way till May. I don't know, dude. Hey, that earthquake in Malibu. Hope Aaron's okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And everybody over there is okay. That was like 2 a.m. this morning. Mm -hmm. I guess there's some tornadoes taking place in Texas. Down yep. South. We got this massive snowstorm that's hitting the entire Midwest. They showed the Doppler. I tried to, I'm not Donardo. I tried <laughs> to read the Doppler. That fucker was nothing, nothing, nothing. Then there was some green, and then blue just went over the entire Midwest. I don't know if it's because they don't have Donardo reading the Doppler. They don't know where it's going to go. Probably. So they're just projecting it everywhere. Mm -hmm. Or if it is actually going everywhere. Rest in peace, Joe. Thank you, Joe. Joe. Miss you, Joe. Would have been great to have you yeah. this morning and last night, yeah. Joe. A lot of anxiety. Oh, Who's going to make do it work? these snowstorms uh, get named like a hurricane? This no. one actually did. Yeah. This, well, these, this, this one, was the big, this this one was the entire was Midwest. This one was responsible for the uh, tornadoes down south as well, and then it came back up. Oh, it was a powerful It storm. did have a name. This is a mean cut. Yeah, yeah holy is. shit. This Persistent. one, mm -hmm. real problem, this yep. storm. Hope everybody's safe. Hope everybody's okay. We have a leak. Uh, happens to be from the same place as the last leak. Haven't got a fix yet. Yep. Mm -mm. Someone's on it. We'll figure it out. Well, see, that's the thing about like someone. We are the the one, the ones. Yeah. Yeah. We the point. ones. We, we the ones. You know, we are Cassandra. The ones that this is hurricane uh, snow Cassandra. Winter storm Cassandra. Winter storm Cassandra. With hey, Cassandra K. with a K. Fucking scram with dude. a K. Yeah. This bitch. They're running out of it. <laughs> Yeah. Come on. Tornadoes, blizzards is a bitch of a Cassandra. <laughs> was she part of the earthquake, too? Earthquake, probably, yeah. Yeah, what's going on with the earthquake, Tony? What's well, going on? Have you heard anything about the earthquake? Is, is that I the mean, fault? Th that's just the big one giving a little rumble. Okay. Bro, that's directly out from Alabama. I don't know if you looked at the map. I did. Just directly outside of. Yeah. 
probably where a conversation was taking place yesterday that the world was responding to 2 a.m. I think it was only a four something, and uh, a lot of some Californians were like, "This is nowhere near the biggest we've ever felt," but people were feeling it. Mm -hmm. And earthquakes are a crazy phenomenon. I couldn't imagine living in a place where that takes place, where you just walk and all of a sudden the Earth is like, "What's up?" <laughs> it's like, "Okay, everything's good." Yep, just fucking act like our day's good. Let's act like nothing it's happened. Crazy. That's what earthquakes are. But the man who was in Malibu, we believe, was talking to us yesterday. Yeah. A lot of reaction to his comments mm -hmm. from yesterday. Today. A lot of big time takeaways. Seems like he still wants to play. Now, yeah. he has not come out and said he wants to play, still going through his process. He said if there was a two week timeline on when he needed to make his decision, would have been able to do it. Not as easy, he thinks, to have done it, but he would have been able to make a decision if he was given some sort of timeline in the near future, mm -hmm. which could take place with all the assumptions that are taking place around sports media with Aaron, that he's going to get traded. Well, Peter King says they're going to need two ones for that trade. Now, that's just him guessing, but he also has connections, so a lot of people have just been taking that as gospel. Adam Schefter reported they would not trade him to an NFC team. It would be an AFC team. Now, we don't know if Schefter's reporting that as a pundit or as an insider. He is an insider, so his pundit should be judged in a fashion that he has information that we don't have. So we just start piecing things together as gospel, and then Aaron kind of alludes to it like, hey, if the Packers want to move on, there's no malice with me. I understand. Been in that situation with Brett. I think he loves Jordan. I think he's very appreciative of everything that Green Bay has done for him, the fan base. Now, I don't think the fans feel the same way. I think a lot of the fans would – not a lot of the fans. A lot of the fans we see on Twitter, not as a whole as Green Bay Packers fans. Twitter vocal crew yeah. on – you know, from the Packers fan base, seems to be loud about, like, they're done with this type of bullshit. Mm. I'm happy you're done with it because the Colts might be getting Aaron Rodgers is what I heard there. D, but did you listen to the conversation? Did you take away anything from it? And what are your thoughts on Aaron Rodgers' future, which he said would rework a contract to adjust how the future looks for I him? I kind of feel the same way I felt last week and week before that. I feel like he'll be back in Green Bay. Yeah. Uh, he's gonna really? Make, he's going to make the, the, the 60, you know, he's not going to walk away from the 60 million and retire, obviously. I think he's going to continue well. to keep playing. Uh, but honestly, my, my favorite takeaway from the conversation yesterday was uh, watching him go down memory lane with fucking Tommy <laughs> Wilson. Yeah. I was here last week when y'all had Tommy those highlights. Like, yeah. So, like, seeing that, seeing that, that whole How about Dexter guys, Lawrence was making DL? Uh -huh. Yeah. Or Darren Lawrence? Wait, who was that? It, it was, that was, that was, that was number that was 15. Number Oh, okay. I don't remember. A couple him. guys played in the league. That was DL. On that team. Number yeah, one. 10 was Tom. He's now a coach, I think. I think 10 is a coach now. Wilson? I Tommy believe. Wilson Tommy. was a coach at Butte. Uh, I believe he's now the uh, VP of a uh, you know uh, athletic wear. Okay. Well, shout out to Tommy. Oh, he's going to have success, whatever, because a lot of people quote tweeted the video and were like, Coach Tommy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Coach Tommy. They're saying, I'm like, that guy should have been in the league. Should have oh, been. Only played one year. He started as a soccer player, right? Yeah. So I was, so Cooper my, Cup, right? Really. My, my senior year, my best receiver was a soccer I played quarterback. My best receiver was a soccer player as well. Fast as shit. Go ball. Stop. That's it. Yeah. I feel like if our soccer team would have played for our high school team, Tone, no offense, the DeGilio family is very – deep in the roots of the Plum football operation. Mm -hmm. So that please do not take this as a shot, but I think you understand. We were a wagon. We had a lot of – if, like, my age would have played on the football team, we'd probably pick up three, four starters. A lot of good Italian athletes on that side. No offense, I was a state champion soccer player before I switched to side stuff. So. <laughs> really? <laughs> goalie. Fucking yeah. goalie. Conquered the sport. Tone was a guy. Yeah, nice. one same season, though. You know. What's that? It's the same season. you got to pick one. Yeah. You had to pick – you had to pick football. I had to. had to. And you ended up being uh, almost an Ivy League fucking player. That's right. Almost. Almost. Not, not enough grass. grass. Yeah. Yep. Basically At the school, not for you. But the big take, I did Soccer, enjoy yeah. him kind of running through the list of all those names. And I saw yeah. a lot of people saying, how about this fucking guy just rattling off all the names? Then I started thinking to myself, if we had to do that for our high school and we were watching film, and obviously he's 39, right? Yeah. So he's a little bit older. He's almost mm -hmm. 40 years. That's a long time. I almost... What is that, 12 years removed? No, 22 yeah. years. Yeah. 22 years removed almost from all those situations. Still being able to call everybody. And then the happiness that kind of lit up now, did we use that as a ploy to remind <laughs> him how much he loves football and how much could, football? Could, maybe. Maybe. Perhaps. I mean, maybe we're playing close Sicilian chess and nobody wants to talk about it. We also have to find out the Elman Bull story. Yeah, the Almond Bowl, yeah. The, Al <laughs> the Alamo right. Bowl, certainly something <laughs> mm -hmm. that I, I'm sure Aaron has a take on. Yeah, great yeah. bowl game. But the Almond Bowl over there, we never got it because the night before, something happened yeah. with Aaron. But watching him kind of relive and go through it, I saw genuine happiness on his oh, face, yeah. didn't you? Oh, yeah. And I think yesterday I heard a lot of, like, a guy that's very comfortable with yep. who he is right now, 
where he's at right now, everything that has happened and everything that can happen. And I think it, that's good news if you're an Aaron Rodgers fan. As a Packers fan, you heard the same thing, Derek? Because I heard he was a Colt. Oh. That's literally what I heard yesterday. Really? I heard he was an Indianapolis Colt. Nah, I mean, same deal. Colts stink. They oh. are in a rebuild. He doesn't no. want to come here. He definitely doesn't want to play. I mean, if Jeff Saturday's the head coach, no offense to Jeff, like Aaron <laughs> doesn't want to fucking play for Jeff Saturday. I can almost guarantee that. I don't know who the offensive what? coordinator would be, but I don't know. I mean, this this has happened basically. Dan last... Orlovsky, okay? Let's nah, not that, even... that, that may swing the, uh, the, the pendulum in the other direction. I don't so, know. But... Colts are interviewing seven more people for a second. I mean, the Colts have interviewed it everybody in Wide the NFL. Net. So we have no idea who's going to be the head coach. Allegedly, Jeff Saturday is a front runner, though, yeah. because everything that Jim thought about Jeff, he saw about Jeff, even though the results weren't necessarily the, the positive ones that we had all hoped for, which kind of goes to what Aaron was talking about yesterday about the process. Like, if you, if you think it's a successful process happening, you can't just judge strictly off the results. You have to trust the process. Everybody from inside the building, now everybody inside the building that I know has known Jeff Saturday for a long time. It's like when Jeff came in, it was like the first time there was any real, like, accountability. Sure. That, that's not something you can necessarily just turn around overnight. And you're not going to be popular whenever yeah. you're, especially as an interim title. Mm -hmm. Like, oh, this substitute teacher's coming in yeah. here. Yeah. Yeah. They're going to tell me tell what me. I, I have to take notes. Okay, I don't take notes. Okay, whatever <laughs> you put up there, my fucking mind's just going to remember. How about that, substitute teacher? You're a sub. That's why you're not an actual teacher. You wouldn't understand it. Shut up. That's kind of <laughs> yeah. what Jeff Saturday's coming in going, hey, we're not late, okay, mm -mm. To, to treatment. Mm -hmm. We're not late to mm -hmm. meetings. We're not late to workouts. We do, that doesn't happen. And you know what? If you do, you're getting fined, and we're going to fine you a lot of money for doing it. And I can't believe this is how this has been operating for a long time anyways. So everybody in the building has basically told me that when Jeff got there, it was the first time there was like a – and in the building, I think if you were to take a poll, everybody would be like, we would sign up for Jeff – figuring out how to fucking get this group of people back. Now, with that being said, I don't know if Boward knows that. I don't know if Jim Irsay knows that. I'm just telling you with the people that I've talked to, because although the results, because there's a chance Jeff gets his job, I think. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. And I think there's a lot of people publicly that are going to be very confused by it. I do not know what Jeff is like as a head coach, other than what you all have seen. I've not been in the building, but people who have, you know, been a part of, like, the winningest decade in the history of the NFL and have had a lot of success and been there for a long time – have been like, hey, what Jeff brought in was something that was needed and was not going to be popular. And he already got half a season, pretty much, of instituting that, so there's a chance it could work. Now, I think other people could come in and do a great job as well. I don't know how anybody's going to do. Just like D-Butt put in the group text, we thought Sirianni would be... Yeah, yeah, terrible. After that opening press conference, it was like, oh, man, they, they fucked up. This guy's going to be the worst coach yeah, of all time. Yeah. Yeah. And then MCDC, I Same mean, deal. thought he was going to be terrible. He turned around. Zach Taylor was literally terrible. Yeah. So, so you can never judge a hire literally the day it happens. There will be judgment. On this show, too, there will be either <laughs> a lot of excitement or – a little bit of excitement. You know, you can kind of see how I judge it. Everybody's natural reaction is to, but we have no fucking idea what's going to happen. But to your point, there's not an answer on who's going to be running the offense right now. Yeah, exactly. So, like, Aaron thinking about po possible destinations, it's like, okay, I'll be learning a new offense. Everybody will be learning a new offense, though. Mm -hmm. Is that a good thing or a bad thing? Could he bring a guy with him? He brings somebody with him, maybe uh, Hackett. Nate Hackett. Yeah, so, so yeah. a lot of coaches he's he's worked with. That's what the past. Jets are thinking. The Jets for are sure. thinking. Uh -huh. A lot of the Jets fans are putting. We already interviewed Hackett for the offense coordinator job. He has a relationship with Salah. I think they know each other. There's a chance he gets it. Him and Aaron get along well. The Jets fans are thinking that they're even interviewing him. Him potentially being the offense coordinator is a spot that Aaron would want to go to. Now, obviously, Aaron would have to agree to go to any of these places. We'd assume. I don't think he's just getting traded to any team that Green Bay wants to. No. Is that and just out of respect, respect from yeah, the organization? Because he doesn't have no trade clause, right? I don't know. I think that was kind of part of the when – after last season when they signed the deal, remember, because they were talking about him getting traded, and he said that, like, there was kind of like a mutual agreement that, hey, if – we get to the crossroads where, like, it's not going to work and, so, and there is, like, a, fa a finality and something needs to be done that they're not just going to end up trading him to, mm -hmm. you know, some fucking bottom Who tier team. Who was that? Who? Jamie Collins? Uh, yes, with the Browns. Browns. Jamie Collins, remember this? Linebacker? Yeah, 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 so he was the guy that jumped over Overton to block mm -hmm. the extra yep. point, and Bingo. I actually saw him midair as I'm catching a snap. <laughs> yeah. Oh, shit. Oh, no. That guy's going to land on us? Did mm -hmm. this guy just jump? 
21 feet. How did that happen? Then he blocks the kick. He was a guy. Mm-hmm. Allegedly, and this story has never been confirmed, I don't think. No. Allegedly, he said something in front of the entire team and Bill about his contract. Getting paid. Something like that. Mm-hmm. And Bill said, oh, that's cute. Traded him to the Browns the next day. Yep. And it was the last year of his rookie deal. He's a Southern Miss guy, like kind of a no one in the draft. Draft him in the first round. He's he was good. another one of those picks from Belichick that's like, who the fuck is this guy? And then he comes in, he's unbelievable. And he jumps over offensive yeah, lines. Yeah, he's a freak. He, I mean, there's videos of him doing, you know, eight back flips in a yeah. row and then freak, yeah. sticking it. like, and then. But allegedly, the rumor yeah. is he, in front of everybody, was like, hey, is that what you, what are we doing? And Bill's like, oh, oh that was really nice. Sit down, mm-hmm. yeah. Next day, a team meeting. I don't know if you've noticed, uh, (laughs) the person that raised that question yesterday, he's playing for the fucking Cleveland Browns now. Traded for a bag of balls. We'll see what he thinks. And that was where (laughs) careers go to die. Yeah. Oh, Jamie came back. He came came back. (laughs) Yeah, then he he goes back to New England, obviously has the same amount of success. But to your point, what Mm -hmm. you're saying is that has been done in the past where allegedly there has been a spite trade where it's like, oh, is that right? You don't love what's – oh, we're a bad place, huh? Okay. Bam! Welcome to Houston, Texas. Bingo. Something like that. You know what I mean? Yeah. And it's like, uh, that's an it. No, no offense, Houston. Please. No, no. no but you are the worst team in the league. Yeah. I didn't know that. Yeah, none yeah. taken. Yeah, not that the Colts aren't. I mean, we're top five pick as well. So yeah. let's, not, let's not get crazy. But here. I think that's the big thing with Rodgers is, again, everyone's glossing over that. Like he said, like, and, and I don't think he's going to retire. I think that's been pretty evident with what he said to us. But he's not coming back if he doesn't think he can win a Super Bowl. And so you have to look at it. It's like, do the Colts, him on the Colts, is that a better opportunity to win a Super Bowl than him on the Packers currently? Like, no way. And there are a co- the Colts stink. No you know chance. it. We both know it. I mean, we zero can, percent. We can do whatever. But like, the, I mean, it just it what is. What you say? We can do this all day. Yeah, we can. I mean, you've been judging it with Aaron Rodgers as your quarterback. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. Who do I got? I got CBS. I got the guy on CBS right now. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Clean dap though. Sick dap. Mm-hmm. Great dap. Colts run, don't know who their coach is. Yeah, does Rodgers want to come in and kind of, you know, establish a culture in the last two years of his career? Do you think that's kind of Have where Parks he's at? Have Parks Fraser call the place? Yeah, I was wondering why everybody Weapons. just is not talking about the Colts being a destination. <laughs> now that you're starting to lay it out, I guess yeah. it does make yeah. I saw some Colts bloggers last night saying, we don't want them. Okay. Yeah, see, that's interesting. Oh, okay. I'm not speaking for all Colts fans whenever I speak, okay? Because there's some Colts fans that go and they see the Spider-Man from New York Times Square and they it's go, that's awesome. awesome. Holy shit. Great. You know what I mean? So I, I'm just talking... I, I guess I come from some different. A lot of Colts fans, I think, agree with a lot of things yeah. I say, and I appreciate them. I still live here. I, have you know, friends and family that are dire Colts fans, so I, I feel like I kind of have a temperature on it. Now I view it a little differently because I was in the building, right? And while in the building, I was having a lot of the same thoughts that you hear me have into this microphone every single day. So I might judge it a little bit differently. But like, we're a quarterback away here oh, in yeah. Indianapolis, aren't we? Aren't we, Darius? Absolutely Darius not. knows it. Look at he knows. He's I mean, choked up over it. That's how much he knows how true that comment is. Yeah, we got not. a lot. Of, we got a lot of shit to figure out. We do have some good players on the roster, though. Um, mm-hmm. But I wouldn't, I wouldn't necessarily say so the no Bears. way. The Bears. Yeah, we're in the, we're in the Bears. Bears have some good players we're on not, their roster. We're in the better too. spots than the fucking Bears. I, I don't know. MVP candidate. Yeah, but, last year. Yeah. yeah. The Bears have a quarterback though. I mean, all the that, good players. We're talking are, about a quarterback. Coming who to the you, team. Who did you have? Exactly. Thank you. Matt Ryan? Great guy. Astronaut. Navy <laughs> SEAL. Off the field. On the field. Not there anymore. I still can't believe we're still saying that because it's so goddamn disrespectful to the troops. It's but a compliment. To Matt Ryan, it is disrespectful to the troops. Well, uh, with how he performed, certainly. We yeah. watched the terminal list last year, and we saw what Navy SEALs do when they see sorry, enemies Sam. downrange. And yeah. I can't believe yeah, sorry, we're Sam. still yeah. saying that. But let's keep in mind, sorry, Matt Sam. Ryan was good when Andy Dalton was good, and that was a long time ago. And when you're looking at the Bears, at least you got a little bit of hope. You got, you know, you got a, you got a coach for one. You have, you know, the Bears are not in this discussion. Oh, I thought we were just saying better situations. With the, for the Colts, really? How about the Jets? How about the Jets? Is that better, better situation, one hundred percent. No doubt about it. Buzz well, Aldrin just turned 93 years old. I'd rather have him playing QB than Matt Ryan. Amen. Or coach. Thank you. Yes, exactly. <laughs> You're yes. Right. That's what I'm saying. The actual astronaut. The Jets have good I, players, I think, the, though. I think the Jets might be a better situation. Yes. They have a good defense. They the have, Jets? Yeah. They what have, are we talking about? Greenberg? Good. Is that why? Because Mike Greenberg? Absolutely yeah. not. Their good players play good. Okay, the Colts have good players that haven't played good. So, like, what? How are we gonna say? Hey, next year he's got a great old line because Quentin Nelson's there. But Aaron did know an alarmingly amount, of, alarming amount of stuff about that Jets team. But that's because <laughs> that's because they were at 
training camp. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. He had yeah. eyes yeah. on him, and we saw him go through his high school film. Right. He has eyes he on some. He's yeah. going to remember. Him and Zach go hunting together. Because I didn't hear a single thing about the Colts whenever. No, no. Because no, I brought no. it up a couple times. You guys were like rebuild. We're like, we don't. We had seven Pro Bowlers last year. They're all on the roster still. Yeah. Okay? It's not a fucking rebuild over here. But he didn't say a single thing about the Indianapolis no. Colts. He no. said he likes color blue, though. Remember he, that? He does like color blue. Yeah. Only like one of those pillows. Seven. Pillows are blue. Joining us now is a man who is not worried about this discussion, although he should be. <laughs> what the fuck? I'm going to ask him why this is happening. Ladies and gentlemen, the defense coordinator for the Cincinnati Bengals, Paisano with a big brain, saw his team lock down in winter conditions, which uh -huh. is not easy at all. Ladies and gentlemen, Lou Ann Yeah, yeah. How we doing, Coach? What's up, everybody? Appreciate you having me again. Hey, thank you for joining us. You do a lot of this whenever you're coaching out there? You got to <laughs> whistle one hand and do this on the other hand? It, a little bit, sometimes. There's a lot of, you know, us Italians, there's a lot of hand gestures, all, basically all the time. Well, if you're not doing that, are you really saying anything? You know, that's the question. And that's, that's correct. Yeah. Hey, congrats on a win, bro. Yeah. Appreciate it, man. Woo! Appreciate it. Listen, it's Wednesday. You're on to the next one. We got to talk about the last one, though. Let's go ahead and give you your flowers. 10 points in those conditions against that offense. What? With DeMar Hamlin in the building, mm -hmm. with everything. What did you see from your D that made you think, like, this is the best we've played? Is that the, is that the best game you've ever seen your defense play? Because it felt like, discipline-wise, locked down. Seemed like nobody was out of gap. Seemed like it was sound. Is that what you saw as well? And why do you think that happened? Yeah, I just think, uh, first of all, let me get in the middle of this damn picture. There we go. Yeah, hey, come on um, in the fucking floor. I mean, over... Over here. <laughs> um, yeah, I think from start to finish, uh, the way we, you know, we made a huge emphasis on starting fast, coming out of the blocks, and, uh, you know, the guys did that. Um, you know, we tackled really well. We, um, you know, didn't give up any explosive plays, and, you know, we've been turning, taking the ball away, and that's, that's going to be key here, certainly on Sunday as well. So it felt like uh, there was no space for anybody. And obviously, any time the other team is starting to have, like, inter-squad battles in the middle of a game, you got to know. Do you know that that's happening? You know that you're frustrating them, obviously? And are you, you know, we kind of – we pick out a couple guys to see if we can get them agitated. Um, and uh, it just happened to work out, you know. Uh, didn't know that that was all going on on their sideline after the game. But, uh, you know, it's, it's – um, if you can create chaos – uh, as well as on the field, as well as on the bench, you got a chance. Yeah, it sounds like that's game plan executed well. Eli Apple, now we saw a video of him smoking a cigar <laughs> in the Bills <laughs> locker room. I, didn't look like a, like a normal cigar smoker, mm -hmm. but certainly called for it with oh, yeah. that performance there. Now, obviously, afterwards on the Internet, Eli Apple is dunking on people profusely. <laughs> Have you heard about that? And is that a conversation that ever comes up? And how do you feel about Eli Apple, the competitor that is on the field every week for you? Well, that's the good news about Eli. He's got so much confidence in himself and his abilities. And, um, you know, he plays corner in the NFL, and those guys are going to make plays. They're going to give up some plays. But if you don't come out there – with a ton of self-confidence, you have no chance. So, um, you know, I, I am, I'm not a Twitter guy, thank God. So, um, <laughs> you know, I stay away from it. But, uh, you know, I heard he's got some, uh, some things out there. But uh, I have not talked to him about it yet. Okay. I mean, it is, hey, it has drawn quite a reaction. And there is very rarely that type of shit talk on Twitter that draws reaction from everybody. So, from a Twitter standpoint, I feel like it's – Successful, yeah, well done. Yeah. successful yeah. tweeting yeah. as well. I don't, yeah, yeah, successful yeah. tweeting as well. Some people say cross the line. I mean, that's for whoever's drawing the line to decide. Nonetheless, uh, let's move on. Not on the Twitter world. I'll tell you, we live on the Twitter world, Lou. Hey, figure out the fucking yeah. camera. Other way, <laughs> other way, coach. I mean, move it the other way. What other the way. Hell is going on? Other way. Other way. Move it the other way. Other way. Other way. Other way, Lou. That's a disaster right now. No, oh, no. no. Move it to your left, Lou. Coach. Your left. Yeah, Move no, it towards your left on. shoulder. That's like, good thing I'm not uh, in Hollywood here. All right, there how's that? No, 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 no. no, no, no. Don't, don't move back to where chair. you were. You can't move the camera and you. There we <laughs> there go. There it is. Yeah. yeah. Disaster. Yeah, but that's not what it's like on a football field whenever you're no. coaching. So don't you worry about it. All this other stuff doesn't matter. We should probably set that up for you. We'll send you a stand thing that'll make it easier yeah. going forward. Yeah. Um, the that's boys fun. have some questions for you. And before they get to it, I would like to ask you a question. Massive game Shoot. this weekend, obviously. Okay, all focus on that. 
How come you're not getting any head coaching opportunity? How come you're not getting head coaching interviews? And how come you're not at the Indianapolis Colts like immediately following this season <laughs> ending? <laughs> I, I wish I had the answer for you. You know, I'm going to, uh, I have no idea. You know, we're just worried about beating the Chiefs this week. And how's that? I love that answer. And once again, that's why I would want you as the head coach. Have you ever been in the head coaching cycle? Is that something you have to like act like you would like to be a part of? Do you think the interview process during the season is fucked up too? Like, even though you're not in it right now, what are your thoughts on it all, Lou? Well, I mean, I had a, I had a chance last year with the Giants. The Giants, uh, inter I interviewed for that job around this time last year um you know and that was a great experience um you know obviously brian got the job and has done a phenomenal job there uh but uh you know it's just uh, the, the way the, the way the rules are and and um you know we're just again I, I i haven't paid much attention to it and um and and just focus really on beating the chiefs this weekend all right, well, I want to let you know I oh, pay yeah. attention to it because I watch your team, I've talked to you, and we have a I wide open – we've interviewed 35 people. <laughs> I don't know if you know that. Uh, DB has a question for you, Coach. Hey, what's up, Lou? I had another question before I saw your hoodie, but i got to ask you about that hoodie because I saw DJ Reader – Yesterday on Up and Adam show, he had the Scully on with the same thing. Is that kind of the? I'm assuming there's no excuses. Was that the? Was that the mantra coming in for the team or the defense coming in the season, or did that kind of take hold later on in the season after everything happened with the field and this and that? It's one of our uh, one of our safeties, Mike Thomas. Uh, uh, he's kind of got this. Uh, I don't know if it's brand or whatever it is, but he's passing it out to the guys. It's kind of his been his career really, Mike, as a. Uh, undrafted free agent that I had all the way back in Miami in 2013. And uh, Mike and I have been together kind of throughout his career. So um, it's, it's kind of signifies him, but it's also our team a little bit where, you know, we don't, we don't want to make any excuses. We just throw the ball out there. Let's go play. Do you, do you harp on that? Does Zach harp on it or is it just a natural thing? Uh, I kind of think it's just a natural thing to be honest with you. You know, we, we got such a veteran group now and, and the guy, the young guys have, kind of falling in line with what we want to do as a, a team and as an organization. And, uh, you know, I'm telling you, man, the locker room is tremendous. And, uh, you know, Zach's done a great job with that. But uh, I love coming to work every day. I feel like we got a glimpse into what the team meetings were like last week when Zach Taylor said, the NFL wants their uh, neutral site game and they have all these plans and we ruin. <laughs> sorry we ruined all these plans. Obviously, that was something that you guys chatted about. Obviously, that was something that had to be brought to the attention of the team. And what is it this week? Just that it's the Chiefs and everybody loves the Chiefs? I, yeah, I just think that, uh, you know, we've been in this situation already. We, we've proven we can go in there and win. Um, it's not going to be easy. They're a great team, but we got a great team, too. And it's going to be uh, it's going to be a great, uh, great game on Sunday. And um you know, we should uh, go in there with uh, f uh, full of confidence. And again, knowing that it's not going to be easy, uh, but, but we'll be ready for the challenge. I love how Joe, Joey B, obviously the coolest dude maybe on earth. Mm -hmm. On so, earth. Dude, he's like modern day Frank Sinatra. Isn't he? I mean, this dude's fucking cool, bro. <laughs> I mean, I'm, you know, I'm a big New York guy, obviously. Uh, you know, he's got, I don't know Jeter, never met him, but. I got to think he's a little got some of that, too. You know, just cool as a cucumber. And when it's all on the line, he makes the plays. Last year, there was people saying, why not us for the Bengals? And he was like, <laughs> fuck you. Why not us? Yeah. <laughs> no, like, we are us. What are we even? <laughs> like, he has that mindset. Is that the whole locker room? Sounds like it is, huh? especially with the way I, the defense has been playing. I would say, yeah, for sure. I just think the confidence and, you know, we've won a bunch of games in a row. And uh, I think we're 14 and four right now, you know, and, you know, you just, you, you gain that confidence and winning obviously helps all that. But uh, Joe, Joe is beaming confidence, but a lot of our guys are too. Lou, you're not going to give anything away and we know that. So it's almost a waste of a question, <laughs> but I'm going to ask it. Patrick Mahomes has a high ankle sprain. Chad Henney comes in, does a 98 yard drive to score a touchdown and meaningful reps, obviously. Andy Reid's yeah. offense is always going to be Andy Reid's offense, which means it's not going to be consistent. There's going to be things you're not going to be, and they have weapons everywhere. I understand that. How do you prepare for like what Patrick Mahomes might be, what he could be, also Chad Henney? How are you balancing all of that whenever it comes day to day? No, great question. I, it's, it, and I think you hit the nail on the head. It's what Coach Reid has always done. I think he's one of the best play callers of all time, you know, so you got that challenge and, you know, certainly got Eric Bieniemy there as well. 
uh, that that helps with that, and they alternate, and um, and then just the weapons around them. Uh, so the fact that you know Chad has been in the league forever and has seen everything, and you know it's just a it's a, a testament to their team and their players around him that they can just go right down the field and score. So you know, uh, listen, Patrick Mahomes is um, is uh, not human in so many different ways on how he plays quarterback. So. Even even at him, a little bit uh, nicked up is still a huge challenge, and uh, you know we'll, we'll game plan like he's 100. percent Okay, because I feel like that's three different quarterbacks you kind of have to yeah. prepare for, yeah. and it sounds yeah. like you're like, nah, it's an offense we got to prepare for. How do 100%. you? You've obviously squared off against Andy Reid in the past. You've beaten him in the past. He, he's adding more. Do you see the little ring around the rosy shit? How much time are you <laughs> spending on that? You got to identify where Pat is. I, like, what do you do with all their trick and gadget stuff? How do you break it yeah. down? You know, I think we got to take care of the core stuff that they do first and, and just know, you know, we've got a set of rules. Um, and then whatever we kind of know they're going to do, we got to kind of nail that and make sure we put that to bed. And then whatever is different, whatever they come up with that they're going to do, that's why we have rules and the rules handle all that. And um, now the ring around the rosy thing, I, you know, <laughs> they start going in circles. I'll tell our guys, just wait, something's going to come out of it and let's just cover Kelsey. How's that sound? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Dude, how about they do that? They do the ring around the rosy, uh, circling huddle. Mm -hmm. Then they got non-quarterback at quarterback. Option. Yep. Okay, so you got to be disciplined. Yeah. Throwback to the other side. I mean, that's like five trick plays. Yeah. yeah. That's five trick plays in one thing. And they're, they're doing that every week, Coach. I know. And, and so they've <laughs> got some guys that have been quarterbacks in their history, like uh, Kadarius Tony is throwing the ball. He's got a really strong arm. Oh. McKinnon played quarterback. So, like, they got some guys that can also, you know, the halfback passes, the reverse passes. So, you know, we're kind of um, trying to make our guys aware of everything. But at the end of the day, if you're in the right spot, you're doing your job, you know, that kind of eliminates the big plays. And if you can – make them check the ball down on those shot plays, even though they may gain 8, 10, 12, it's still a win. Yeah, you guys have sound tackling, too, it felt mm -hmm. like, last week at least. It was like open field tackles, yeah. Yeah. almost batted 1,000. I mean, you might have. I didn't watch the film enough. Darius has a follow-up yeah, here for you. And, Lou, as a, as a play call and D coordinator, you do a lot, too, that, uh, that an offense has prepared for as far as, like, you know, bringing DBs a lot, simulated pressures, a lot of drop eights. Is that something that, that has kind of developed over your career when you have older veteran players that have played a bunch together, or is that kind of something you do wherever you're at? Yeah, no, I think it's kind of developed as we've gone across. And, you know, to me, we've got the best nickel in all of football. And uh, Mike Hilton has a great, great knack of yeah. showing blitzes when he's not blitzing, blitzing from depth. He blitzed last week from a depth that I was like, Mike, did you come from Detroit? Oh, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, he gets there and he just has a great, he's a great football, he's just one of, he's a football player and he has a great feel for the game. So we try to use him as much as possible. Vaughn, uh, you know, Jermaine Pratt, Logan, we, we try to use all those guys in our, in our blitzes and, um, they, they, they've been successful for us. Yeah, it seems like your defense is all on a string, too. It's fantastic yeah. to watch. Tone has a follow-up on that. Yeah, I do. Uh, as a Steelers fan, I used to be able to tweet every single week, death, taxes, and Mike Hilton in the backfield. And, <laughs> and you, just, you just talked about it. Like, Can you actually like use him, or you don't have to think of him as a nickel or a DB in like the run game, too? Like You could count on him because like, he plays like he's, he's not his body frame. Like, he plays like he's like 6'3", 230. It's unbelievable. It's unbelievable. You know, I'll go back to the one I think that best describes him is this year's. I mean, there's so many plays, but the one that stands out in my head is this year's um, Tennessee game. Uh, and we sent him on a blitz and he tackles Derrick Henry in the backfield um, for a loss. And, and I think one of the reporters said, hey, you tripped up Derrick. Uh -uh. And Mike said, no, I didn't. I tackled him. <laughs> <laughs> you know, so and he did. He takes pride in that. And he. He 100% plays that position like he's playing middle linebacker. I kind of uh, just glossed over it, but open field tackling, it felt like last week. Is it, I mean, that's a staple of your defense, I guess? I should have paid attention to more? Huge. I think we pride ourselves on that. Every, you know, every defense does, but we've been, you know, knock on wood, we've been really good tackling team this year. And, um, you know, it's going to be something that's going to be huge this week because they've got, you know, catch and run space players all over the field that can turn short throws into long gains. So we've we got to, that's one of our goals this week is have the best tackling game of the year. What do you guys have? You have one of those like uh, robot 
tackling dummies <laughs> yep. mm-hmm. in that indoor facility? You guys, you driving around the old Lubot, and then everybody's yeah. got to tackle it. Yeah, we don't. I no. <laughs> <laughs> Come we'll on, just, it's future. No. I, we, we've got a couple of those agiles, and one of the coaches drags it, and they tackle it. So that's kind of the drill. I think you got to work it, though. I think that's something that not a lot of people that people are scared to work it because you get people hurt, but then it gets exposed. I think, right? Don't you? Do you agree with that? Yeah, no, for sure. And, and I think it has to be done. And I think if you do it the right way, um, you know, it, it can be a tool that you know it, it's it's how we tackle really most of the positions, even some of the big D linemen there. DJ Reader is as good as he is up front. He's a great wrap and roll tackler because he's a good athlete. So we practice it at all levels. We even do it in the spring. Um, we just put some pads underneath him, and you know it's, it's something that teaches him how to do it right. Yeah, let's not do the hip drop tackle. Yeah, let's not right. do the hip no, drop no. tackle. No, no, yeah. Hey, um, you tell Reader when he's got a quarterback, make sure you pick him up politely <laughs> mm-hmm. and set him sideways down like you're putting a baby to bed. Is that what you say? <laughs> Pretty much how we got to do it these days. Yeah. I don't know how you, how to, you know, a guy like Josh Allen last week who's so big and strong, it's, you know, uh, you know, you get around them and you got to, again, be careful how you fall on them. And that's just the rules. The guys know it at this point, and that they do a good job of uh, adhering to them for sure. Our guys do. Sounds like you love the rule. Connor has a question for you. Last one here, Coach. Yeah, Coach, obviously back in the AFC Championship game as like last year, and, you know, last year made the run of the Super Bowl. Do you see a similar preparation? Is there kind of, you know, the experience from last year helping everybody out now? And is, is there a same sort of hunger is even heightened more because of the loss last year in the Super Bowl? Yeah, I just think that our guys know. Uh, the The good news is it's it's not the first time, so they know. You know all the uh, hesitation that can come, and maybe some uneasiness when you don't know what you're getting yourself into. Mm. You know when the when they sing the national anthem and it's the home of the you know. They're, 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 uh, we know it's happening, right? And uh, the guys will just settle down and and uh, be ready for what's uh, you know about to come out of those gates, as they said in. Uh, and uh, we're glad to hear, you know, we'll be ready for it. How about you guys not having to go to the University of Cincinnati mm-hmm. and inter- interrupt field hockey or lacrosse practice? Hell yeah. Huh? That's good. It's been unbelievable. The indoor is great. And uh, as a matter of fact, we just finished our walkthrough over there. And, um, you know, it just, it's, it's, it's really been huge. You guys are doing walkthroughs inside. You getting soft, Coach? Uh oh. Is, is everything okay? <laughs> we'll be out. We'll be out in the, in the elements for practice. Though. Okay. All right. All right. We have here. We, here. we can't thank here we you go. enough for here joining us. Good luck this week. We'll be watching, and uh, I'm still holding on hope that you're going to be the Colts head coach next year. So I appreciate right. you so much, Paisan. No, always, and and I love you guys. Love being on the show. Next time, I'll try to get this camera squared away. My bad. My sons are going to kill me for that. But just for the record, you're not the only one. <laughs> this happens to a lot of people. Yeah. But with that being said, like you moved it, and then you moved again. <laughs> exactly. You know what yeah. I mean? Yeah. Bad, bad ball by me. <laughs> Sorry, you got other things to worry about, Coach Lou and Rumo. Yeah, coach. I fucked that up too. That's why when Al Michaels came on here and he had the, the automatic, yeah, it was like that's genius. How does everybody? And then AJ had it. Yep, it's next level. Not everybody got it. I love that guy. Yeah, mm-hmm. he's the best. He's awesome. not the head coach of the Colts next year. No, no, it no is chance. weird that he's not getting. getting he did last year. Coach. I didn't remember that. I yeah, didn't I didn't that. remember the Giants one as much either. He said it's the rules for the timing of the interviews. I think we've been trying to change those publicly here mm-hmm. this year. Maybe next year we'll have to pound the drum again. It doesn't make any sense. No, it no. doesn't. You know what I mean? Yeah. But also, to AJ's point, teams can't just not have head coaches. But if everybody, yeah. you know, like if it's the rule, like, hey, this is the calendar, this mm-hmm. is the time of year when you get, if you're going to fire a coach, this is when you are allowed to, yeah. the process happens so you then. just have dead men walking on the sideline for like five, six weeks. Yep. Yeah, but <laughs> no, you can do the interim, though. You can do like the Jeff Saturday. It might cause more, I don't want to say creative. Friction. No, not friction, but, like, if you're hiring an interim head coach, your season's probably fucking oh, yeah. Yeah. already gone. Mm-hmm. But, like, Jim was, like, I think Jim was getting a look at, like, who maybe might hire mm-hmm. next. So you might get more teams to, like, let me see what this guy potentially, uh, like, but if he's on another staff, I guess you wouldn't be able to pluck him. Well, and so how, you're fucked. How much? I is, don't know how you fix it. It's not fixable. Yeah, it's tough. How much is being coached, like, say, you know, your season ends when, like, the Patriots or the Colts or, you know, any, anybody's team, week 18. How much is the head coach and the coaching staff doing from week 18 to Super Bowl Yeah, I don't think, with the team? I don't know. I don't know. Probably they're 
I would assume they're fishing. Gotta, That's yeah, what I mean. Gotta, so, like, what's the what's the whole entire like? Oh, there's no head coach for that many weeks. But what are they doing with the team? Where when did we fire? We week ten. Yeah, after New yeah, England. Yeah, week eleven, eighteen week season. So that was seven weeks then. Just hire from within, standard interim operation. And yeah. The, if everybody just has to hire after the Super Bowl, it just becomes a thing. You fire your coach. This is when you do it. Yeah, exactly. Maybe the interim obviously is the front runner in that situation because they've had those weeks. But also, it couldn't be the front runner where they could just completely fuck it up. It's like, all right, we're going clean slate. Well, it's like, we don't know how you fuck it up. Results are process. Yeah, no, I'm not talking about Jeff Saturday. Like, if you set losing records as far as most points in the fourth quarter or biggest, you know, comeback given up, maybe you're on the short end of the stick. But like Steve Wilkes, for instance. Like, he turns the Panthers around when their season's basically over, yeah. and he's the interim. Like, going into that hiring process, he probably is the guy for that moment, at least. I don't know how you fix it. They need to, though. Yeah. No, actually, the guy that got fired from the Colts is apparently the leader for that job. So. Yeah, Frank Reich, True. his second interview, oh. already putting together a staff, allegedly. Yeah. yeah. Right. He threw the, uh, the first touchdown pass in the history of the Carolina Panthers, so kind of all coming full circle. He's been there before. Mm-hmm. Is he in their ring of honor, like Harbaugh? I don't think there's is. Let's go to the five RNG phone line, which we got back yesterday. If you'd like to call us, we'd love to hear from you. Call 1 833 432 3663, also known as 1 Sweet. How do you feel about the number, D Butt? I love it. Absolutely it, love it. There was a lot of them. We, had to, we, ran through, we ran through a lot of them. Yeah, the first one was awesome. First one was the best, just 1 Thunder. T H U. Yep. N D E R. Uh huh. Taken. Long gone. Unfortunately. Long, yes. long, long. Anything Have that you tried to call that one to see what it goes to? No, because 1 855 Thunder, 1 888 Thunder, they're all taken. Yeah, 1 833 Thunder with a 3 has the E also taken. That's one of those has a sexy voice on the other one. Well, how about the dome? I mean, I assume this one would be gone too. Yeah. You know what I mean? Some yeah. champion of a bathroom mm-hmm. well four dome is probably f-o-r anyways five energy phone lines back <laughs> we happy dome. here we go oh. definitely taken yep mm-hmm. but there's somebody that calls themselves the best and they just are the dome. Dome. you know what i mean i love it let's go to the phones let's go to nina in california on the five energy phone line what's going on nina how you doing i'm doing great how about you guys Fantastic, Nina. Thank you for calling in. Yeah. How are you doing out there? We heard there was an earthquake 2 a.m. this morning. Hope everybody's okay. Hope the buildings are still standing. Um, I was asleep through the whole thing, so I wouldn't know. <laughs> oh, rocks you like a baby. Here, right? Yeah. Nice. Some Very people nice. did wake up. I did yep. see the Twitter was active there oh. for a bit. <laughs> well, I want to say a couple of things. A couple of weeks ago, you shouted out to the people who are sitting here forced to watch your show. So I want to say thank you, because I have to hear it every morning, and I've actually begun to enjoy every second of it. Oh, nice. What's that called? That's called something whenever you're held uh, hostage. Stockholm, Stockholm Syndrome. Stockholm Syndrome. Stockholm Syndrome. Yep. Nina, it's Stockholm Syndrome. We appreciate it, though. <laughs> thank you so much. I would assume her boyfriend or husband watches the show. Mm-hmm. Run into a lot of that whenever I'm out in public. Husband or boyfriend, Pat, very nice to meet you. Oh, very nice to meet you, too. And then girlfriend or wife next to you says, I'm forced to listen to your show every single morning. This is your biggest fan. I'm like, oh, my man, I appreciate that. Sorry about it mm-hmm. to you. Yeah. But I think that happens a lot. Those numbers aren't being calculated. We should yeah, just start oh, adding yeah, those right. in. Yeah, you know what? Just double them all. Times two. No, we'll count per eye. Okay, mm-hmm. times four. Well, not everybody. Not everybody. You yeah. don't need to Sorry be to all my one-eyed friends. Yeah. One-eye, one-eye, one-eye. <laughs> Let's go to Nathan in Memphis on a 5 hour phone line. Nathan, what's going on, pal? Nathan. Okay. Walking in Memphis. Oh, walking in There's walking. a bum doing crack right over there. In walking, walking in Memphis. Memphis. Oh. An IG model on the stairs. Walking walk in, in Memphis. Memphis. That's from 2019 whenever yeah. we were in Memphis. Mm-hmm. That was our song for our blog. Yep. Nathan's in Memphis. Gonna hang up on him right now. Walk. See ya. Let's go to Anthony in Youngstown, Ohio. Wow. Youngstown, Ohio. So many Italians. Mm-hmm. Uh-huh. I'm going to assume Anthony is one of them. There's a lot of them over there. What's going on, Paisan? Pat, boys, how are we doing? Keep, Keep it moving. moving. 
Long neck, bud light, wide. No, right. my heart. Nailed it. So, how are we not talking about the obvious choice for Aaron Rodgers this season in the Las Vegas Raiders? No. Nah. up with McDaniels, an offensive minded quarterback. About He's going to hook up with Devontae again. He's going to have Darren Waller. What? And uh, Renfro. What? Yeah, Josh yeah, Jacobs. And yeah. Josh Jacobs in the backfield. If he takes a pay cut and they're able to keep I, him. I, I, are you a big Raiders fan? Yeah. No, actually, sadly, I'm a Browns fan. Oh, no! okay. loser! Anthony was like, we already paid $230 million for our quarterback, or I'd be throwing us into the mix. But Raiders aren't a bad thing. I think you got mentioned yesterday a little bit yeah, in conversation yeah. because of Devontae. Mm -hmm. Would he want to go into Josh McDaniel's system, I wonder? Sure, why not? I mean, some great, there's some great weapons over there. If they can obviously be healthy, weren't healthy this year, didn't pay a ton of snaps together. But, I mean, Waller, Renfro... Obviously, Adams would be a great situation for any quarterback. Peter King so. said that if Tom doesn't beat Aaron to the Raiders, look at the Raiders <laughs> being a spot for Aaron. I believe in his Monday yeah. morning mm -hmm. uh, quarterback thing or football morning in America write up. That was the same one that said it would cost two first rounders. Mm -hmm. Do the Raiders have that? I'd assume they do if that's going to be in Peter King's article. Well, they had know. to trade some for Devontae. I don't know if they have two, but I'm uh, Ooh, assuming they can. I also saw a report. Uh, the teams are looking and watching to see if Waller or Renfro may be on the market this offseason. Oh, I thought Renfro signed. Like yeah, both, signed, trade. Both trade. of them did, I thought. Oh, trade really? Market, yes. So that would not mean that Aaron's on the way. Mm -hmm. He would not be trading weapons away. You would think not. No. No. Who do you think McDaniels would rather have? The guy he's done it with, or Aaron? Tom. Aaron. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Aaron. Even though the conversation will be the same with McDaniels. Tone a, thinks Tone thinks Tom's dead on the football field. I do. So he has said that numerous times. I think you prefer Aaron. You think so? I mean, he's younger. And he'll have the can't do it without Brady conversation. Do you think that factors into it at all? Yeah, but <sighs> Tom just knows it. Oh, absolutely. You I think I mean? the situation is much better with Tom. He also can't afford really to have like another like growing pains year. Like he just went through that, and they were talking about him getting fired seven weeks through the season. Like with Tom, you at least know that like he knows the offense exactly. Yeah. There's not going to be you know eight one, weeks in one year, and you don't have to give up picks. Aaron's a Tom. smart dude as well. Yeah, Aaron could figure it out. But in the first year of the floor's offense, granted, everybody was learning it though. Yeah, and they still went thirteen and three. <laughs> yeah, and he had like 24 and 2 or something yeah, like yeah. that. Terrible year there. But this of course. guy stinks. Don't yeah. be a diva. He hates this whole guy. But it's kind of the same thing with the Raiders, isn't it? Like their O line's not great. Their mm. defense outside of like a couple really good pieces. Like I don't know if that's like a head and shoulders better situation than the Packers is. Let's go to Dalton in Nashville. Dalton, what's going on, Paul? Hey, boys. How you doing? Keep it moving. Shut up. Hey, just had a question for you real quick. So, uh, Good news. wondering when the uh, boys are going to move down to uh, old Broadway down here and uh, open the uh, Bud Light sports book on, uh, right. on right. Broadway. Right. I uh, appreciate you, Dalton. That has been a conversation, us moving to Nashville. Nashville's awesome. Just would like that to be known that behind the scenes, there's Nashville's been a combo awesome. about us having a Nashville office, Nashville studio down yeah. there. A lot of raw land out there. A lot yeah. of raw land people are buying, but also... It's fucking awesome down there. Yeah. yeah. I have a blast. Uh, I think there's a lot of people that go through there, so yep. getting guests would be easy. Mm -hmm. Now, granted, I don't think we're able to just pick up and move there after building <laughs> the no, dome no. No. here, but that has been in conversation piece. Why not? It feels like Nashville's blown up, too. Yeah. Is it, by the time we're able to move down there, will it be already? The same. Well, and also, how, how much different is it, you know, than here? Much. Could maybe do some. <laughs> really? It is it much. Feels like the weather's the same. No, a little warmer. I mean, no, it gets cold. Nicer. It gets cold, but it's definitely nicer. Yeah. There's a hell of a lot more to do in Nashville. Maybe do some live shows in Kid Rock's yeah, Honky Tonk. Take, take what, what you could do in Indianapolis Maybe. and multiply it by, I don't know, 600 million. Really? <laughs> yeah. You might not be too far off, though. 600 million? They have some great steakhouses down there. Oh, yeah. Live music literally every night. Yeah. Yeah, I know, I know that uh, little strip is awesome. Not that little. There's it a bunch a, of yeah. There's not a, there's not there's the little burrows. strip that you're yeah, talking sure, about. Sure. Awesome. There's a bunch of areas. Yeah. Sections. The real estate market is boom down there. Last probably four or five years been crazy. Cranes everywhere. Yeah. Everywhere. Anytime you go to a city and there's just cranes everywhere, it's like, did they make a show about <laughs> this town? Oh, they did. Yeah. Oh, yeah, they actually did. There's Nashville. a bunch of cranes right. downtown Indianapolis, but they have uh, wrecking balls on the end. <laughs> yeah, oh, take, right. taking signs down and stuff. See them every day. They've been doing construction on the highway for four years. Indy needs it. Okay, we need something. 
We used to be a convention city, and then COVID shut down all conventions, and the entire downtown became an actual homeless last of us. Yeah, yeah. lots of volleyball, <laughs> volleyball, yes. volleyball city. Now. Exactly. Now instead of AFC Championship games, we want volleyball games. I think the city is just pumped that Someone's. people are coming back. Yeah. So I think that's a big deal. Now, granted, that volleyball tournament's in town for annual. When Aaron Rodgers comes to the Colts and we're hosting the AFC sure. Championship next year, sure. that's going to be a problem. Yeah. They said all 7,000 hotel rooms are gone because of this volleyball tournament. They can't cancel it. we got every single hotel room booked. Oh. Every restaurant's going to be packed out, and they're going to come back every single year. It's like, oh, let's do the NFL a favor. They got the Super Bowl. I think it's only billions of dollars. Seems like that's the right play. Might help. Maybe something to do. But I also understand where the city of Indianapolis is coming from because for two years there's fucking nothing. So, like, if, oh. a, if a tournament comes and says – we're going to buy every hotel room you got for the next four years straight. I think the city's like, sounds good. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Let's yeah. do that. And then all of a sudden the AFC championship shows up as availability. And it's like, we really put ourselves in a predicament here, mm-hmm. which sucks. But Indianapolis needs something, dude. COVID hit Indy. Teams, man. They got to bring us back. The Colts, the fucking yeah. Pacers. Yeah, the right. Pacers get a big win over the Bulls last night. They yeah, did. yeah. Tough win, loss. They won't be good for a while. They'll trade all their good players cool. again. But uh, the fireman convention. Uh, That's draft awesome. night. That'll be good. Um, like, there used to be two conventions a week. Yeah. 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 So, like, there was a midweek convention and then a weekend convention here. So, downtown was just a new group of people coming into yeah, town. Sweet. Literally, like, every four days. You yeah. think Indy say no, the NFL, we might lose the combine now? Like, in the future? I know That's the certainly a years. negotiation. That's up. And then also, they're doing neutral. St- we knew this was going to happen, but now it's being reported, I think, by Albert Breer I saw on the internet. Mm-hmm. The NFL is looking into a neutral site, AFC Championship, and NFC Championship. It was like, no shit. Mm-hmm. As soon as that even became a potential reality for the NFL, anybody that's ever been in the NFL, our first reactions were, oh, this is the new NFL. Oh, yeah. Now there's three Super Bowls. Look, right. We don't only – we have the Super Bowl, obviously, which is the biggest of them all. Now we also have – two off-site Super Bowls where we can sell all the corporate sponsor tickets that we sell to the Super Bowl at a price that is just absurd. Doesn't matter what teams are in it. You know, we always have to worry about what teams are in the AFC Championship, how it's going to do rating-wise, how the weather's going to do. The NFL sees this as a, we can sell this thing out before the season even starts. Simple. We can guarantee that the weather's going to be good, and we can start having a radio row type thing in these type situations. We can make this thing a moneymaker. As soon as the NFL had the – the opportunity to do it, which it didn't even come to fruition no. this year. Just the thought, oh, we have to. We have to schedule it. Mm-hmm. Sorry, we have to look into this. The logistics together. And then as soon as they start seeing it's like, oh, boys, I think we got three Super Bowls all of a sudden. What do, you, what do you mean? Put a deck together. I want it in my uh, – I'd like to see it tomorrow, Goodell says. And then somebody comes in there like, okay, you see this dollar sign? Yeah. yeah. See this one too? Yeah. How about this one? Yeah. How about this enti- the entire media world mm-hmm. at yep. this one? Do one Saturday, one Sunday. Yep. Just AFC Championship, NFC Championship. Now we have three Super Bowls. You see what we just did here for you? And Roger Goodell's like, love it. Genius. Thank you so much to the Bills and the Chiefs for having that situation happen and us having to snoop around to see what this would end yeah, up yep. being. And Albert Breer's like, now it's a real thing. That was our first reaction. Like, first reaction is obviously the NFL is going to do this. I think it's good, though. Now, if you're a team that's going to be great for the next 10 years, so if you're the Bengals, sure. yeah. if you're the Bills, if you're the Chiefs. Well, Bills we don't have to worry about, but. Uh, that is what the Patriots fans mm-hmm. feel. If you're one of these teams that mm-hmm. seemingly for the next 10 years is probably going to end up in the championship, sucks for you. Sucks for the owner of that particular yeah. team. Sucks for the uh, season ticket holders. But for every other owner, now they're just getting another opportunity to profit off of a game that their team's not in. The NFL is going to do that 10 times out of 10 if they get the opportunity. Yeah, and they saw how many tickets they sold 50, over, overnight. It's like, mm-hmm. okay, so people are more inclined to go to these games anyway. Like, it's a destination. It's a vacation. You know, if you're from a cold-weather city, like, why not go? Like, clearly price didn't matter at all. Like, they're not going to have any concern or worry about selling these out. So it's like, all right, well, fuck it. Why, why aren't we doing this? They, they, Another reason to build a stadium, too. You know, even if yeah. it's oh, yeah. issue, oh, right. like, right. hey, let me just build a new stadium. We may have a shitty team, but shit, we can host a championship game. Yeah, that was so. part of it. That was one of the reports that I saw. Was yeah. that exactly? That there's... They would use the uh, AFC NFC championship sites as a rehearsal to see if you if your host. city could host the Super Bowl. 
it's also leverage and negotiation for the yeah. new stadium. Yep. Because they do. Well, we'll definitely get a championship game and definitely get a Super Bowl. Yeah. But That's we'll get a championship true. game before the Super Bowl. Yeah. Super Bowl is billions of dollars in your city. Yeah. Yeah. Just over the weekend. Well, I'm, a, sure, I'm sure they've seen the college football playoffs too, where both locations get fucking sold out and all of that. Plus all the media, the radio row. Yeah. Like the spectacle that it is. Right. The league meetings are almost becoming this. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Rap reports there. All the. ESPN has people on on uh, the grounds. Yep. Fox has people on the grounds. We do not have anybody, but we're thinking about it. We actually thought about it. Remember, Bruce yep. reminded us last week, or Foxy reminded me last week. Yep. Foxy's like, hey, let's remember league meetings last year. We did note to self, need to have somebody there because they do allow people there. So they try to make everything like an event. I don't know why you wouldn't do that for the championship games as well, which sucks, by the way. I'm not. Yeah. I'm yeah. not saying this is a good thing, because. The home crowd, like what the Chiefs are going to do this weekend, mm -hmm. their fan base. What happened in Buffalo? Like the, the atmosphere in Buffalo last week was awesome. Yeah, draining, just the <laughs> sucking the energy out yep. of the place whenever it's happening. Mm -hmm. The Eagles fan base this weekend, they're, yeah. they're going to be a show. Yep. Like, that's going to be a part of the show. Now they're going to get called out. Oh, they don't travel. Oh, they don't do – they'll you end up turning it into something, but it won't be – let's enjoy these home – Championship mm -hmm. games. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Let's enjoy these home championship games because the college football playoffs going back to home field advantage for the first round. Yep. So you get to host one of those yeah. games first. Those are going to be bananas. Not that the fucking Peach Bowl was not – not that the national championship was. It was very loud. Yeah. Mm -hmm. oh, yeah. But just there's something different about in your own yard yeah. almost. Yeah, it is interesting. The top four teams there won't be able to have a home game because you, you would think maybe they'd appease them, but since they get the bye week, it's almost better. Do you think they could do a Saturday-Sunday as well? So if they were to do it in Dallas, NFC on Saturday, AFC on Sunday, and then you just have – you dominate the entire weekend both days with all the ratings? Absolutely. I don't like that they're both on Sundays. Yeah, that is kind of – I mean, I guess it's kind of nice that you can just watch them back-to-back -back on Sunday. But, yeah, the Saturday night into, like, a Sunday afternoon would have been – I don't think they like those Saturday night ratings. I don't think they do either, but also... <sighs> that Saturday night rating was bad. The game was terrible. Yeah, was, Ratings are much better on Sunday. But if you put Bengals, yeah, but Saturday Chiefs afternoon on Saturday night... Yeah. Saturday afternoon was 30-something. Mm -hmm. yeah, you do three and three. Giants-Eagles was a blow, like a terrible football game. Yeah. I think that's more indicative of the ratings. Mm -hmm. For sure. Game and was over after the first quarter. And we know these two games. But a lot of people try to do something on Sunday night, don't they? Yeah. Like... That's where Sunday night used to be. Traditionally is like the, the ratings everyone's game. watching TV on Sunday night. If it's championship, though, championship? Yeah, yeah exactly. And in, are there games like this? I mean, these are the the perfect matchups for both sides. What do they say the ticket was for this Niners-Eagles? Cheapest one, I believe, is like seven ninety nine right now. Yeah, standing room only was allegedly like $880 or almost 1000 Sheesh. It's going to be loud. Yeah. The Johns are going to be out. Oh, my That's God. Right. Throwing horse shit at Chiefs players. Most expensive one. You going to be like, in town? I think I'll make, I may stay out there for that one. Sal Powell could get you a headset on the sideline, probably. Fucking right. I saw Sal Powell on the tube early, man. He looked Shout awesome. Out Sal yeah. Powell. Yeah, that's exactly what I'm going to text. See if I can see if he can get you. <laughs> oh, he what do you mean, get... see if you can? You'll be on the field. I was going to say, we'll you, right want, you want a headset for the game? <laughs> so up at the top there, 591, is that what I saw? Yeah, 754. Dang. There's a 491. 682, too. 690. That's expensive for up there. Seven sixteen. Yeah. yeah, go over towards the binoculars. Over here. Up right. Bud Light Eagles Nest. Up right. Up right. Left. I think I saw a four ninety one one. Go left. One more. That was five ninety one. Five ninety one. Is it the, the standing one. room? That little That's yeah, a standing room is four sixty one. Jesus. I'm paying an extra hundred and thirty. I think I'm getting a seat. Oh yeah, for sure. For but up there, you're fucking hiking up there. That's where that guy. Oh yeah. Poof, poof, oh yeah. That John. That, that, yeah, the Bears game. <laughs> that was a Packers fan. Oh, <laughs> yeah. I thought he was a John. What's uh, down there? One thousand seven hundred forty-two. How about yeah? Behind the Eagles, that would be the most expensive, right? Yeah. Well, I think the suites are. Yeah. Do we have any suites available? Oh, uh, sure. The yellow one right there. Tunnel, Tunnel Club, Club East five. Click on that. Let's see what's available. Is this Sea Kick? Yeah. Two tickets. Two tickets. Is Tunnel Club like the field level ones? Yeah, yeah. but the L L S twenty threes are probably sweets, right? Yeah, that's the one you want. No, that one right. That one would suck, wouldn't it? Yeah, because yeah, that's the yeah. where everybody's standing in front of yeah. you. Yeah, yeah we played that game. This is so <laughs> fun. Do we have any of those? Uh, what about um, what about L S fifty seven there? Down. Down. Underneath one hundred one. Yep. No dots, so it's probably not available. Oh, fuck. Is that also sweets, though? Because those are... That's where we want to be. That's what, lo lower suite? Ugh. 
Lounge suite? Yeah, a C-suite. Yeah. Do they have any C-suites? I don't know. Let's get to a break. AJ Hoffman, <laughs> join us on the other side. Look at us just trying to figure out if we're going. Huh. We, oh, we almost, I feel like we almost just went to this game. Yeah. <laughs> I feel like we almost Eagles just won. Night. Hey, that's going to be a good one, man. Sunday. Can't wait to see that. We got two great games. Two great yeah. games. Let's check out the uh, Q-Pool up to Kansas City. Let's see what's available out there. Because mm-hmm. that Wolf don't have his. Yeah, true. Yeah. <laughs> see so if we front, get, front row's available. See if we get in the Mahomes suite. Hey, lock wider suite this year. Anything is uh, possible. I just saw a video. I don't know if it Ooh, is. Oh, oh, you. oh, how many listings from that? Are those suites? Yeah. I'm not sure if those are suites. I think those are normal seats, right? Yeah. Is that just the front of the second bowl? you click on it, does it show you what it looks like? What's that? There's suites. Oh, it's section. How about down here? These ones. Are those the same thing? Section. Fuck. They don't have any suites in this place? Do they have suites? What the fuck's going on? (laughs) I think those ADA right here, those are probably suites right here, right? It's an old stadium. They might not have. That's uh, for handicapped folks. Uh... American Disability. Disabled oh, wow. Association, Disability Association. Yeah. Wow, right, no boys. Sweets. Good deals on Seeky, though. Well, there's definitely sweets because uh, Mahomes, right? Yeah. There are sweets, yeah. Just want to let you guys know, we understand we are soft because we are strictly looking for sweets. Yeah. We just walked through the snowstorm outside called Cassandra. That's right. That bitch. And I ain't doing it. No. I would love to watch <laughs> the game, but I ain't doing it that much. Nope. No thanks. Hell no. Almost just went to a couple games, though, I feel like. Yeah. Shit, right here, we, if there was a suite available, we would have bought Boom. that thing. massive chance. Bang, we are going to Kansas City this weekend. Mm-hmm. I can't wait to watch. I also can't wait for the next hour because A.J. Hawk will be here. Also, Darius Butler. Oh, time. Time is now. Here you go, Time is now. What do we got? I saw what you did before the show. Yep. Oh, hey, let's get it. Darius Butler was warming up before the show started. Oh, yeah. Yeah. And by warming up, I mean he got in fuego quick. Yes. We're talking about he's heating up. Mm-hmm. What does that happen when you make two in a row? That's right. Mm-hmm. You make three in a row, you're on fire. Yep. Bingo. The last two throws that Darius has thrown have gone into the trash can. Mm-hmm. Oh. Will Darius Butler get on fire? If Come D-Buck on, can make this football into that garbage can right next to that bear standing right over there, we'll give 15 people $500. Who retweet this tweet? Say something nice to somebody and put their cash tag in there. Oh, oh. Hey, you're on it. All over there. That's, all over that's it. as Same close throw. as you can get. Ladies and gentlemen, if Darius. Oh, um, oh dig. Try. Remember. Dig, yeah. Said you know. throw, right? yeah. Slow yeah, down. See it. Look at it and throw it. Boom. Nope. First one was so close. Yeah. Oh, you're not even trying. Yeah. Oh. yeah take your time. What are you doing? Boom. Just slow it down for a second. Boom! There's the one. There it is on the line. Boom! Go, D boy! Since yes. Darius made that throw, we'll give 15 people $500 to retweet this video, say something nice to somebody, and put their cash tag in the same reply so we can pay you officially on Cash App. At a baby D boy! Go, D boy! All right, we'll be back on the other side with AJ Hawk. Take five! five. Welcome to the special investigative report. Much has been made in the media world on the life and charitable donations of the man Pat McAfee. Especially lately, with the rise of the ever popular Pat McAfee Show. A show that in his own words, stinks. We thought it privy to dive into the inner workings and machinations of this tiny business, this small regional show that has reached international discourse. We sat down with the suit himself, Bruce Brown, to figure out what, where, when, why, and how they're able to give away so much money, so much money to the viewers of this incredible program. So yeah, when you enter a Pat McAfee Show giveaway or win a FanDuel merch picks contest on Sunday, essentially, um, you know, the entire hashtag will be downloaded into an Excel file and the winners will be randomized. Within that, 
Um, and then we do a quick scumbag check, basically click on the profile and, and make sure you know you aren't a robot or blocked by Pat. And then it'll be transferred over to Dirty Gertie, who creates the Winter Wednesday graphic, which then runs on the show each Wednesday in a commercial break. Um, if you win over $599, um, we're going to need your email or you can email giveaways at patmacapishow.com. If it's under $599, all we need is your cash tag. And if you win merch, obviously we need your size, address, and what you want from the store. Usually I'll just reply to you on Twitter. Um, if you have any questions about any giveaway, whether it's cash that you either are, are waiting on or, or merch, yeah, you can just reach out to me on Twitter or email giveaways at patmacapishow.com. Please give us about one to two weeks to sort out your prize. That's typically how, how long it, it, um, it takes. But again, if you have any questions, just reach out to us. We reached out to PMI's money man himself, CFO Phil, for an on-camera interview. Regretfully, he declined the segment, but he did give us the salacious, juicy details in an email correspondence, CFO Phil replied, $2.6 million year to date. Too much money. There you have it. $2.6 million given away, a pissed off CFO, and a show that quote unquote stinks. Good night, good morrow, good luck, and good fortune. Why? Let me tell a tale about this little blue can Inside there's a nectar love from here to Japan It's a vibe, it's a time, ice cold over time So sublime, this shit is divine It's the beer of choice when you wanna rejoice Hey yo boys, what's the noise? Why? Hey yo boys, what's the noise? Well, us and Bud Light have made it a fish we bring the stoogery, they bring delish Feels like a genie just granted us a wish Cause for all of us, it was love at first sip Now be a bud, tell a bud to grab some bud lights Go and drizzly coat is what? Five dollars off tonight Go and drizzly coat is what? Five dollars off tonight Cause if you're living life right and you're drinking Bud Light And you wake up in the morning and you fight the good fight Then you're doing A-OK, -okay, doing A-OK -okay. Matter of fact, you're doing great no matter what they say Now be a Bud, tell a Bud to grab some Bud Lights Go and drizzle coat is wide, five dollars off to nine Five dollars off to nine What?
Hey, why? Let's go! This show fucking stinks. And the fact that you listen, we are very, very thankful for it. AJ, you never cease to amaze me with your toxicity, pal. You got a couple of these? God <laughs> damn it! <laughs> what the fuck are you doing? Fuck, fucking oh! oh! Hello, beautiful people. Welcome back to our humble abode, the FanDuel Thunderdome. On this Winter Wednesday, January 25th, 2023, Hour 2 starts right now. Football! Has a few weekends left, and we'll be covering every single angle of it. The Toxic Table's here at Boston Connor at Ty Schmidt. One half of the hammer, Don Cowboys, Tone Diggs is here. And the man who's a nine-year NFL vet, the host of the Man to Man podcast, NFL matchup show, alongside Sal Palantan. Yep. Yep. Thank you, Sal. Yeah. everything, DB, ladies and gentlemen, Darius Butler. Andy Butt. Thank you for joining us all year on stage in studio, traveling to Indianapolis, especially in this weather. Uh, you're the man. We appreciate Thank you for that you. and always looking so cool. Joining us now live from an attic in Ohio is a man who's a college football national champion, Super Bowl champion, Ryder Cup champion, COVID survivor. Yeah. Hell yeah. Yeah. Almost came up a conversation just yesterday. Ladies and gentlemen, AJ Hawk. Hey, AJ! Hey. AJ, how you doing, pup? What kind of COVID situation almost came up yesterday? Well, I almost brought it up whenever, you know, there were certain networks that were formally funder, funded by Pfizer and Moderna right, and, right. and yeah. things of that nature. What am I, there was a couple yesterday where it was full Aaron Rodgers moments. I, I popped four times in the middle of a couple of different answers that he gave. I'm like, oh, that's awesome. Like, that is, that is straight from the mind of it. Like, the most Aaron Rodgers answer I thought I could have heard. Boom, it came out, made me laugh. I enjoyed the conversation with him yesterday. How did you take it? What are your thoughts? Let me tell you why I took it first. Let you gather some thoughts real quick while I'm giving this answer. He's playing football again. I actually said it to him, I'm like, oh, so it sounds like you're still playing football because he talked about the process, how you got to love it. It's either a fuck yes or it's a no. That's what he's been saying since the beginning, but he still said that he loves the process, which is a great question from old AQ Shipley, who has mm -hmm. normally been scared to death yeah, to every ask week. a question. So I was very proud of AQ for doing yeah. that. Because normally he just looks like a big baby up here sitting in a diaper, doesn't he? Yeah, he Aaron does. headlight. Just like, oh, hey, no, hey no. Do, you, do you have a question? He's like, he's binky. Yeah. No, I don't no, have a question. Yeah. You know what I mean? That's normally what he's can like. You imagine, yeah. Can you imagine AQ if he really did just wear a diaper one day on the show? He That'd does. Sweet. Dude, he's Every day. big baby. No, but, only a diaper, though. Nothing else. Just oh. diapers. Like, hey, this is why I wear to fight camp, guys. I think he's jocked. That might be the fight camp uniform. I'm not 100% mm -hmm. sure down there in Walt's basement. But he is jocked, though. Like, his calves are yes. fucking this large yeah. like he is strapped right now now i think he's eaten a lot more than he had planned on in the past and obviously this is what he looked like as a teenager alongside mm -hmm. joe paterno oh my goodness this oh, dude yeah. has been a pittsburgh fuck from the yeah. beginning Jeez. from the beginning this imagine How old is he like is he like 17 16 i think probably 17 there at that point That's he was 11. just elbowing people in the paint in high school yeah. basketball <laughs> he told foxy what his move was yesterday he was like I, I just checked the refs early see what they were calling i get the ball then i fucking quick elbow to the ribs and then i lay it up Let's if stop. they didn't call it early Could i'll be a have good a big night, night. Yeah. Yeah. Long All day. Me. yeah he he, he played the I'm the victim card. I'm not built as tall as everybody. Everybody knows my arms are a little bit shorter. So, yeah, I got to fucking just Bam. make people piss blood whenever mm -hmm. they're playing bass. He did it to me one day over here when I was fucking around. I put a little defense on him, <laughs> and he gave me, like, a pump fake, and I'm like, oh, I'm back in high school. A oh, this is high school AQ. I, I saw it in his face. He gave a little pump fake. I did, like, one of those, and then he fucking spin elbow right to my fucking yep. – yeah. couldn't have been <laughs> more – Hunting ribs, you know, that's yeah, what of course. Boom, right to my ribs, and then it was a layup. I'm like, all right, dude, Jesus. Not that. You win. All right, way to go, you know, but that, he was a menace. He, Hall of Famer. Yeah. Wait, he was probably a victim wow. in this woke culture? All right, so that's another thing that Aaron talked about, and that certainly got run on a couple of political shows. I, I got a couple of ads from people watching us on political shows. That's great. Honestly, I'm sure everybody's real proud of that. But what I took away from it, definitely still wants to play, still loves the process, and he's coming to the Indianapolis Colts. Now, Darius said he heard that he's going to be back with the Packers. Ty said he heard he's going to be back with the Packers. A lot of people on TV are like, the Packers are the best situation for him. What did you hear as a person that's always said for the last three years he's going to play and he's going to be with the Packers? Did you hear the same thing yesterday? Yeah, pretty much. I, I definitely think he is going to play. The only no thing offense. that scares me is that just to spite us and everyone else, I could see him not just retiring because we're all saying he's going to play. So he's like, oh, yeah. Oh, you thought you knew what I was going to do, didn't you? Okay, cool. Oh, you guys thought $60 million? Hmm. I said it was a lot of money. I, I acknowledge it was a lot of money. Because I did. I said hypothetical here. Hypothetical here. Okay. $60 million is a lot of fucking money. And he goes, 
It's a lot it of money. Is. That's a lot yeah. of money. Yeah. And uh, I appreciate him being honest and transparent. Rarely does that ever happen. Then him saying he would rework it, obviously, to make it a little bit more salary cap friendly. That was news. That's that huge. News to me. Yeah. That's huge, yeah. isn't it, AJ? I mean, that's a big deal. Yeah, it means he's yeah, like he's willing to do whatever to, to make it work. It's, I mean, does it seem it seems like me he wants to be in Green Bay. He just doesn't know how it's gonna play out there, what they want to do and Everyone seems to be up in there. I just don't know when that deadline is to where something happens. He said if there was a two-week deadline, he would be able to make that decision, mm -hmm. right? He said that's also news, I feel like. It definitely is. Yeah, yeah, that definitely is. And it's true. Like, are you – he has to be leaning one way or the other. And did you just all of a sudden wake up one morning, like, here we go. Yep, I'm in. I'm going to make a call. I'm playing. Like, what do you – how does it work? Yeah, I don't – well, AQ was asking, and then – I brought up the gut feeling thing yeah. that a lot of the preachers that I've been following on Instagram because I've befriended them, they always talk as if that is God. Mm -hmm. yep. So, which oh. might be, might be yeah, long term. Yeah. Could, Maybe it's could a person be. controlling the game, whoever it is. Mm -hmm. Grandmother. Making you do, I've always called it gut instinct. I've always just like gut instinct going to do that. But every time I hear these preachers speak, they go like God has put it on me to say God has done that. I'm like, okay, maybe that's what gut instinct is. Maybe that is God doing it. I think that's what happens though. Whatever Aaron believes in, who knows what it is. I think it's just like something that happens where you're like, yep, fuck it, I'm doing it. Yeah. I, just as somebody that at a much smaller level, much lower level, I wanted to retire for like four straight years. I mean, there was like four years I wanted to retire. I'm like, this is not yeah. what I'm supposed to be doing. This is not what I'm supposed to be doing. And, but I still, if I'm going to do this, though, I'd like to be fucking great so I can still talk my shit, though. Because if you're a punter and you're not really good, hey, shut up. Get off Twitter. Like, I know that. So it was like a, a constant battle. And then finally, it was like, this is it. This is when I, I think it was when I got fined for a photo after I had a fake punt on Thanksgiving that led to our only points that day. Just shortly after I could find fucking $50,000 or something for a photo that was still my. From, from your own team, though, right? Yeah. From your own team. And then that not was. The, not, it's different than the league finding you. Yeah. Big yeah. Time. I literally just got to the point where I was like, I'm not supposed to be. This is not what I'm supposed This is not what I signed up for. This is not what I'm yeah. supposed And I'm not supposed to. I'm a person that's not supposed to be in the league anymore. That's literally what I just was like. Cool with them. They're going to survive. They're going to do great. The league will go on. I didn't think that it was ever going to be a problem that I'm leaving, but it just, for me, it got to a point where I was like, I'm not supposed to be in the NFL anymore. Like, this is, yeah. so it's just like a feeling, you think. Like, a lot of things happen, I think. And how does that happen when you're whale watching? I do not know. <laughs> Maybe earthquake, 2 a.m. Maybe it came, shook something. It was the Lombo falling off the thing. Oh. Hits him in the head because the earthquake comes. It lays right next to him, and he's like, that's a sign. That's yeah. what I'm hunting. Yeah. Oh, my God, that's a sign. Like, does something like that have to happen, or how do you get to the gut instinct? I do wonder that. Darius, what are your thoughts? I mean, it's different for everybody. Like you said, some people is God. Some people is just a gut feeling. Shit, Vontae, it was halftime. You know, you never know. Shit, luck, it was shit, third preseason game. Like, it, it's different for everybody. Everybody has their different process. But for you, you know, mm -hmm. you did it. To do something for four years, three, four years, that you don't feel fully into, especially something as hard and – as taxing as, as, as uh, professional sports. I'm sure yeah, a but, lot of jobs are. But. Yeah, but Diva, my, my position versus your position. <laughs> yeah, but yeah, you need to kick the fucking seasons ball. Get long. You still got to be in the fucking building yeah, just as long as we do. And yeah, but I was starting to cook. I, did a, I remember I did a comedy tour. I had a show. I started – that was when yeah. I was like, let me see if there's anything outside of football mm -hmm. that, A, can make money. Like, I come from a place where there's not a lot of money. So money is going to be a driving force behind a lot of – decisions that my gut is going to have a lot of <laughs> money financial backing behind it so i wanted to see all that stuff but i knew that once i came back and said i was going to play it's like got to be all in. Yeah, you know what ahead. i mean got to be got to be all in got to be great at it but then in the off season i'm going to see if there is some other stuff that could potentially generate a living if i wanted to and then also do i enjoy it and what i learned when i started doing more shit with my foundation when i started doing more shit on a microphone i was like i'm finding fulfillment because i was scared i wasn't going to find fulfillment and then also there seems to be some money over here as well and that was kind of what led to it but i think it's a, a lot of things aj i think it's a lot of things that lead to that point and I don't mm -hmm. know how you make it this early into an offseason. You know, I, it would almost have to be made during the season last year. I do wonder. Probably, I'm, go ahead, AJ. My bad. Con, dead, what is it? Uh, Andrew Brandt, what, deadlines, spur, spur action or whatever mm -hmm. he says. Like, there's a thing. Like, whenever there's some kind of, you know, quasi-deadline out there, I think it probably gets more real inside his head. Go ahead, Connor. Yeah, I, I, we saw the contract in his post-June 1, and I don't think that changes anything with the Packers draft-wise because it's not like they're going to take – another quarterback or anything like that, but definitely a they deadline. They can designate, though. Yeah, That's designate gonna happen. It has to happen before one. the draft. 
They have to do something way before the draft. Yeah, but they'll sure. definitely designate it post June one, though. Yeah, because it's oh, yeah. fifteen million and then twenty four million the year after, so it splits it. But you wonder with the competitive void he talked about, like that hole, what the golfing will do. That's so real. I've brought that up to him numerous times, and yeah. he won't. He's no sold me a couple different times. But, like, this Pebble Beach thing? Exactly. Like, he might go out there, and he might be competing in it, and he might really think that, hey, this is kind of Does actually, he feel anything? It's scratching no, the itch, he, yeah, or it won't. No. He already told you, though. He already said, like, he's not one of those athletes that thinks he can go be a professional golfer. He knows that's not a real possibility. He said that. Do you think he believes <laughs> yeah, that? he plays really well. He showed up one time at that fucking match and, what, buries a 15-footer for birdie to win? on Like, he yeah. didn't golf. He was in Hungary, fucking. Yeah. Or he was in wherever, the jungle, whatever jungle he was in, off a plane, onto a <laughs> golf course, better than fucking everybody that's golfing there. Didn't even play. You don't think he thinks about that as well every once in a while? Like, I think I He could. knows that. He knows it's a different level, though. He's actually very realistic and smart when it comes to that. He knows, like, yeah, okay, I'm good out here. But he even said, show me one athlete, show me one former athlete that actually made a cut at an event. Danny Woodhead. Not only Danny Woodhead. No. How about that fucking teacher that was in the Champions Tour? Oh, yeah, sure. This guy's writing with chalk still. Not even a dry erase board. This guy's on chalk, hasn't played golf in 30 fucking years, goes into the Senior Tour, Champions Tour, almost wins the thing. I think he won the thing. So we're talking about it could be possible now. Are you trading off though potentially winning an MVP with like shooting one under at like a, you know what I mean like unless you're competing going into Sunday yeah. like hey I'm about to win this fucking tournament like I don't think the competitive uh, hole is being satiated the same way where it's like hey I could win a fucking MVP playing quarterback. So what's he going to satiate it? You think because that has been but a that, big part of that's it. That's why I don't. That's why I think he's yeah. playing because plants, yeah. plants. The only thing that can well, do that he becomes the best <laughs> ayahuasca <laughs> taker yeah. in shaman. history. Yeah, he'll be a shaman. 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 Or Sherpa. He'll lead the ceremonies. That'd be yeah. he'll lead people up ever. Bro, what if he gets like a fucking one of those like uh, address, like a title? Yeah, like congratulations, it's an mm -hmm. award, oh. and that's like his MVP, the greatest ayahuasca. <laughs> Of all time. <laughs> I was thinking about it last night. Whoa, 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 hey, whoa, whoa. Ho, ho, ho. There's some other ex-NFL players doing that right now, and yeah. we're watching it happen, and we're laughing at it, and then 10 years from now, we're going to start we're asking gonna, questions. Yeah, and they rule the fucking world. Who are we talking about? You know who I'm talking We don't have to say it right now yeah. because we Actually, don't I, have, I have multiple players in my head right now, actually, so yeah, I'll talk later. Bingo. Yeah. It's me too, right. so we will just we'll save right. this for a later come. Only difference between a cult and a religion is what? Acceptance, Politics. cult leaders banging everybody. Poison. Mm -hmm. Vaccines. I mean, that, that happens in a lot of religions. Too. Yeah, it you're does. Right. Yeah, that's a good point. Uh, fish, money. I, religion but makes money. Fish, money, yeah. fish, fish. The 12 fish. Yep, yep. That's, that's how the Catholics made their money was the fish market. Sam. Um, yeah, that's why uh, Friday. No meats or whatever. That's right, that's yep. Filet fish. Right Not right a bad play. Yeah. That's how it started. Yeah. Yeah. on it. That's all Good Friday, right? Is that yeah. what it is? Good Friday, sir, with no uh, meat? Yeah, and then every, every Friday, Friday during Lent, you mm -hmm. can't have meat. Yeah, mm -hmm. allegedly that was back in the day. Because yeah, I like old, my fish fry. Yeah, the fish market allegedly needed a little bit of a pick-me-up. Yeah. So they said, mm -hmm. all right, you can only eat fish on Fridays. You know what? How about it? Well, go to hell if you don't. Deal. <laughs> you can you find it. enough fish? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Because we're eating fish. See how big as ocean is? We can fucking yep. find it. We don't want to be greedy. We'll just do it every Friday. Yeah. Every, it doesn't every, have to be every day during Lent. Just 40-day period, every Friday during it. You, good for you guys. I'll get you a whole year. Oh, it's 10 years. All right, we're doing it every year. Mm -hmm. Boom. The fish business is booming on oh, yeah. Fridays and everywhere else. Yeah, allegedly. But I was thinking last night, I kind of want to ask Aaron, like, when he makes this decision, decision. Tough uh, word. I fuck yeah. it up all the time. Will it be, like, will he reassess after every season? Or do you think there will be a time where he makes the decision that he every knows year. before the season, hey, this is my last year? It's going to be every year, I think. AJ, you are you know, like I just talked about me, four years thinking about retiring. Yeah. I, I think once it's in there, I think every year you're going to revisit it. Am I wrong? Yeah, and I think it, he will know as the season goes, like when it is the time when he's going to step away. I think he'll know during that season, okay, like right. before the off season, He'll at least have a, a much better, much clearer idea in his head of what it might be. Him or Tom win the bowl, they probably walk away if, if it ends in a Super no. Bowl no matter what. I just want to let them both know, you guys ain't got it anymore. <laughs> Sorry. I don't know if you saw it. Darius Butler put a football right into that trash can yeah, yeah. Yeah. right before he went to break. Tom Aaron can't do that. No chance. They used to be able to. <laughs> yeah. But Remember 10 we, years ago. We saw Aaron 22 years ago throwing to Tommy Wilson. That's right. Yeah. It was unbelievable. You see the spin, the, oh, the yeah. spin rate? Oh, yeah. Aaron can't spin it like that <laughs> no, anymore. No. Well, yeah. it's like also, you know, we, we could have said that, but, like, Tom had that opportunity during the COVID year. Like, they won that Super Bowl. Like, he could have just 
close the book right then. And be, but like also when you go back to talking about these guys being competitors, if you win a Super Bowl and you have a great season, like I assume it's not easy to just be like, you know what, it's okay because you're probably thinking like, ah, fuck it, I'm gonna go win another one next year. It's a process, not ex- necessarily the trophy that they're hunting. I think they'll be chasing the process, which is chasing greatness forever. We've seen it with every other quarterback that has been at that level. Okay, I don't know any of them. Do we know any of them? Payne. His arm. Yeah, but his he arm was done. messed up. Yeah, he, he yeah. was injured. He, he knew it. You couldn't call it. Yeah. The game told. Elway mm-hmm. isn't Elway one? Didn't he win two and say sayonara? Well, so I think Steve Young said Elway was his body. Yeah, was it was the same deal. Like the when they won that second Super Bowl, he he. Did like if you look at his stats from the game too, like it was kind of similar to Peyton. Like, hey, it's almost like the game tells you. You know, the game tells you when you're done, and normally teams tell you when you're done. And once again, Peyton got cut or mm-hmm. whatever. But especially when you're in that quarterback level. Now there's video surfacing on the internet of Tom Brady walking aimlessly around a school in Miami, and there's security there, and obviously a wobbly camera because Tom Brady's around, so it is going to be a little bit wobbly. He's peeking around, giving a tour, uh, kind of looking into the Miami country day private school oh, yeah. for his kids to live in down there in Miami. And everybody said, is he going to be a dolphin? And Darius even said this morning, oh, when Tom's a dolphin next year, he's going to be awesome. And I don't oh, know yeah. if he's just buying into this propaganda or wanting it to be true. His kids live in Miami with, with Giselle. Yeah, well, they got mm-hmm. houses across the uh, bay or he's whatever. Ha- been living there for a while. If he wasn't to be touring the schools that his kids are supposed to go to, and Giselle was doing it, with somebody else, sure. Tom, bad dad. Of course. Right? Yeah. Tom doesn't want to be bad dad. Tom just wants to get his eyes on some Yeah. yeah. Speaking of, where's Giselle? Is she a good mother? Because she wasn't there. Well, I think she probably had her own. She's, yeah. yeah. My, well, then show me the video. <laughs> I don't know. I don't It'll know if you just. Next year. There we go. Give to a nice year to rest up. Okay. It is Melon right. Uh, go back there. Steve, the owner already got caught up, jammed up with the, the, the fucking tampering. shit. The tampering and shit anyway. You might as well get him now. Tom, an F1 fan, too. So we got F1 down there every Tom, year. There's there. Vegas is having an F1, yeah. too, right? Yeah. yeah. And oh, Josh yeah. McDaniels is out there. Yeah. But I don't think that video means anything, AJ. Your thoughts? You've, you've, been, you've had a tour of schools mm-hmm. before in Ohio, obviously, mm-hmm. for your kids. What are your thoughts? No, I mean, obviously, his, he and his wife probably split custody. They live Ex-wife. with Giselle in Miami Jeez. most of the time. Is that was the fastest. Is that the fastest divorce ever? Is it How does that happen? I think during those 11 days, there was a lot of negotiation during training camp. I think. But normally, like, mm-hmm. I guess, how do they fast track it? Like, it was like, oh, bam, here we go. It's final. Isn't FTS. it usually, like, drawn out months and months? But I know they already agreed to, I guess, splitting everything up. The uh, $40 million lost or whatever in FTX might have heightened it all with some lawsuits yeah. that were potentially coming. But I assume behind the scenes, this is probably cooking, right? Yeah, I was going to This had had to have been in the works for quite were some time. Were they both? You think they like where they both reach? Like, what is the moment when they both reach out to their own lawyers? Yeah, that's so, the thing I want to know. So, we had um, a pretty good source. We don't know if it's real or not. But during those 11 days of training camp, Vince Vaughn, Owen Wilson actually sitting at the table. Yeah, exactly. Tom and Giselle. Right. And that was a full, that's, they didn't know how long it was going to be. Yeah. Mm-hmm. They had no idea. Right. But Vince and Owen put on their best yep. fucking performance. Yep. You get some miles. It was 11 days. Yeah. It's exactly you what throw happened. Throw a couple miles our way. Giselle, you can go have fun with a jiu-jitsu trainer. Like, Tom, don't you want to get all hot and sweaty with? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Boom. That might have been happening. Norwegian model. Which would have been more impressive, by the way. Allegedly. And I think they should get, like, they've been working on this. They've been split for however long it is, because normally this is very long and drawn out. Seemingly kept it under wraps pretty good for a long time. Yeah. And then it had to be made public because it was a public thing. Yes. Mm -hmm. And then it went right back to, right? Yeah. I think. Oh, Yeah. yeah. Went back to kind of normalcy. Congrats to both of them. Yeah. yeah. Hopefully they're both happier. I wonder if Tom, not easy. That is not an easy thing Tom to do. Tom might have some more kids. What if Tom gets remarried and it's a younger gal and she wants to have more kids? Maybe he'll do that. Yeah, maybe he's looking at this school for a kid that he hasn't even had yet. Yeah, maybe possible. he gets back with Bridget Monahan. You know, the first love. Or well, that's why everybody's saying the Jets. He compliments her a lot. Well, oh, they're, yeah. they're saying the... Uh, they have a great relationship. They're saying the Jets potentially in the running because that's where old Cuz goes yeah. to school. Mm-hmm. Uh, where I believe it's Jack, his oldest son. Tallest. New who's York. a dog. He's yeah. He, he, he's got the makings of the prince who's promised. He could be the guy. Mm-hmm. And maybe, you know, Tom's like, I'd like to be around him through his high school years here. Yeah. yeah. He looks a lot like Tom, too, without the butt chin. Uh, joining us now is not somebody <laughs> who looks like Tom, but definitely looks like somebody that went into Yo Trap. In Tokyo, ladies and gentlemen, a man who went into Brazil, Tico Figueroa, ladies and gentlemen, the number nine pound for pound fighter 
in the UFC. The flyweight champion. The first Mexican UFC champion of the world. Brandon Moreno. Yeah! yeah. <laughs> What's up, dude? Amazing introduction, man. Thank you so much for the time. Hey, no problem at all. Que estamos, mi amigo, huh? Ah, nice Spanish. That's all you I almost got. get it. That's all I got. <laughs> yeah. okay. That's all I got. Brandon. Okay. No problem. With, uh, with uh, how was um, how was it? Obviously, we all saw the viral clip of you trying to run out of that arena after being very gracious and things getting tossed at you. Did you expect that going into Brazil and getting a win before the fight even started? Did your camp say, hey, getting out of here might be a little bit problematic if we get a win? Man, I mean, not really. I, I, I was expecting a little bit more, more love at the end uh, from the Brazilian uh, people, but I think the the end of the fight was a little bit confused for the for the people also, like a lot of uh, a lot of fans uh, thought I poked the eye of uh, yeah. uh, Figueroa's eye, uh, but man, you can see the replay it was an, uh, a very clear uh, punch right to his uh, right eye, uh, and that's it. But man, I'm from Mexico. I, I, I'm not saying it's something good. I'm not saying it's it's correct. But uh, I don't know. The people get so excited sometimes, and they love to to throw things to the people. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, soccer, yeah, we, we've heard about yeah, soccer. Uh -huh. The exciting atmospheres, obviously, in soccer down so there. So that's that's why for for me it was kind of normal. Like, ah, let's go, let's just <laughs> enjoy this, and that's it. <laughs> yeah, let me just get the fuck out of here real yeah. quick. That's hilarious. Congrats on a big win, by the yeah. way. Yeah. Thank Good, you, AJ. Oh, can you uh, talk a little bit about your camp? I know you had a ton of adversity leading up to this fight, like crazy knee injury that you kept under wraps. You got sick during camp. I know all this stuff happened. How did – were you ever in – like, was it ever in jeopardy that you weren't going to make it to this fight? I know you stuck with it, and a lot of guys wouldn't. How was that camp leading up to it? Yeah, maybe. I mean, but not really. I Starting from, like, uh, I need to, to do, like, a huge – change in the middle of the training camp like I need to, to, to switch a uh, head coach uh, for uh, reasons the, the people around this uh, sport know um, so I start to work with a new head coach and you know starting from that that was kind of a uh, hard um, then yes uh, I never I, I don't I don't like to talk too much about it but uh, yeah I have the, the, the little problem in the knee and in the middle, in the first round, uh, Figgy attacked my, my my knee exactly the same knee I, I I had a problem, so I don't know, wasn't comfortable. Then yeah, I got sick, and I don't know what happened. I don't know if it was COVID again. I don't know. I mean, I, I I'm vac vaccinated, so I don't care. But but man, it was like just yes, like two weeks, two and a half actually. Uh, with I was with like two weeks uh, with the sickness. But I don't know, man. Uh, again, I said this. The I said this before. Uh, I'm mentally uh, very, very tough, and and yeah. sometimes the people don't don't think that because I'm always like, like smiling and being very respectful, respectful with everybody, and you know, I'm trying to 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 be nice. But I'm crazy, man, and I never, <laughs> I never really, I I never uh, decide to pull out of the fight. Never. So you're saying I'm nice to everybody, but inside I'm a dog. Let's don't get this fucking twisted, okay? <laughs> Let's not. Uh, and obviously that's joking. How long were you? You said two and a half weeks. That's like 16 days, 17 days. Kind of. Yes, man. Kind of. And was weird because, uh, like, that's a long time. Being I don't know. Yeah, after, yeah. after, man, after two or three days, I was fine. Like, okay, I'm starting to feel good. And then I, the sickness uh, came to my body again. Was weird, man. Was very weird. I don't know if it was. Uh, covid or another another stuff but i got like uh, i got sick like for a long time I, at some point yeah i got a little bit scared but but i say like i don't care i don't give a fight i just want to fight yeah yeah <laughs> and we can respect that and obviously i think anybody that steps into the cage is an absolute badass you are as well you were nowhere near your absolute best if you're sick for two weeks before a fight happy to see you got a win congratulations on that now you're a black belt in jujitsu right and i as a no big deal. Hell yeah. I, wear, I got a white belt on here, but I understand what Keanu Reeves here in a coloring book has black. Yep. Um, so <laughs> I, I only know this from the internet. I watch the fights. I don't follow along enough to know everybody's background. 
allegedly there's a conversation in the MMA world about like fake black belts or something like that. Is that real? And do you know if your, uh, your jujitsu is always going to be better than whoever you're fighting? Is that just something you know going into a fight? Uh, I mean, definitely definitely the, the, the fake black belts exist uh, for sure. Uh, but oh. Yeah, it's a real the thing. Problem, huh. um, it's, it's, not a, it's not a real problem, but every single like uh, uh, jiu-jitsu uh, coach, uh, every single professor, master, whatever you want to call, uh, has a different standards of how much they need to know or how much or how much uh, the level need to need to be like very high to give you the black belt so some coaches give you give you the the black belt very easy and other coaches give you the the black belt with a lot of hard work so it's always depends the, the coach so always depends uh the standard of the of the coach of course you've submitted a lot of folks so i'd assume that mm -hmm. That black belt is legit. Yeah, valid. <laughs> now, I need to find the University of Hopefully. Phoenix. Uh, yeah. Uh -huh. yeah. Black belt, give her out. Yeah, that's right. You know what I mean? Just need to figure out how to get mm -hmm. to the University of Phoenix and get one of those. Have you seen what they have had to go through to get the belt? And then once you get the belt, you got whipped, right? Don't you get your fucking ass beat by everybody that has one? Uh, yes, actually. It's a tradition. And and the same. Also, it it's depends on the gym. Some gym is like... They give you like very light and everything is fine. Okay. But then other gyms, uh, I remember my 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 old gym in, in in Tijuana. They give you with everything and well with power. They grab the bells like, damn, <laughs> <laughs> it's funny. I, I thought this was a celebration. <laughs> Ty has a question for you. Yeah, Brandon. Obviously, you fought this guy four times, and now that you've kind of conquered that part and you're moving on, like what's what's next for you? And I feel like a big chunk of your career now has basically been like hey you gotta take out uh figueredo and now that that's done like where do you go from here like is there any thought in moving up weight classes obviously you know you don't want to just give up your belt like are you gonna potentially try to hold a couple straps at the same time like what where do you go from here after you've closed this chapter yeah i mean first i mean first of all these jasmine i mean this rivality uh, was crazy. Uh, I know uh, now I'm part of the history of the mixed martial arts. I'm part of the history of the GFC, of uh, the promotion. And man, this rivalry took uh, a lot of uh, a lot of uh, of my mental health. Man, <laughs> yeah. you know, it was a lot of time thinking about this guy. Uh, a lot of time like doing. The, the the game plan against him trying to 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 watch what can I do in the middle of the octagon against the uh, against him you know it's very hard because la, la, like I said before like we we fall uh, four times each other so we don't have like a lot of secrets between us <laughs> we know the style I know the guy punch very hard I know the guy is, is huge he's a bully and he and he know he knew I mean I I'm very fast. I, I have a really good technique, a really good boxing. Um, I, you know, I have a lot of volume. I love, I love to put pressure too. So, man, was hard, but I'm so, I'm so happy. I feel so grateful to finish this with him. I mean, I, I, I finished him twice in the in the four fights between us. So, uh, man, I fin, I, I finished this rivalry for sure. Uh, and man, let's see, let's see what happens in the future. So. I need to recover a little bit of my, of my uh, mental health. I need to recover my body. Uh, but at the same time, I want to be more active because for the same for the same thing with uh, you know for the rivalry against Davison. Sometimes when you are when you are in, in, in high level, it's not just if you are healthy or not or able to fight. It's about you know like contracts, uh, money, uh, both parts be agreed for uh, for the fight, whatever. So it's not it's not very it's not um, easy to get fights as when you start uh, fighting in the promotion. So that's it. I mean, I want to be active, but at the same time, I want to recover myself. I don't know, man. I'm, I'm thinking like um, I don't know, like June, July, maybe. Oh, here we go. Ooh. So so let let's summer. see what happens. Hey, little summer battle. Hell yeah, that's right. I'm, I'm, so what's the what's the next plan? Are you pushing Dana now to try to get uh, so you could headline a pay per view event in Mexico? And have you thought what that might be like? Ooh. Oh hell yeah, man! I would love to do. I would love to do that. And actually, they 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 are building um, right now the Performance Institute in Mexico City. I and I think they wanted to to open it this year. So it will be awesome. Like 
I don't know, do kind of like a like opening, like huge opening uh, of the Performance Institute on uh, Friday, Saturday the fights, or something like that. It sounds, sounds perfect. Like, Olale. do a like, kind of Olale. do a kind of international <laughs> fight week, but in, in Mexico City will be very cool. That'd be awesome. Uh, Connor has. Could you imagine that place? Ah, oh, that'd be crazy. You just talked about how I'm from Mexico and mm -hmm. the crowds are the way wild. they are. Oh, yeah. And that is a real thing. I think we all know. Could you imagine the first UFC champion oh. walking out? What's the song? You come out to the same song every time I should know this. Yeah, man. Yeah, it's, it's always my same same song. It's, a, it's, a, it's actually my song. A, a Mexican group made the, the song for me. A Mexican band playing it out? Yeah. Oh! Let's go. Oh, la, la. Could you imagine? <laughs> You walking out there with that place, it'd be going bananas. Are you somebody that, uh, like, when you're walking to the cage, got to calm down or get hyped up? Man, uh, before, yes. I mean, I know. I mean, before I tried to I tried to be, like, very excited, like, pump me myself up. But you never know now, man. I mean, I'm just trying to, to enjoy the moment. And if, if I'm angry, I'm angry. If not, it's, it's fine. But the, the, my main goal is just to be focused, you know, be focused and be ready for a fight. I don't know what's going to happen during the day, okay? I might yeah. be fucking pissed right. off. <laughs> you tell me. Exactly. I, yeah, who knows? Go ahead, AJ. Uh, you mentioned uh, recovering, like you're getting your mental health back in order or whatever. What, what can you do for that between fights? Like, what do you do to, I guess, get away or try to you know, reset yourself? What's that place called in Mexico everybody's going? Tulum. 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 Yeah. You got in Tulum? Oh, that, that's like... I n I never been there before, but everybody says it's very cool. Um, but so, man, I don't know. First of all, I, I want to be with my family. You know, when you're in, in, in a training camp, uh, it's like you are there, but man, you are tired. You are like like very like homesick sometimes because uh, you are every uh, every single day thinking about the fight, thinking about the game plan, thinking about the other guy trying to kill you, you know. <laughs> so right now, the 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 first thing I'm start to do is just be with my family, with be with my daughters, with my wife, and enjoy it. And um, we are trying to get some a little vacation this weekend. We are going to uh, uh, an international uh, national park, uh, Zion in Utah. Oh, okay. Obviously, we know what that is. It sounds awesome, though. Yeah. Doesn't it? It's, no, yeah. it's, it's, sounds, hey, it's going to be amazing. We need to go, maybe. Uh, hey, it's beautiful. Uh, I've never been there before, too, but uh, I saw the pictures, and uh, the place is really cool. It's, very, it's, it's beautiful. So, man, that, that's it. I think uh, I just need that, you know, be with my family. We out of the uh, of the all the all the noise about the uh, the fights a little bit too, and that's it. Hey, you've earned it all, champ. Go enjoy that thing. Connor has a question for you. Yeah, Brandon. Pat mentioned in the intro that you're the ninth ranked pound for pound fighter in the UFC. Is that something that you and other fighters really value, or is kind of everything secondary to the belt? So like more than anything, you want the belt. But then, is that ranking kind of something that everyone talks about in the locker room? Good question, man. I don't know. <laughs> I think it's it's very personal. Like a, a few fighters take that like like very personal. Like, hey, I want to be the, the number one pound for pound in the world, um, and it's fine. And, so, and obviously, uh, sounds very good. But uh, for me, I don't I don't care, man. Yeah. <laughs> I saw the I saw the new yesterday. Uh, with, like now I'm in the ranking in the top ten, and that's very cool. I mean, <laughs> made me feel very proud of myself. But I don't care, man. Maybe I can be a fifteen man. Who do you train with? Fuck it. Who do you train when you're fighting <laughs> yeah. with? Because they're obviously got to feel like they're pound for pound top ten mm -hmm. in the world as well. Mm -hmm. That is a huge deal. Do you train with other known fighters? What's your camp look like whenever you're fighting? Man, so the situation with my training camp right now is is is, is very simple. I have a little uh, group in Las Vegas. We are training in the in the Performance Institute uh, here in Las Vegas. Uh, my coach, he lives in Dallas. But for this one, uh, he moved uh, to Las Vegas. Uh, he came every single every single weekend to work together, and we made a, a really good things in a, a really short period of time. Um, so that's it, man. I have a, 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 a really good training partners, and we are like a family. 
Hey, I, I just saw a video get posted up here. Obviously, one of the greatest boxers of all time, Canelo Ooh. Alvarez here. Uh -huh. uh, Cher Kindred, obviously, spirits there. You train with him often? What did, did he help fix anything? Did he change anything for you? No, I, I, I met him. I met him, oh, I don't remember when, in 2021, I think so. Uh, we went to, uh, to his gym. It's a private gym. Um, and nothing, man. I just, I just went to the, his gym to meet him. We we talk each other a little bit. He get, he gave me a few advices because at the end, uh, and in this, in that point, I, uh, I, I beat Figueredo in the second fight, so I won the title the first time. So everybody knows Canelo Alvarez. He's the best of the best right now. I think the best pound for pound in boxing. So he gave me a lot of advices about you know success, about the people around you, wow. about what is next what I need to do maybe in my career. So, man, the, the guy is very cool. Uh, the guy is, is a really hard worker. And there you you can understand uh, all why uh, a guy like him he has has a lot of success. Yeah, I like that. Now you're, you know, wanting family time and everything mm -hmm. like that. I feel like some people at the moment get so big and they get lost in it. Doesn't seem like that's going to be the case with you. I would like to tell you, though, if you get old, you know, if you get older in this fight game and you don't want to get hit in the face or anything like that, mm -hmm. the Oculus, you know what the Oculus is? <laughs> you know the Oculus? Hey, we can make a, we, we can make a leak. You don't want that. The Oculus. Hey, listen, I'm letting you know. Hey, I know you're the pound for pound nine. In that Oculus, I'm a fucking problem, Brandon. <laughs> I am a problem in the Oculus. I'm not sure, man. Oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> Hey, we appreciate you, man. Enjoy your trip to the park. Enjoy being champion, and hopefully we'll get to talk to you again soon. Let's go, guys. Thank you so much for the time, uh, and nothing. Enjoy the day. Hey, you got it. Hey, uh, uh, ciao. No. Hasta uh, luego. Hasta luego. Yeah. luego. Oh, Jesus. That's on me. Hasta luego. Hey, orale. Orale. Hasta luego, ladies and gentlemen, Brandon Moreno. Yeah, it's a park in Utah he's going to. Oh, oh nice. of course. Yeah, he's in Vegas. So Fly that's over. probably like, you know. Quick trip. Little foresty yeah. trip or whatever, you know. Log love, cabin. I love fighters. They're just genuine. They just say whatever they're I thinking. love him. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I'm a big fan of his. You know, he was offered yeah. uh, up for, to the program, which we're very thankful. And first UFC or Mexican UFC champion, my first question is, does he speak English? You know? It's Naturally. going to be tough for us to be able to do a talk show oh, yeah. if the person doesn't understand what we're saying. I sure. can't translate it, the whole thing for you. Yeah, Zito can translate, but One he cannot way. tell us how to respond. Yes. Right. So that's a whole thing, you know what I mean? And hopefully technology will get to a point where we'll be able to just do that, mm -hmm. and maybe this microphone will be able to translate immediately yeah. and send it over there. Ooh. I mean, maybe in the future that will be able to take place. And they go, no, no, he knows English well, and you're going to love his spirit, they said. And then I started watching like some of his uh, previous conversations. I'm like, I do like that guy. Got the juice. I do like that guy. Seems like the perfect guy to be a fighter. Like, I'm going to go hang out with my family, and then, I don't know, Jew, I mean, I guess we'll just get back yeah. out there in June. When you walk out to a fight, are you uh, are you locked in in a? I don't know, man. What what happened? Earlier? <laughs> yeah. What am happened earlier today? Yeah. What did my kids do? Did they do something? Well, then I'm walking out there a little bit pissed off, but still focused on the job <laughs> at hand. In Brazil, we had a nice. We were looking at the beach. It was a nice day. I went in real calm. Yeah. Real calm, and then had a good day. That's hilarious to me because I would assume that that would be something that. You know, especially number nine pound for pound in the world. It's like, all right, here's the routine. Seems like he's just a guy. I enjoy that guy a lot. Seems like he doesn't. He's not sitting there overanalyzing it. He's not sitting there anxious and worried all the time. And that, that can happen, especially when people get the belt. But to follow up, he was talking about being in these camps, and he's fought this guy four times. Yeah. He said, you're there, but you're kind of absent, you know, you're a little like when you're in camp, like you're mm -hmm. thinking about this guy who's trying to kill you. So he's been thinking about this guy for a long time. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Him and Figgy, four in a row. You know, he's been thinking about. They've been thinking about each other for a long time. I assume they're both excited to be like, "All right, let's yeah, done with that. Let's try something new here." Now, obviously, he'd want to win the last one. Yeah. Yes. So yeah. I think Brandon Moreno in a much happier spot than him. Yeah. But that UFC shit, I honestly, the humans it takes to get in there and do it, I have nothing but respect for. And then. Like him, he said, I like to put the pressure on. and He's like, he's a bully. I like to put the pressure on. If you're UFC, you're like, oh, this is a, let's fight forever. Yeah, exactly. You know, let's get these guys to fight forever in there. But, like, there are entertaining fighters, and it feels like he's a guy that will stop a fight. You know what I mean? Oh, yeah. Sick for two and a half weeks, knee injury, and still going in and getting a dub like that. 
Um, hey, his dog. coach. His coach got booted. It was a weird like gambling situation too. Oh, really? Is that what took place? Is that why he said he yeah, the camp? He said, yeah, he had to switch coaches or whatever. Like, I don't even know what the coach did, but something with – That was at camp, that right? That whole camp. Yeah. His, whatever this coach was who coached a few guys, I guess yeah. he's not allowed to coach right now. I don't oh. know exactly what he did, but that's what he said. People that follow the sport closely know – that's he mentioned that. Uh, it happened during his camp. He had to switch coaches. Jeez. Can't be easy. Sick, switching coaches, mm -hmm. the whole thing. Hostile environment. Yeah, in Brazil, yeah. And he's like, I'm, I'm nice to people. I respect people, you know, but inside, I'm crazy. <laughs> it's like, oh, this guy's a fucking dog. Oh, yeah. Dog. This guy is an absolute – you have to be, obviously, to be a UFC fighter. True. Especially to be a successful one. I think there are some people maybe that aren't absolute dogs that get into UFC because it's like they have no fear or something like that. <laughs> Not everybody without fear is a dog. You know, there True. is – there's two different True. things there. But though, the UFC fighters, I have no idea how – in here i guess you well, had to do it every day though same thing for you no. you're on your face different people. completely different like the one-on-one -on -one, it's just you and that other dude like locking yourself Gage. in the cage like that's yeah. a completely different mindset and different Gage, world than, yeah. than i ever lived in. just the way it all works mm -hmm. right because before the fight big celebration come mm -hmm. out there's other people in the ring you know because he's ah! yeah the assassin baby <laughs> the wife is about 10 15 feet away from kids her. Yeah. Right there. And then they all walk out, leave, and then it's a. Uh, and it's like. Now we go. What have I signed up for? Just drop in. Imagine that whole thing. I haven't talked to, uh, you know, I have some friends, obviously, that have gone into it. And I don't think I've had a chance to, like, have a couple brujas and talk about that moment. Like, hey, when they. And it really, like. Like, okay, here. All right. This is it. A lot of guys talk about it. A lot of guys talk about how they're scared to death. Like, some guys are really honest about it. But that door closing, that has to be a moment, I assume, in the whole fight night. Like, if you're the fighter, I assume there's like, well, the walkout, you try to do this, you got to do this, you get in a corner. And then when you hear, that's probably a sound, I would assume, mm -hmm. that is a part yeah. of it. It's like, well, when you first hear that thing shut and then they lock it, it's like, here we go. Yeah, this is switch. what we signed up for. It's a great, and I guess boxing's always been that way. But I think the ropes kind of give it like an exit. Like yeah. there, there is an exit. When and it's, you can only use your, your two, two fist in boxing. Like it's a different world when your whole body is at play. Agreed. But people have still gotten real fucked up in boxing. Oh, so really? I, I, I don't so, want to box it. Yeah. I don't want to make that walk into boxing either. I'm not saying anything like, but yeah, it's, it's a, they're all of them. I, I have massive respect for Optically, it. though, the cage that's locked in is yeah. just nowhere like, to go. That's much more of a gladiator thing than yeah. a ring like a boxing mm -hmm. ring i think so that's why it's just it's also fascinating to me yeah once buffer leaves to your point and it's like okay there used to be a lot of people in this ring and then 10 seconds mm -hmm. later it's just me the other guy in the ref and Fucking like, herb dean yeah and this yeah. is good yeah and this is going now, what down if you get right in there now. what if you get in there too and you're like damn this guy is an app he's a piece of concrete like he's a lot his punches are way heavier than i thought yeah, how about first 15 seconds you find it <laughs> boom 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 you land a good one Guy just eats it. Okay. Yep. All uh -oh. right. Here we go. Yep. Uh, we did not prepare for that. Looking at the coach. <laughs> that was the best I got. Yeah, he's right still there. up. He's still up. Down. That was the best I got. Boom. Sprawls out. Yep. Okay. okay. Right. And then All you're right. dead ass tired, too. 45 seconds in. You're like, oh, man. I Two so minutes good. and 15 seconds. Like, okay. <laughs> okay. All right. Maybe I'll do a little run off the cage kick thing. Yep. Yep. All right. And he got me. And I'm dead. Yeah. yeah. Like well, that, that would be a moment. Like those... Those real moments that you probably would never hear from a lot of these guys. When you give your best – I forget what fight it was. It was a couple months ago. I should have – somebody had an arm, like, all the way broke, full body work. Might have been Volkanovski. Per person made it to Bell. Okay, and going back to your corner when it's like, I had arm bar fully in, yeah. mm -hmm. full – like, that was almost game plan – Full body work, and this person's fucking Gumby. Like, what are we? Yeah, mm -hmm. I'm exhausted now. First of all, because I just had to do that, and it doesn't work. Like, that's a moment in the middle of the fight where you're so exhausted. Can we change the game plan? I'm real tired. I, I don't know. All right, well, let's, hey, get, fucking keep let's the, go, jab. Do it again, the jab. Keep the jab going. It's like I don't think I'm ever going to be tough enough to experience that mentally. I don't think so. Well, and like that last Usman fight, he's winning 24 out of 25 minutes. Oh yeah, and then 30 yeah. seconds, he you know. Drops his arms for a second or whatever, Boom. and the other guy Bing. kicks him in the face, and he loses. Jeez. One shot away. Yeah. Puncher's chance. Mm -hmm. That's right. Mm -hmm. what if now, you... Jake Paul might be doing it. He might be getting into the MMA world. Hey, he's, he's an Ohio fuck. We have to remember that. At the end of the day, the Paul brothers are from Ohio. 
So that carries a certain toughness, mm -hmm. a certain grit, a certain mentality, let alone what they've been able to do through all the business ventures and fuck-ups that they've done in the past, so how tough they are. He's a wrestler, though, right? Logan, better wrestler, I think, than Jake, right, in amateur I wrestling? Think Logan, Logan had a more, like, extensive wrestling career in high school than Jake, but I don't know. I'm not I sure I think Jake that. left early, though, to go do the yeah, Disney. Disney. Yeah, yeah. I, don't, I don't think he... Okay. So I think he's wrestling not like he has a base somewhat in wrestling, and they're not putting him in there against like yeah exactly. That's where you hope the booking doesn't no. you know because if he goes in there and he's fighting a fucking black belt, it's like those guys aren't no. doesn't matter how big you are, how strong you are. If you're not used to grappling with someone on the ground, like you're gonna get submitted. Everybody try everybody buries you know Jake for this whole thing because the fighting community he's making a walker out of it even though he's bringing more eyes to it and everything like that. Well, he's not gonna be able to do this. It's like. This dude still has the mentality he'll go in there and do it. Oh, yeah. Like, that's something good. good. The guy's good. Like, he's a good fighter. He really is. Get great boxer. Yeah. I saw I the... Wait, MMA, if he does MMA, if he fights an MMA fight, man, that's a different world. That's a different sport. That'll he's heavy, awesome too, sport. right? Isn't he? He's kind of heavy. Yeah. yeah, yeah what does he weigh? I don't know. Probably, probably 185. Is he bigger, yeah, than, yeah, is he bigger than Logan? He'd be middleweight, Logan bigger. probably. I don't know. I've no, I think Logan's... Uh, I don't know. I don't know well enough. I've seen Logan a few times. Always to let him know, like, fucking keep going, dude. Yeah. Just fucking Is he keep still going. wrestling? Yeah, I think he got hurt. I think he tore, tore his, his ACL, right? Oh, shit. Wait, I mean, Logan Paul tore his ACL? Yeah, in the last match. In I think. Uh, Saudi Arabia, right? I thought it was a work. Did he get surgery? I thought it was a work, and then, like, I think he actually yeah, did. Yeah, shoot. I think oh, he actually did. Okay. He fucking put on, though. Oh, yeah. Enter. Great show. Frog splash onto the announce table. Mm -hmm. Yes. Selfie. High one. That With video. a cell phone. Yeah. Oh, so awesome. This dude, you can bash him all you want. Oh, I did see this. Having yeah. the mentality, not only the ability. Fuck, you've seen yeah, me almost cool. fall off the top ropes like six times. But having <laughs> the ability to get there, then also perfect camera shot while you're jumping like 20 feet and doing a thing. It's crazy. It's unbelievable yeah. talent. Yeah. Unbelievable ability. Weapon. And they seem to have that. Just a couple of Ohio fucks doing their thing. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, changing the game, changing Russian. the whole world. Yeah. Good luck to all of them. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm not getting in there for your MMA ever, though. No, no, no. no boxing, no. maybe someday. I might get into Yeah, it. you should. You should definitely. <laughs> Let's schedule a boxing match for you. You want to fight Frank Gore? Don't play fight boxing. Him. I do not. That's what I'm saying. Chad Johnson. Like, I am going to be in the boxing that people are playing. Because there's been some bad matchups I've seen before. Yeah. I'm going to try to get in one of those. Mm -hmm. I'm going to try to get into one of those. Later, yeah, should, though. This is when I'm, like, real? almost 50. You know, this is going to be like. Fight a, Wee Man or something? Wee Man's got a fucking He's dog got, yeah. mentality. Uh -huh. I, I am not I fighting Wee Man. No. Wait, did you see him? He, he got picked up and dumped through a fucking Four Seasons table yeah. and bounced right back. Look, 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 he look, also look. fucking F5 Sami Zayn at Mania. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. People forget. <laughs> no way. That's who, maybe. Sami Zayn. I need somebody else that will be so clueless as I will be at that stage of life where they're like, you know, one thing we haven't done is this. And hopefully it's like some actor who's like a fake athlete, you know, or has been athletic in movies. And then I can sneak a couple in early. Because if that thing goes to duration, I'm done. Oh, like Carl. Carl. The head guy for um, trick shot throwing football videos. It's fucking Tyler. Tyler's Son him. of a bitch. But yes, like a dude perfect person when they're almost 50. <laughs> uh -huh. And I'm almost 50. Exactly, that's yeah. exactly what I'm that's talking what, yeah. about. Yeah, they might have some great I like them, shot, though. So. so that's going to be difficult. Well, you, you can like them. They might do a no. through the legs punch in your face. I have a funny not. feeling yeah. if I'm boxing yeah. when I'm 50. I'm going to ha have to hate the person. Yeah. You know what I mean? At least flip the switch. That's all I need. You see them at dinner? Uh, yep. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Somebody comes mm -hmm. by and says, oh, oh, okay. And then for the next five, six weeks, I hate that person. Yep. Yeah. But the people that do it for a living and the people that just sign up to do it and everything like that, and I'm talking about boxing with pillows on pretty much, the UFC shit, so much respect for the brains. That that is, and they're normally super deep thinking motherfuckers too, yeah. aren't they? Oh yeah, I think that's they've been getting I'm... humbled. They've been getting humbled their whole life. Like they go to practice, you get tapped out. Like they've they've seen it. They know. Hey, at any moment, like I can I can get got. Yeah, <sighs> I tapped out three times in sixty seconds. I went rolling in here, little jujitsu, and I don't think the guy was a black belt. <laughs> <laughs> the guy was, was nowhere. He was a champion, I believe. He was. He definitely won some fights, but I don't think he was known for his jujitsu prowess. And he fucking put me in a double arm bar, broke him, yeah. both of them. 35 seconds in and then a little bit later bang tapped out mm -hmm. and then 62 seconds into this 90 second round i tapped again it was three tap outs in fucking 62 seconds and i said all right i don't know if this is for me i think this is something i'm not supposed to do let's get back up to our feet so i got nothing but respect but you're right that is a humbling experience when you're just losing and getting beat down let alone how exhausting it is mm -hmm. it is so exhausting to train impossible. for that shit not to in mention like always 30 cutting seconds weight. in 
Mm -hmm. Oh, the weight cut. Like, these guys are always cutting weight, always, like, right up to the day of the fight, just being miserable, and then, boom, like, crash. Okay, let me gain 20 fucking pounds before I fight. (laughs) What we're saying is, although we don't cover mixed martial arts in the UFC all the time, Mm -hmm. we have a great amount of respect for it. Oh, yeah. And we are a sports show, and that is a sport. So whenever we get a chance to chat with somebody, like, the nine... Ninth in the world, pound for pound, toughest yeah. dude on earth. Yeah, That's legit. You got to do good. that. Yep. Good. Have to. Mm-hmm. Talk about competitive stamina, like for those guys. Like he just fought the guy for the fourth time. It's like at, at some point, it's like okay, I can't hate you anymore. Like I've said, no, all they this don't. Stuff. None of, no. A lot of them are like yeah. super. It's a work. Yeah, you know, like mm-hmm. like a lot of guys. I think Some have, they want respect. Appreciate sure. that for level. Sure. But at press conferences, hey, right, got to sell the fight. Got to sell the fight. It's a work, you know. Yeah. That Conor McGregor documentary, when he was in his mom's attic basement mm-hmm. thing, yeah, what's it called? Notorious. Notorious. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. yeah that's yeah. that's a good doc to watch. I think. Great doc. In the whole fight, because they cover it What's all. What's he doing? Mm-hmm. Is he going to fight again? So he's in that movie, right? Roadhouse. Is that what it is? What yeah. movie is he in? Yeah, with Jill and Hall. They're yeah. talking about uh, him and Chandler. He looks Wait, jock. Is that coming out? Is that coming out? That was like Ronda Rousey was supposed to do that. Yeah, she was, and they shit canned it because it's a terrible idea. You don't need to fucking remake Roadhouse. You want to put these guys in a movie? Fine. Name it fucking something else, okay? Roadhouse is unremakeable. What's your problem? You're right. Thank you. right. Ty's right. Well said. There it is. No, my Dalton. Yeah, exactly. No, my Wade Garrett. You tell me that guy's the fucking best cooler around? I don't think so. No chance. What are, wait, why are they on a, a raft? Like yeah, a, exactly. Are these guys Navy SEALs. SEALs? Yeah. This is like Frank Lucas in fucking American Gangster. You want, don't call it Blue Magic, okay? You can fucking do whatever you want. Just don't oh, call it. Are you saying a brand's a brand? Oh. Yeah. Don't cut that shit. Yeah. Conor McGregor's in it's going to be good. I'll watch it. I mean, who are we kidding? I'm oh, not yeah. fucking. When's it coming out? Coming soon. soon. All right. Who's an original? So it's not called Roadhouse 2? Just fucking Patrick Swayze. I want to let you Sam know. Elliott. Yeah. Darius, I yep. do believe Roadhouse, pretty big Caucasian. They love What's it. The, the great, whites love it. Great, great movie. Yes. Military? No, 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 no. no. So no. this guy I is a, he's what they call cooler. Dope. He's basically a bouncer at a bar. He gets, he brings into this bar. Because, Which guy? Uh, it'll be Gyllenhaal in this. It was Patrick Swayze he in the original. The roads out. Yeah, because there's uh, basically this bar, just people always fucking getting in fights mm-hmm. and mayhem Back going the on. Day, there's a corrupt was. guy who runs the town. So what do they got to do? They got to fucking bring in Dalton to clean it all up. So that's guy on the right. Yeah. And what's Connor? Uh, I'm guessing he's uh, one of Brad Wesley's, who's the bad guy, his top henchman. Oh, so oh. this is Connor verse. Yes. Connor heel. Yes. Oh, okay. So oh, it's going to be good. I nah, I doubt it. <laughs> I thought they were a team, didn't you? Yeah, I, mean, I, I, I thought they were on the seals team. together. Yeah. Yeah. They're certainly making don't make it look like a sequel, though. Too, yeah. Yeah. Butts right there. Oh, you want good, you watch the original. Watch Patrick you. Swayze can't be defeated. Rest in peace. This looks like it has nothing to do with the original, though. These pictures. I might be the only that right kind of makes that has never place. seen Roadhouse. I've never seen it. Thank you, Connor. Yeah. Foxy? No it's choice. Old. You knew that was yeah, really old. Uh, it's That's on really Amazon old. Prime, I know. It's so okay. good. It's so good. The only reason I know Roadhouse really is about a bouncer is because Ron White. Yeah. I got thrown out of a bar in New York. And I'm not talking about I was escorted and I was asked to leave. I was hurled out of a bar like a Frisbee by two bouncers that go home and watch Roadhouse and beat themselves. <laughs> yep. Oh, Patrick Swayze did it again. <laughs> <laughs> that's his actual bit. Exactly. And that is the only – that's my only knowledge of Roadhouse is that Patrick Swayze throws Ron White out of a bar in New York. Yep. That's what takes place throughout the whole movie? Yeah, and also Swayze, uh, I don't know, rips guys' throats out, beats the shit out of guys, uh, you know. Terry, I, Terry Funk is in Roadhouse. Terry, 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 Terry Funk. Funk is in Roadhouse. Does he go through a table, I assume? Uh, he might, yeah, probably gets kicked. He takes a beating. Through a table, yeah. Big bump. A couple good bumps. Quite also, big. classic 80s movie, bunch of tits, bunch of violence, <laughs> you know, just everything they were really hopped up for in the oh, mid-80s. Yeah, big yeah. Yeah. T-Bud. I knew it. I oh, knew man. you'd like so, it. Hey, they, Welcome to the Roadhouse. Hey, Boom. Yep. Darius. They Our remade Top Gun, and that one was better. Of, yeah, because yeah. guess who's Same still in it? That was a sequel. <laughs> hey, six awards are up Yeah, for. six Oscars, baby, including the first Best one did Picture. Not. The first yeah. one did not. No, maybe a couple like special effects, but didn't get nominated for Best Picture. Crew's not have. up for Best Actor. 
Whoa, is this like an MVP? Oh, speaking of, let's get to a break. We got the finalists for MVP. Yep. We got the coach of the year finalists. Oh, yeah. We got offensive rookie of the year, defensive rookie of the year, offensive player of the year, defense player of the year. Right. All these finalists are up and at them. We'll talk about that on the other side of this five minute break where I'm going to go take a rather long piss. Oh, yeah. Okay. You know what I mean? Yep. Uh huh. I drank a couple of you these. Sit down. Right. Sit down. <laughs> I'm you one of those guys that sits down if it's going to be a long one? In college, we used to have the perfect toilet for middle of the night piss, face the uh, AC Slater, Slater. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, and then up and at him. I haven't done that in a long time. I don't know if th this might be one of those. I am a leaner though, like at the house. Yep. Oh yeah, yeah I'll do that. But oh, I've never man. been too tired. To, I've never been so tired where I've just sat down and taken a leak though. I wasn't too tired. I thought I broke the game. I thought I just, mm -hmm. you yeah. know what I mean? I thought I was winning. Uh -oh. Hard to do the AC Slater with jeans on. <laughs> you know what? I, what's that? Right here? Yeah, hard to do the – put your hands up there with jeans. Yeah, you would have to go down and go up and around. Bingo. Yeah. Take, a, take a leg out maybe. Uh, we have some breaking news on the other side of this break. On the other side of this break, we have some breaking news. Okay. Hell, yeah. It's big. It's already been announced. It's not really breaking. Well, but we're gonna, still breaking. We're going to talk about a news that has been broken within the last hour. Okay. It's pretty sweet. Mm -hmm. It is cool. It's yeah. pretty cool. Pretty Very cool. Pretty cool. cool. Pretty cool. Also, awards, a lot of other things, and D Butt and Connor are going to try to give away some more money to people. Okay. Ooh. Hell yeah. Let's have a fucking winter Wednesday, January 25th. Be a friend, tell a friend. Take five. 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 We're talking hockey. Roldy and Rupp are talking. Hockey. It was the first time I found out it was Mario Brothers. <laughs> That's all. Growing up, like everybody called it Ma uh, Mario Bros. You know? That was just, uh... <laughs> Once you're called the fucking king of New York, you didn't feel like you had to dress yeah. to the higher, <laughs> higher level. What I love about New York is however you want to dress, however you want to, who you want to be, you just blend, you blend in. And it's, it's so comfortable. This is an organization in Arizona that wasn't paying their fucking bills <laughs> earlier in the season. Again, he's not trying to square off with cats because no one... Someone didn't pay the electric bill around here. You fucking bum. Where are you at? Is <laughs> away from the dungeon? What is that? You got the bricks in the back. The fuck's going what on? Is this a fucking I saw? It. I, is this a I, saw movie, dude? Yeah. Where's fucking like, Jigsaw? Like, you want to play a game? Hey, hey boss. Gums. Thanks for talking. <laughs> hey. You said you swept the stars. That kind of shut me up. For the yeah, rest that of kind of. Hey. Not one of my finest moments or proudest moments or whatever you want to call it. But I tell you one thing: it's infamous in the sense that I go into school, and young kids will come up to me and they go, "Oh, you really gave it to Bellows," and I got to. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yes. kid, oh, that was computer generated. I get into the the Blues alumni kind of unofficially slash officially. They gave me, you know, they gave me one of these bad boys. Oh, so, look at oh, that. God, feel, you one of these. I feel pretty sick. Look at that Ooh. thing. Oh. That's Why? 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 Uh, we're winning the fucking Stanley Cup. The Red Wings are almost as bad as Fox Internet Service right Whoa. there. Whoa! The Bruins <laughs> are getting fucking ran out of town tonight. Your biggest lock, I got it. And Ty knows, even though he might be Mark Stoner in this thing, the Vegas Golden Knights fucking stink. Texas, what's that known for? WrestleMania is coming to town. WrestleMania yeah, is coming to town. Not what? the goddamn Dallas Stars. Let's go, Pence. We can't lose with seven in the stands. Now, hey, great haircut. Good to meet yeah, you finally. Great. You know, we're we'll just tied in the chair. I love it. Uh, <laughs> yeah. yeah, no, it's, funny. It, it's as simple as this. Okay, you gotta have fuck you in the game. Yeah. Oh yeah. yeah. And if you don't. <laughs> You're, you're missing something. I said, sir, if I could just speak up on his behalf, this is like the the second greatest player ever. And Mario turned and looked at me and goes, second behind who? <laughs> All four of those guys aren't rolling or it's not enough to win one round? One. Bro, this is supposed to be a team big enough to win a cup. We're talking about one friggin' round. Aaron Burles told me, and he said this to Henrik Lundqvist's face at dinner, he goes, Hanky, you know how they did the go, you know how they do the renovation at the garden for a billion dollars? It's all you, bro. It's all you building in the net. <laughs> billion dollar renovation at the garden, paid for in five years. It wasn't because the Knicks were in the playoffs. 
It's because the Rangers went on all those runs, and the stud on the team, among several, was their goalie, Henrik Lundqvist. Oh, Gino, honestly, he's one of the funniest guys you can be around, and he probably busted my chops more than anybody. Why are you so slow? You old, you old. Like he would look up like my old contracts and be like, what? No, you're no good. <laughs> Grab me on, this was. Good luck. <laughs> How come you slip through the draft, go undrafted, then you survive on the practice squad, then you show up and it's like, how has this guy not been on a team for so long? How many different moments were you like, I think I can make it in this league, I should make it in this league, and why is nobody plucking me off of this practice squad and signing me for four games anywhere? What was it about, you think? I always told my buddies, you know, my guy Stanley Morgan was on the practice squad the first year with me, and he's been a special team guy for us, doing great things. Uh, but we all, you know, getting out of the mud type of thing, just waiting for opportunities. We've both been here for, uh, this is year four for both of us there, so we always Ooh. talk about getting out the mud. We always talk about on uh, practice squad, our game day was Thursday because that was third down day. And we got an opportunity to go against the, the number one D and, and try to show something, try to catch someone's eye there. So it's just a matter of staying patient and just waiting for opportunities. Whenever you became like a focal point for the offense, were you prepared? Were you ready for it? Mindset day to day going into the building different or are you still that practice mm -hmm. squad guy and will be forever? I think I'm still that practice squad guy, just grimy. I just gotta be grimy day in and day out. And you know, you can't get complacent. You know, you can't let success stop your work ethic there. So I'm, I'm just trying to have some fun with it, make some plays whenever they come to me. And I don't know when it's gonna come, but like in that play right there, you know, we got a double double and you know, I'm gonna be single if they're doubling two people. So, you know, there's there's a lot of weapons on this offense, but I'm gonna win my one-on-one -on -one when I get my opportunities. Hell yeah, grimy Stanford guy. Really? That sounds like a superpower. Let's go to the fence. Let's go to Dan in Connecticut. Lovely place here on the Five Energy phone line. What's going on, Dano? Oh, what's up, Pat McAfee? Dan, you are Is too that... young to listen to this show. I can tell through. I think. Well, how old? I'm not are you? Dan. I am Owen. Matt. Owen, how old are you? He's so different. I am at eight and a half. Oh, eight. eight and a half. If you're telling us you're half age, you're too young to be listening. That's a record. <laughs> What's on your mind, pal? What do you want to talk about, Owen? Um, I want to talk about how inspiring this show is oh, and how Owen. you're inspiring this whole entire world with how you're talking about sports and how you're talking about your life experience. Thank you, Owen. Owen, thank you. Owen. Love you, Owen. Thank you, Owen. Owen. Owen I'm taking oh, one. And also, fuck Boston. I will let Owen know. If you're still listening, Owen, Can't you're inspiring. Him. Best kid ever. Owen, the way you talk about sports is inspiring. Can't say that. Yes. I, I didn't know eight and a half oh. could do that. Is wow. That, shout out, Owen. Me. That time. Go, yeah. Owen. Hey, Owen. New generation in Connecticut, I guess. He's making me feel good, too, by the way. He's yeah. making me feel yeah. good, making the show feel good. He was talking us up. He was hyping us up, and then boom. Yeah. A little, was this Aristotle's brother? A little misdirection from Aristotle's <laughs> yeah. brother, Owen, at eight yeah. and a half there. That was I'd, awesome. I'd say he put his balls on your forehead, but I don't think they dropped yet. So. <laughs> Welcome back to the Pat McAfee Show on Winter Wednesday, January 25th. Hell yeah! Thank you, Tony. Today's show is presented hell by... Hell yeah, hell yeah. Bud Light. What? Easy to drink. What? Easy to enjoy. What? Bud Light is the official beer of the Pat McAfee Show. Super Bowl Sunday is rapidly approaching. What? And we are fired up to get out to Arizona. Bud Light... 
Right. He's giving away beer money every day leading up to the game. Beer Hell money. Yeah. Beer money. B W E double uh <laughs> BWR money. Right. Hell yeah. yeah. Right. Shout out Rodney Carrington. Beer run. Reply Anyways, to this, this video on Twitter with your cash tag, the hashtag easy to enjoy, and the hashtag sweepstakes now for your chance to score some cash. Is that number two or T O? Easy T O. Enjoy and hashtag sweepstakes now for Thank your you. chance to score some cash. It isn't just today either. You can tweet at Pat McAfee Show with hashtag easy to enjoy yeah. and hashtag sweepstakes any day from now to the before the Super Bowl, and you can get some beer money from Bud Light. What? But wait, there's more. Whoever brings home the Lombo will bring home Bud Lights for their entire city. What? That's right. San Fran, Cincinnati, what? Philadelphia, what? or Kansas City what? can bring home free beer for the entire city to celebrate That's if they bring home the Lombo. It's hard to bring home the Lombo, boys, but Let's see how you broke it. it's easy to enjoy Bud Light. Hell yeah. Not that. Bud Light is never breakable. No, no, uh, no. Because it's always enjoyable. <laughs> what? And shout out to Bud Light for giving away some beer money. Make sure you do that. Hey, let's get involved. Let's get involved. Let's win some beer money, huh? Yeah, yeah. I want. There's only a few weeks left. Woo! Get involved. AJ Hawk to my left to talk to the table there. One half of the hammer. Damn. Cowboys 10 digs. And Darius J. Butler is here. Yeah. Ladies and gentlemen, it's time to go to the big board. Here we go. AJ. AJ. Uh oh. AJ. Yep. Welcome to the big board, pal. Okay, when I got this stick in my hand and that big board behind me, you know where we are? Big board. Bingo. Mm -hmm. Video has been released of Patrick Mahomes leaving his press conference today. Why is that a big news? Well, as Harold R. Kuntz tweeted out, mm -hmm. Harold R. Kuntz, I did this before, I apologize, <laughs> Harry sir. Harry Kuntz. K-U-N-T-Z. <clears throat> don't, don't do that. It is Harold R. Kuntz. He is a great journalist mm -hmm. out of Kansas City. That's right. He had the force thought to not shoot Patrick Mahomes' face uh -uh. as he was going off for the press conference. Nay, let me break down what the ankle's looking like. Here is Patrick Mahomes. This is his podium. Intuit TurboTax has paid a lot of money to become the sponsor of the championship games, both of them, the AFC and the MC. They put that over like a hundred times it's, during these games. It's tax yeah, yeah. season. I couldn't even fathom how much fucking money the NFL is making off of this company right here. But I've heard their books are good. Oh, I've yeah. heard it's pretty Very quick. good. Simple. And taxes are a nightmare, aren't they, Darius? <laughs> sure. They take a lot of money. They do. Mm -hmm. Too much. Some a people ton. don't do them. Just don't pay them. Like Methy. Well, there's yeah. some people way yeah. up there, too, that have yeah. figured out how not to pay them. And then Wesley Snipes. Well, he, 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 he didn't figure he out how He paid to the pipe. Yeah, he yeah. ended up having to pay. Nonetheless, this ain't about Intuit. This ain't about the AFC Championship. This is about this man, finalist for the MVP this year, probable winner of the MVP mm -hmm. this year, Patrick Mahomes leaving the press conference. Let's keep an eye on his ankle, the other one. Stop. All right, this guy tried to fuck it up. Yep. Right here. Yeah, who's that prick? guy's got a big wallet in the back pocket. I assume he is an older man, this guy right here. <laughs> Been around, stuck in his ways. These are stonewashed jeans. Yeah, Has color. no idea that Harold R. Kuntz was getting a shot of the century to judge this man's ankle, his plant ankle. When he drops back, what's he throwing off of? This ankle. Except for whenever he's running around doing craziness, he's throwing off of no ankles because this fucking arm with this hand on it doesn't need any base. Mm -mm. Looks pretty good here. Yeah. 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 Looks pretty smooth here in the Great first step. step. Yep. Let's keep an eye on it. Let's play this thing. Oh, right wow. here. You see it? Go yeah. back. Go back. Yep. Let me land on that right foot. Yeah, a little, little light on it. Go back a little bit. Right. Up, up. A little bit more. A little yeah. bit. Let's go from here. Yep. Run it. That, he lands it flat. Oh. Yeah, it does, doesn't I think it's more of a mental thing. I don't think that's a physical thing. I think it's a mental thing. He's scared for it great. to hurt. As he walked off, too. Let's go. The, let's get the ass shot here as he's walking off. Go ahead and play that. <laughs> Pretty clean. Super square straight uh, think, on top yeah. of it. Uh huh. Yeah. But he looks good. He does. Right yeah, he on does. his feet. This is not the Patrick Mahomes gate that we thought we would see on no. this particular day. Not at After all. that disgusting mm. 
need to be outlawed hip drop tackle That's right. that they're teaching in every fucking defensive yeah, meeting room. He looks good. Remember. Lou Anarumo, just a heads up. Patrick Mahomes is at 100%. Yeah. Also, you're not uh, you're not doing Tortall on a fucking Wednesday either, are you? No, this is big pain day. Yeah, <clears throat> this is probably the worst he's going to feel all week. He's going to be good. I didn't expect that. Oh, yeah. Today. Andy said it. Um, so, 2019, yeah. uh, he hurt in week one. He hurt his left uh, ankle, so obviously different than his right ankle. Uh, but he threw for 443 um, and four touchdowns in week two <laughs> over the Raiders in 2019. And Reed said, I think this – this one isn't quite as bad as that one, uh, but it's similar. Sore, but not quite the same. And Andy Reid said that everybody is practicing, yep, and he yep. thought that Patrick would be going through the entirety <laughs> of the practice. Now, it is the playoffs, late in the playoffs. How much are you, you know, yeah. what are you doing? Yep. I, I'd probably go in full speed, I'd assume, but I don't think there's a lot of, uh, uh, I don't know. Line contact. hasn't changed from the video. I could say that. The line has not changed. Uh, Since seeing this video, one and a half is the Bengals' it's, favored. It's now one Bengals' favored, but uh, so it has. It well, has no, changed. No, it was it was one before the video came up. Oh, okay. oh. I can so tell you that uh, potentially every, everyone in the world <laughs> is doing a Chiefs and Niners teaser this weekend. Niners? You th- I think a lot of people are on the Eagles. You think a lot of people are on the Niners for a teaser purpose? Uh, if, if the watchers don't know what a teaser is, you can take the. Niners the plus two and a half. You could tease it six points so that they'd be mm. plus eight and a half, and they're taking the Chiefs, who are plus one, up to plus seven. So those are the big teasers. You don't. Anytime you get an unexpected odds. home dog. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yes, it very much is so. Is when you can dance with the teaser in a good way. Very much so. And a lot of people, it's a rule. I don't know if I abide to it as much as everyone else does. You're not supposed to tease through zero, so you wouldn't tease the Eagles from minus two and a half to. Plus five or plus well, Yeah, whatever it is. Um, yeah. Why, so, not? Why not? They say you don't cross they, zero. Yeah. It's, it's like an old thing. Like, yeah, no point. It's, it's Yeah, you're losing a point in there. Yeah, you tease the dog. I will say I did it last year, uh, <laughs> last weekend actually, and took one through zero, and the whole thing lost. So, okay. All right. Because I, 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 the one that you take through zero, you think to yourself. You took the bills. I'm a uh, Yeah. I'm yeah, a don't worry. Cause you I say de- you're a genius. You cheated the game almost. Yeah. Yeah. And then somehow the gambling gods just figure out how to say, no, nope, yeah. you don't. Not but I, I think I saw a healthy Pat right there. Is that what you saw, AJ? Yeah, game's not till Sunday. Today is Wednesday. Yeah, I feel time. very good about where he's going to be on Sunday. Rehab treatment, vitamin T. Wide, wide. I mean, there's a lot that can take place. Lou Rumo, I don't know what you're thinking about doing this week, but you ain't going home, Paul. Yeah, better get Eli Apple's phone because he's going to have to cover for a long time. Eli Apple is awesome. People are going <laughs> to have a field. The Sunday internet will be Bro. top five. He doesn't care. If, he's been. If they get eviscerated. Yeah, yeah he's been. He's Literally been since day one. He's There's been Patrick forced. Mahomes jogging on the practice field here. He's obviously a far side there, yellow jersey. This is from Pete Sweeney, obviously Kansas City Chiefs. He was the one that told Sal Capaccio on Sal Capaccio's radio show in Buffalo that it would be in Atlanta if there was a neutral site game Ooh. between the Chiefs and Bills. So Pete Sweeney's dialed in. I see Andy Reid focusing on what period one's going to look like. Nice little stretch day. Dunlap down there with a sweet hat. Patrick Mahomes doing a lot more moving than I would have expected. Yeah. Yeah. If any of the trainers or coaches thought this was an actual problem, he would not be doing fucking shit. He would be over there on the left side of this thing or standing right next to Andy Reid and not moving another inch. He was part of the calisthenics. I think he just okay. finished up the calisthenics. Mm-hmm. And he's jogging the rest of the way. Pete Sweeney also has another video, Zito's thinking, and saying, this is great news for Chiefs King. Yeah, 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 news. This makes me want to jump on it now because it does feel like the line is going to move again. Yeah, because... Without his mobility in Showtime play. Yeah. Now, Aaron said this yesterday. Aaron said, Pat's good from the pocket, too. Like, yeah. all the other stuff is that's, extra. That's where I would want to play Patrick from. Like, <laughs> keep him in the – and that goes – that's obvious, I, was, I would think. But um, you keep him in that pocket because uh, he, when he extends plays and Kelsey and these other guys are just able to do that backyard shit and just find open spots, yeah. that shit is unstoppable. But lose defense – that's probably the best job in the league of boxing quarterbacks in. Like, they're so disciplined on the edge, boxing yep. in. Dropping Can't run by the well, right? Yeah, or what is exactly. it? exactly. Chuck talks about it a lot, getting up the field, coming back. Um, D-Butt, that's uh, – sorry to cut you off, D-Butt, no, but that's can't. a huge thing in New England, isn't it? Where, like, yeah. doesn't Belichick lose his mind if you run past the quarterback? Yeah, because yeah. You, you're, you're not doing out, anything there. You're well, not grab the ankle. Anything. Yep. Hey, I mean, this is a good sign. This is, um, he's going through full warm up. Yeah. Hey, Pete this Sweeney was Friday. Here. Mm-hmm. Hey, if he felt if Pat looked like this on Friday, I would feel very good about mm-hmm. him. The fact that it's Wednesday and he looks like this, I feel much better. To your guys' point, eighty percent of the money is on the uh, 
Bengals right now. Uh-oh. 70% on Philly. You were also right on that angle as well, Pat. That's, okay, he's doing one-legged hamstring reach things. He's good. Yeah. yeah. Definitely yeah that's favorite by King that's tough to do on a bad ankle. That's good that he could even do that. So, unless he, this is all at work, which Ian Rapport told us whenever he didn't leave the stadium with a boot, Ian Rapport said Patrick Mahomes knows that everything he does is being watched and will be reported and will have to be dealt with later. So, he probably knew that. I was like, oh, he's working. This dude's working. Yeah. Okay. I like that he's... Yeah. This dude's working. Putter down. Uh oh. The fuck? What happened, Ghost? Yeah, yeah. Michael Cole's fault. putter. That's no, a he... good putter, actually. That is a nice yeah, That company, the, the. Bruce, correct me if I'm wrong. Guy that started that putter company like 20 years old or something. Really? 20. Beast. I think so. Right, Bruce? Bronovich? Can you hear me? Mike's not on. What's this guy? He doing? said, yeah. Bruce. Bruce, you have a microphone, right? I mean, stocks, Brady. Yeah, you. Right, Bruce, you got a this microphone. mic is broken. Oh, is it really? What's going on, Nick? What is the deal back there? It's not broken. Talk. It's back, yeah. Um, yeah, the kid's 21. He's a student at Tennessee. T-squared golf wow. butter thing. Wow. Go yeah, ball. Sweet. Pretty cool. He just sent us one with For the Brand on it and the Pat McAfee Show logo. The butter? It has somehow just ended up being the one that is next. Because there's like 10 putters in this office and the last office. Mm-hmm. That putter has cost the show a lot of money. It has. That <laughs> putter is a good putter, I think. Great putter. Uh, now, when Michael Cole is handling it, terrible putter. He's right. a mark. User error. When Darius is handling it. Decent. Well, I think that's generous. Decent. I mean, last time I was on the green, I hit the first one. Yeah, that is a good point. AJ, I mean, not AJ, AQ. AQ, two. two for two yesterday, mm-hmm. right? Bruce, first putt. Yeah. Not well, with that putter. the lefty? Oh, okay, I was about Fucking to say. Fucking EJ hit one. But that's a good putter. Congrats yeah. to that 21-year-old yeah. kid. Yeah. There you go. Also, uh, in that video, CEH is also warming up. And granted, they got Pacheco and McKinnon, but that's just another guy for them. He's an afterthought. Pacheco really changed the game. Dog. He did. Mm-hmm. And McKinnon... Catching passes out of the backfield or just as, like, a change of pace guy. He's so good. I mean, why? If it ain't broke, don't fix it. Okay, then some breaking news here before our George Kittle conversation, and we bid you all adieu for the day. Got a chance to pre-record a convo with George Kittle, and um, it's good. Oh, yeah. yeah. How long is it? 20-some? Yeah, about 23 minutes. We don't normally do this. We don't normally pre-record uh, just because don't like the thought of it. Just the amount of pressure on, like, Okay, now do we feel obligated to make it like a perfect convo? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. You know, live, there's a little bit of a different expectation. And also, don't want to be fucking just working all day having conversations with people. So once we do it with one person, other people will start to think it's a thing. And it's like, would much rather have the people live. So I think we get a better read on the people live. And I think it's a much better conversation. And I think we're all better live as well. We did the podcast where we pre-recorded. It was nowhere near as good as the live stuff. We are not. There's some people that are incredible at pre-recorded stuff. And their brains are great. A lot of forethought. A lot of thinking. We're just fucking live action. Mm -hmm. But George Kittle can come on the fucking program. First time all year. Fucking need to do it. Absolutely. So yesterday we were able to record with them like a 27-minute conversation. 100% worth it. And it's hard not to just fall in love with the dude even more every time he talks. It is. With that being said, we have some breaking news. Ooh. Myself and Kirk Herbstreet will be the commentators for the seven-on-seven flag football games at the Pro Bowl on ABC and ESPN. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, I believe... Uh, you guys are... So- Sun? Sunday. Sunday. Mm-hmm. Two on, days, one competition. What does that mean? Okay, so I, I'm not 100% sure. I think on Thursday, there's a lot of skill challenges mm-hmm. happening. And then Sunday, there's seven on seven happening. Skill challenges happening, like finals maybe. Seven on seven game. Oh. Then something else. And another, there's multiple seven on seven games. Okay. And then I think there's also skills challenges in there. It's, it's going to be, I think, jam packed. Yeah, should be yeah. a pretty awesome thing. Brand new. I think they're playing for a real prize. Here like we I, go. I think there's like, I think there's going to be some actual effort. Seven on seven. I'm, I'm doing play by play. Kirk Herbstreit's doing color commentary. Hell yeah. That's awesome. On ABC. <laughs> yeah, let's go. What a joke, AJ. That's going to be awesome. Where's Mina? Why isn't Mina with the crew? Great question. I didn't even. That is the NFL Live crew right there. Yeah. Except for RG3, yeah. right? Or is he I was told the NFL Live was thick as thieves. <laughs> Mina's probably going to be there, and they are thick as thieves. We all know that. We got yeah, have you seen the clips on the internet? Not only the internet. We got to meet Laura down there and chit-chat uh-huh. with her. And oh, obviously, yeah. we know Dan Orslovsky and every, right. the whole crew. Big swagoo. Where is Mina? That's a great Orslovsky. question. We assume she'll be a part of the – I mean, there's the, analytics involved. I assume that uh, she'll be there. I think ESPN's putting big yeah, pushing, backing into yeah. this whole thing. Oh, yeah. And uh, the only reason why I'm doing it is because Herb Street said he'll do it if I do it. 
There so, you go. <laughs> I, don't wanna, I don't want to say that, you know, Herbstreit kind of said. Either you do this or I'm not doing it. <laughs> I think you said that to ESPN as well, which is really cool. And mm -hmm. I appreciate Herbie doing that. But once again, I do not deserve to have people like Herb Street in my life. This is a joke. I will try to be as great as possible at the gig. I do believe Peyton Manning is going to be mic'd up the whole time. Eli Manning's mic'd up the whole time. Oh, yo. I think Pete Davidson is going to be there maybe mic'd up. Whoa. I think Snoop Dogg right? Dog is going to be there mic'd up. I think there's going to be a lot of potential Let's things. Let's go. Players, I believe, are going to be mic'd up. So I think it's going to be... You're going to... It should be in my bag. I, th I think it should be a good spot. Yeah. Where yeah. And it's oh, NFL. Kill it. I think. You're going to kill it. Call it should be booth? fun. You'd be in a booth calling it? Yeah, yeah. Okay. Up in a booth. That'll be awesome. You're not going to make any jokes about Pete Davidson's dong, are you? Being well, so I've already tried to figure out how i got to get that in there. Pete, you're comfortable with things about the size of American football. What would you say the team needs to do? <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. <laughs> that, I've got to get all those out now. American football? I thought they were going to use him as one of the upbreaks. Well, there's a chance. I mean, he it might could. be. A, he honestly might be. Might be the first down chains. Could be, yes. <laughs> get rid Whoa. of the chains. They Pete. could. Soft. Ain't breaking. Oh, my God. Relax. <laughs> There's a chance. But yeah. anyways, he will be mic'd up, which is obviously hilarious, and I can't wait to meet him. Hey, Pete, big fan, bub. Yep. Here you go, Pete. Pete, you've been through it, too. Man. You've battled. Uh -huh. Yeah. I mean, he had a – you know, our friend Anthony Gonzalez got in politics. Yep. Oh. And when he signed up for politics, he, uh, you know, he decided that at least, you know, 60% of the people are going to – 70% of the people are going to hate him because – the other political party is going to hate him. And also, people that wanted somebody else in his political party to win instead of him, they hate him as well. Absolutely. But then he got, you know, his own party completely. And we told him from the very beginning, why are you doing it? We don't know enough about politics to know what you're doing, but we do want to let you know, why, why are you wasting your time doing this? These people are very mad. And I think he genuinely thought he was going to change the world, but he had the whole world at him. Yeah. Because that, uh, the president. Yeah, uh, DJT. Put the you know put, put the on red him. dot on him, yeah. I think that happens on the internet whenever Ye used to. Oh yeah. You know, cause Ye calling him skeet. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Put the dots on him, and he had to he had to deal with that long he time. Did. Oh yeah. Everywhere he went, I yeah. assume this Kanye Colt had to do it. And what did Pete do? Just laugh through it all. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Continue to crush it. Tough not to. When you have. Yeah. Oh yeah. Oh, you want to call me skeet? I'm I'm having sex with the wife of your children. Okay, oh, so geez. shut, so shut up, shut the up, mom. Kanye. Yeah, yeah, not the wife. Yeah, no, I don't no, know what right. type of shit they're well, running over there, but never, who knows? Yeah, you never know. But but uh, Pete's Pete, done fine for himself. Pete had a hell of a run. I can't wait to chat with him. Snoop okay. Dogg mic'd up out there. Yeah, mm -hmm. I remember watching his uh, youth football uh, show. Coach yeah, Snoop. Coach Snoop. Didn't he uh, call a fight too? Yeah, he did some of, of that Triller stuff, I think, he did earlier. Yeah, yeah he did the Olympics mm -hmm. as well. And then all, I think – Hockey. You've seen Peyton and Eli. Yeah, hockey. He was, he was awesome. Yeah, the LA hockey. Kings. He was on the hockey. He was awesome. He was incredible <laughs> in that whole thing. Snoop on a mic. Yeah. Forever and ever. Doesn't yeah. he always – he always, always does good. that Super Bowl flag game too, right? Like the celebrity – The beach. Flag. Yeah, doesn't he? The, I don't know. I don't Whatever know. it used to be. Loves the football. Yeah. Obviously be able to talk. Peyton and Eli too, also big push for like all the players to play in it. So they're trying to make this like uh, the actual Pro Bowl. Like, hey, because you heard Aaron yesterday, yeah. like, well, the Pro Bowl has kind of lost its shine yeah. because third and fourth alternates are in there. It's mm -hmm. like, yeah, yeah, yeah. How about this year? It's huh? Real. How about you? Are they uh, wearing flags? Is it a seven on flag game? Yeah, I think so. That'd be cool. Yeah, are they going to wear the little baby soft helmets? Have to. Oh, that's oh, interesting. These? The Guardians? Are they going to no, have to wear the, the Guardians? Probably should. I don't like, want the last thing all you those need high school is concussion kids in the Pro Bowl. There's going to be some moments, though. Oh, yeah. Corners, you can't really half ass it, right? Because you're going to get nah, dunked on? It's for, it's for, I would assume receivers, too, but yeah, you don't want to get Is there a lineman 7 on 7? No. Oh, they're um, not playing wide receiver talent? and they're not doing their own bracket? Ezekiel Elliott might be, you know, one of the skill positions, but I don't think there's linemen. <laughs> like when uh, they, like the linemen do it in practice, when they walk, they play walk 7 on 7 or whatever? Oh, yeah, and they do the. <laughs> yeah. That started taking over a little bit. Walk routes. A little bit. Walk ball, people started yeah. getting got. Is Russ going to be there? Does Russ get to go as a backup? As is like an alternate? And is he mic'd up? Do I get a chance to? I want to see that. I want you to talk to Russ live on air with Kirk. Maybe just the whole game. Just talk to him. Well, Kirk is going to be great. You know, because Kirk is, he's so good I'm in sure there as a color. I, I got to watch him work for that Vegas Bowl. Yeah, mm -hmm. for the bowl. Him with the clicker, with the draw. Yep. And with the microphone, he's a magician. Yeah. Been doing it 20-some years. So I'm excited to set him up for that as well. Like, yeah. I'm, I'm pumped to do the play-by-play. -play. 
here's a funny story. So whenever I, um, you know, whenever we got in this this whole world, 2000, what is that, 17 or whatever? Mm -hmm. Yep. 2018, 2017. And I was asked if I wanted to, like, commentate games or whatever. And I was like, yeah, I want to be the play. I want to be the host, though. Like, I want to do play-by-play. -play. I was told directly by somebody, like, you're too dumb to do play-by-play -play or whatever. Uh, you color commentator is much easier. It's an analyst thing. Nobody, no player's really ever done play-by-play. Uh, -by -play. That's a journalist. That's a school thing or whatever. So I did that Thursday night football thing uh, where we were going to tiny towns for mm -hmm. these tiny school games competing against the NFL, so nobody's watching it. But it was my first opportunity to really be in a booth. Hasselbeck asked me to do it. I was very appreciative of it. I did it. Then I saw how much Adam Amin was studying and how many things Adam Amin had to know. And I was like, that motherfucker was right. Like, I am. I do not have the amount of time or the ability to do all the research that, like, Adam Amin does that we just saw the other day with his board and everything he's got going on. So now I'm getting an opportunity to do it where it's just I know everything about all these dudes. Yeah. You know exactly. what I mean? Yeah. And it's just one, one a, once a year, that's perfect. I know how they've done. I know moments in their I know who they are. Yeah. And then that just makes – I don't have to do all this stuff that is incredibly difficult for being a play-by-play. -play. Uh, like, play-by-play, -play, very, very, very hard, very difficult, a lot of work. That person, kind of right. That's not that I'm not smart enough, but definitely don't have the ability to focus long enough to do all that research that has to be done. But yeah, especially college. So this is like a perfect, I'm very thankful for the opportunity from Kirk Herbstreet mm -hmm. and obviously the people at ESPN for allowing it to happen. So I'm pumped about it, AJ. I'm excited. I think it's gonna, you guys will be, I mean, that's, it, it makes complete sense. Absolutely. Like it, it definitely makes me want to watch the seven on seven. Yeah, mm -hmm. exactly. There's going to be a lot of people that don't want to watch now. Though, what do you mean? Certainly something. Not this one. I think a lot of people are going to want to watch this because it's different. And, and NFL, new. we're yeah. kind of in the NFL. New yeah, people especially. love watching new. Correct. Yeah. It's yeah. Be, Eli and Peyton. Trending like Romo on Sunday. Well, yeah. as, long as long as you're not hammered. Yeah. Well, <laughs> yeah, if you don't do that, just call. call. Yeah, really. Yeah. Uh, you need to. Change your cadences. You know, why, why, sa, why, 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 sa. As long as you don't do that, you should be fine. <laughs> Tony Romo, I would like to let you know. Oh, man. Tony Romo's been Tony Romo since day one. He was loved mm -hmm. at the beginning. Yep. The people will come back. I think the people will come back because it will become like uh, the cool thing. To not like Tony, then others will start to like Tony again. It'll be a full thing. Yeah, people in Boston will forget what he did to the uh, the poor people there and what he said about them. So I don't sure. think they'll ever come back. Allegedly. <laughs> that wasn't allegedly. No, that was on video. No, that was on video. I know, but just in case. There was a real sports, huh, last night? Yeah, oh, with Brian Gumball. Wow. I'll tell you what. Did you hear about this, AJ? What was it about? No. Well, you may uh, want to look into it. Should Text watch it. Illuminating. And they start with Come the two. It's the first 20 minutes, and it's about a certain case going on Your in Your mentor city. and best friend. Oh, jeez. We will certainly have a lot to say mm -hmm. at the right time. Yeah. <laughs> that is still being processed. I need to watch. You should watch it. Watch it this morning. It is very interesting. I wonder, did they okay. send the same type of thing to them, you think? Mm -hmm. No, but they did reach out for him to uh, be interviewed for it, and... That person, said. yeah, and they they Shot. denied. So this is awesome. The situation we're in is awesome, especially after watching that. It makes me feel even better. Yeah, <laughs> not very patient with a lot of things, but like this one is worth it. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, Swaying in the weeds. This one's a uh, oh yeah, it'll be a big day. Uh huh. Everybody big thinks dunk. we're dumb too. You know, like those people think we're dumb, dumb. Exactly. Which we are, are but it's in good. this you particular should, case, people, good spot, it's good yeah. when people think you're dumb. It's great. Good card player, though, you know? So, like, we're in the middle of a hand right now where some things are happening and mm -hmm. everything seems to be good. You know what I mean? God. Everything seems to be good. <laughs> and then at the end, it's going to be one of these, and it's going to be glorious. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's going to be loud, too. It is going to be a great day. It's going to be a great day. <laughs> he, uh, Zito has some of the rosters for that Pro Bowl. Um, Devontae Adams obviously playing in this. Bam. Is he? Are these guys all committed to this? Uh, I don't know. Well, yeah. I probably, guess it's in as Vegas, of now, right? Probably. Okay, so we got. I feel like Josh Allen's definitely going to be there because his relationship with Peyton. Look at that team on the AFC for these seven-on-seven -seven games: Devonte Adams, Jamar Chase. Obviously, everybody's hoping not to be there. Jamar Chase, Stephon Diggs, and Tyreek Hill lined up. Mm. Good luck. This is fantastic. This yeah. is going to be a, a good time, huh? Travis Kelsey at tight end. Obviously, don't want to be able to play in this. Mm. We get it. Who's quarterback? Oh, I don't know. Josh Allen, Joe Burrow, or Patrick Mahomes. If the NFL, Peyton Manning, Eli, is able to get all these guys to the Pro Bowl, if maybe they rented the whole hotel 
Yeah. You know, so guys don't have to maybe just get accosted by autograph hounds the entire time. Mm -hmm. Right. If they did this the right way, this could be amazing. AFC oh, does yeah. have the uh, quarterback advantage for sure. Also, you would think that a lot of these guys would go. Like, look how many bu Buffalo players are there. You're with a lot of your teammates, too. Yeah, but also, like, I don't know if they like each other. Is. Yeah. Yeah. Vacation time. Off season's a good time. For sure. Depending on how they feel. Oh, boy. Yeah, but Vegas, Vegas is a destination. That's the worry, because last time Vegas, it was like 45 degrees. So let's hope yeah. we have a good. Good That's weekend. what it was in Arizona when the Pro Bowl was out there. It was cold. Like yeah. cold. Mm -hmm. Loved it. Love Arizona. Mm -hmm. Thinking about moving there someday. That's how much I love the place. Having Ooh. a Pro Bowl there was a nightmare, though. I mean, yeah. that was not like, oh, I was like, not Arizona's fault. Full hotel was not rented out. Yeah, exactly. There was other conferences happening in the hotel at the same time as J.J. Watts getting out Why? of the gym at 6 a.m. He's getting accosted for autographs by somebody that was wearing a fake corporate shirt that was at a convention i mean there's there's ways to handle it and make it good but i think they're trying i think mm -hmm. they are trying to make it good and i'm lucky to be a part of it hopefully it'll become an annual thing yeah and arizona had the uh tough you know situation where they're being compared to hawaii because the year before and obviously the many years before it was only, yeah, hawaii. only in hawaii and then yeah. it moves all of a sudden out of nowhere first pro ball if i would have been better younger it's okay. This one's going to be great. This uh -huh. one's going to be good. Let's have a good yep, time. Nice uh, to wrap up the day, we can't wait to send you to a pre-recorded conversation um, to George Kittle from just yesterday. He wasn't able to stop during the live time because they're on that, yeah, that other weird time zone. Time. Yeah, yep. Way not there. real time. It isn't, you know. We're in Arizona's different, I think, than mountain, mountain. L.A. right now. Yep, mountain time. Two hours instead of three hours. So yep. we're going to have to experience it whenever we go out there. One of the questions on the – we should hit the 500 phone line. We only did one call today. Aren't we stopping uh, – we're stopping daylight savings next year, right? Are we? I'm I th about it. I, I thought like Indiana was. No, I feel like it was voted on. Everywhere is. When yeah. we spring yeah. forward, it's done, I think, right? Yeah. I I'm about it. Nice. Yeah. I'm sure there's somebody out there that's pissed off about it. Mm -hmm. But I don't think I've ever talked to an actual farmer that said it was good. I don't right. think it matters. It is it's nice when you get that early. extra hour, though. Yeah. What, that one night? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's fucking awesome. It is awesome. Just a 25-hour day. Yeah. When you see it's 2 o'clock, and then it turns to 3, and then boom. It goes back <laughs> to 2. It's like, oh, let's fucking go. Back whenever I was younger and I was out and about. Out the bars. Oh, Here oh, we yeah. go. That's a thing. Oh, oh yeah. yeah. Spring ball's over. Or no, spring ball is about over, I think, when we'd flip. A little extendo. Yeah. yeah. What a time. Yeah. Let's go to the 500 phone line. one 834 da dome Let's go to Nathan in Memphis. What's going on, Nathan? What's going on, boys? I was actually at college game day when y'all came to town, and I was fucking blown away. You guys were awesome. I took a picture with Chris Lika, and me and my girlfriend are so happy for you and your wife on having your child. I've been a fan for so long. You guys are the best. Uh, Thank why are you. Busting with the boys banned from Radio Rose. Nice. What They're the not. What the fuck? How They're you banned busting? Like I don't think that happened. I, I think that I think it did happen, but I think it has changed. I believe they are credentialed. With that being oh. said, I will say, Nathan, we would not be able to get into Radio Row if it was not for uh, Fandle being our exclusive partner. Now, I do believe they have got credentialed in there as like guests. I don't think they have a set. I don't know. I haven't I haven't explained it all. But Nathan, to what you're saying. We don't understand it either. No. But this is – remember, we had to paffle, Nate. You probably don't know that. You probably just called in and asked that question. You probably don't know. We had to paffle at one point <laughs> during this year where even though we had a deal with the league, we were able to run highlights and videos of the teams. If it was to be paused in a graphic, we are not allowed to have some of the team logos on the screen. So it's like the NFL, we are currently in the middle of a transition. I think in media, we all see it. We all know it. I think old school media will always exist. I think there is a transition happening. We all understand that. Um, and the NFL is just, I think, figuring out as it kind of happens. Yep. So in a couple of years, hopefully this won't be the case, but there are certainly some uh, blueprints that still need to be laid in the entire media, internet, NFL relationship. Probably NBA relationship too, probably yep. MLB relationship thing going forward. But I'm happy they're in there. I do believe they got in there, which is good news ultimately in the end. Yeah, I mean, when we were with the Zone and Westwood One in Miami, uh, we were in a literal fucking shoebox on Radio Row. You know, like the smallest set next to, and granted, Romy is Romy. So, you know, you understand that he's going to get the. But the Zone had all the NFL rights. Yes. For Germany, Italy, Canada, Brazil, Mexico, Mexico. so they're paying the NFL, all international. They're paying the NFL a lot of money. So this is a lot of this is Radio Row is a big, who is sponsor yeah, of helping. who has deal with teams, 
that's what I do. Because Radio Row is, it's a spectacle. And, mm-hmm. and yeah. there's a lot of shit. But all the people that are in there have deals with the NFL. Yep. So I think that's why it was potentially a little bit more difficult. But ultimately, in the end, they were able to get them in there, which is good news, I think. But they had to take it on the shins there from the NFL for a bit to, you know, provoke, invoke a little change. Right, absolutely. And I sent them a text to keep fighting a good fight, boys, because honestly, it is, it's one of these things that's going to continue to happen with shit with the NFL as we go forward, I think, AJ. It's the best pub they could ever get, though. Still, best pub that they could ever get is but having like creating or having this rift with the league. Yeah, I mean we a lot of people were wondering how we were gonna handle the whole I found this out afterwards. In the middle of it, I didn't think it was that big of a deal. I was just looking out for the show, like how are we gonna do a fucking show? I guess around sports media, there's a lot of eyes on how is and I'm only saying this because this is what they actually said to me from numerous different networks. Excited to see how Pat McAfee and the gang hang, handle this adversity with the NFL or whatever. They were like, how, how are you going to handle this whenever we weren't allowed to have logos or whatever? So I guess a lot of people were watching on as we did that. I wasn't thinking about that at all. No. I was just thinking about the show, for the good of the show. But I am happy that we've basically said, this is stupid, mm-hmm. I think. They agreed. And they agreed. Yeah, credit to them. So, so. shout out to them also yeah. saying... That's right, because yeah. I don't think a lot they're of people trying, ever do They're figuring that. it out, too, right? Everyone's trying to figure it out right now. Exactly. That's what I think. I think it's like they're in the middle of, like, a lot happening. A lot of money has been made one doing something literally in the exact same way for 30, 40 years. Yeah. Like, the exact same way. This is how the kickoff show looks. This is how the daytime talk shows look. This is how the coverage looks. Yeah. This is how this is. This is how it's spoke about. This is what's not said. This is what is said. Like, a lot of money has been made by a lot of people mm-hmm. doing it that way. So as things are literally changing in the moment, yeah. everybody's figuring it out. I think with us, the NFL, quickly. What was it, one week? Yeah. Not even. It was like six not days. Yeah. yeah, didn't even make it to the following Sunday. Yeah, it was like six days where they were like, hey, we've got this thing. We, uh, we apologize. This is what we're thinking. Can we do this? Like, yeah, you got it. With them, same type of thing. So I think we should give a little forgiveness for the NFL for some of these things that are certainly going to happen. But if they would have said no – to them not even being allowed to go be guests on shows when they're both, what is it, 18 years in the NFL, those two? Combined. At a very, like, yeah. That would be fucked up, I think. In the NFL, real, somebody with a mind was like, so two guys that are great for our league, played in our league a long time, they're not allowed in here, but some local radio host who buries the league every single mm-hmm. chance they get, they're allowed in there. Like, I'm happy it seemed like cooler heads – Seemingly prevailed, but shout out to them being there. I think we'll see them there, I hope. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. With FanDuel, I will say, and FanDuel pays the NFL a lot of money, as does everybody that's in business with the NFL, but obviously FanDuel, <laughs> DraftKings, and Caesars. Caesars, Caesars yeah. To be the three official for the league, they're paying. I, I couldn't even fathom. Yeah. <laughs> I couldn't even Jeez. fathom what that money is. The FanDuel stage last year oh. was hilarious. <laughs> was that not? Oh, yeah. I mean, it was, yeah, it was like a concert setup. I mean, you did have a concert there, but yeah, pretty amazing. With that being said, there are no fans allowed. <laughs> no fans allowed yeah. anymore. First year ever, <laughs> the fans are not allowed. <laughs> That's a shame. Uh, no, I believe no concert, music acts are allowed. No, nope. <laughs> sorry about it. <laughs> and this is what we do. We fuck things up for other people. We apologize, Will and Taylor, probably partially, probably partially our fault in this attack. I don't know about that. You live and learn. learn. No fans this. makes it much better for all the current players that are coming through to, you know, to sell batteries or whatever because they don't have to deal with that. Yeah. Yes, the fans are awesome for us because we enjoy yeah. the hell out of the energy and everything like that. But I could see how at Radio Row the fans ha- being able to go wherever yeah. is certainly a Autograph problem. Fans. Well, and last year, too, they had the thing where, like, they didn't even have security, so, like, fans were just roaming around in the bullpen. Like, they, you know, like, when in yes. Miami, like, they had that little – Area. Walkway set up where people could walk, but last year people were just moving the cattle rail and just like fucking going and standing behind shows in shots and stuff. They definitely don't want that. And autograph hounds get a heads up to Diggs's mm-hmm. point, like, hey, they're not patrolling anything here. Yeah, get and here now. Boom, you kind of get in there and get moving. So I see where the end of honestly, and this is going to sound crazy because I am, uh, I feel like we try to change the NFL a lot. I feel like we have for the better. I feel like we do try. Sure. I, I think they have a lot of flaws. I think they are trying to figure shit out, too, as they go in real time, which is not something they normally do. They don't change rules for, like, five years. Like, the NFL is like, uh, we'll kick shit down. The Right now they're having to deal with shit in real time. 
They've been nice with us. They've mm -hmm. been great with us. I assume they're going to continue to do so because it's better for the league as a whole. Yeah, and as the internet space has grown, it feels like they also have to kind of acknowledge that and grow with it. Well, and there's a scoreboard now. So exactly. Like, yeah. There's many different. You know, there's people that put decks together that say they have 500 million impressions. Mm -hmm. Right, all time. And stuff like that, you know, so like. But How much longer can people dupe all these corporations? We just got an email. We just got an email. Yeah, we'll keep going. We just got an email from somebody <laughs> asking if we would do something, and it was what we talked about yesterday. All of the talking points I brought up yesterday oh, about just man. bullshit numbers, it was the first five things that were said were, boom, bang. The amount of retweets they got in a year, I think, was in there. That's hilarious. A year? Likes. How many likes they had. How many impressions they had. That means nothing. Like, that was how they led off, and it was like, Somebody had to sign off on this being the thing, and whenever they were presented this, they were like, holy shit, 500 million impressions, holy wow. fuck, let's lead with that. And it's like, we read it and we're like, this is bullshit, yeah. so, this, is all, this is all food gays. I don't know how much longer, I have no idea. It has to be the next generation of C-suite people. That's what I'm wondering, if this alpha generation comes up, if they may <laughs> hire some of these younger these younger kids that have a, a, a greater feel for the whole internet situation. Yeah, the C-suites just have to change and turn over. But the C-suites have done great work in a lot of places. Yeah. So, like, you know, they kind of take it as a personal shot, I think, whenever it's like, hey, the world's changing. It's not like it, it used to be. So, like, you guys did great, I think, with the way the parameters of the world were. They did great. It's a whole different ballgame. Yeah, it's new parameters. It's a whole different yeah. fucking ballgame. Somebody on a cell phone can become so different. The fucking Media, er, you Radio Row around. is so different. I remember going to Radio Row in 2007, probably second year in the league or whatever. Now you do it, and there's you see like there's a lot of podcasts that are just local podcasts that are big like in that market that are actually really good shows like for that specific team. And there's a ton of that. There's just so many different opportunities. I think there's a full process to get into that Radio Row though. Yeah. So to Nathan that asked that question, there's a full process. That's it. To get in there. Yeah, it's not easy at all. Let's go to Tim in Maryland. Tim, what's going on, pal? Uh, AJ, D-Butt, Toxic Table, COVID, Cowboy, Boys in the Back, what? Theater, Wonder, Up North. Shout out that Toxic Talk, 8 p.m. Eastern on YouTube. Hell yeah. Uh, guys, how you doing? Keep it moving. All right. Hell yeah. Hell yeah. What so if I just sign up? Good, good call. Good call. Good call. Man, any guesses for surprise entrance in the Royal Rumble this weekend? Oh. Yeah. That is this weekend, isn't it, Tim? It is. Oh. Royal yes, Rumble is this week. Is Saturday. Did you get a spray tan? Come on. No. You don't are you, want to look are like... You, uh, are you setting up a program? Me? Oh, look at you. Look at that answer. Whenever you pause <laughs> and you ask me, what, huh? what's that? What did you say? No, no. The, I'm trying to figure out how to handle this. I thought you said all the boys could come to your house and watch the Rumble with you. Yeah. I'm trying to figure out how to handle this. You know? You guys can't come well, to you got a black box? Yeah. Oh, I'll, yeah. Remember when I told Vince how many fucking pay-per-views we stole from you with that black box? <laughs> Right to his face. You probably lost out on, I don't know, probably 170 bucks from our neighborhood. Yeah, mm -hmm, we sure. stole them all. Uh, a lot of people are just tweeting me that I'm going to be in the Royal Rumble. Ooh. That's wild. When is it? What are you coming out? It's coming out, coming out this 20, week. I think it's this Sunday. I think it's this Sunday. Is it this Sunday against the championship games? I believe so. I thought it was. No. I think What's it's soon? Saturday. Might be Saturday. Would be I think it's Saturday. Okay. Where? So with that, I do not have plans. I thought it was on Championship Sunday. Now it's Saturday. Hold on. Here we go. Maybe. Hold the phone. Okay. Uh, I've not. Football season was our conversation point, basically. Yep. You know, like football season. Talk to you in March. Because of how much I had to do Saturday. on the road. St st it is Saturday? Yeah. Let's go. Here okay. We, go. we got Royal Rumble on Saturday, then we got uh, Championship. All, all sports change their schedule this weekend to not be on Sunday. Yeah, you do not. Golf started on Wednesday this week. I don't know if any other sports are playing on Sunday this week. Is that the Jesus. Phoenix Open? Uh, that's no, next, that's Super Bowl. Week. Yeah, Farmers Insurance. There, uh, that's awesome. Fine. No, is the Phoenix Open different than Waste Management? Because I played both of them. I think on my uh, on PGA. Yeah, on my t my uh, pro oh. golfer. I won both of them. So no big deal. I don't know. Waste management's <laughs> tough too. It's the Waste Management Phoenix Open. Mm -hmm. Okay, so it's together. How come on PGA? I think it's two different tournaments. I thought so too. Huh. I do know Farmers is before yeah, Waste Management because pine. of. Anyways, I will be watching the Royal Rumble, yeah. if that means anything. Still a fan, still in good graces, I believe, with everybody at WWE, which is good news. Still love wrestling in WWE. Oh, yeah. Still a fan of wrestling in WWE. But well, with that being said, a lot going on in my life right now. Like, we should do a poll. What's that? Of who's going to win. Cody Rhodes, I think they said, right, is coming back. Yeah. yeah. He's returning. Okay, he's not winning. How many, yep. how many uh, people will compete in my 30. Have you ever watched the Rumble before? 30 
Superstars. Who's your winner? Is Brock coming? Is Brock? I think he was in the photo. I watched Raw 30 there. He was in a photo to promote something. Mm -hmm. Was it the Royal Rumble? School guys? Any old school guys going to come back? You know who like won the first ever Royal Rumble? Eugene. Hulkster. Ultimate Warrior. Tell him. Hacksaw Jim Duggan. Ho! He also got broke into his house and he beat the fuck out of him. Yes, he did. Yeah. Held him down with a two yes. by four. Yeah. That was crazy he did that. Yeah, but I'll be watching this weekend. Let's go. Yeah. Who knows what the future holds of me in WWE, though, honestly. Be interesting to see. Door's still open on both sides. Haven't had the conversation yet. I loved I enjoyed my time over there a lot. I mean, you're, you're very good at that. Thank you. Yeah. That was very nice of you. I think, obviously, because I'm shoot fan. So, like, yeah. it was pretty. You have to be. You absolutely have to be to have that gig. I think so. As a commentator, you have to know what the fuck, at least. Just being in that universe, you kind of have yeah. to be. What, what, is, what is being tried to be accomplished here? You know, like, because right. it is something, and they've tried a lot of commentators throughout the years. Mm -hmm. I'm not saying, like, right now, tried commentators that weren't fans of, the, of what was going on. And it's yeah. like, I don't even know how you would do that. I don't even know how you would go about talking. Like, I've watched, I don't know, I was probably 11, 10. So was that 25 years of wrestling? So yeah. like you can tell when they're not a fan too. When thing when mm -hmm. things pop up, it's like oh I see why this is trying to happen, you know. Mm -hmm. And I like I enjoy it still. So I'm coming from an angle of like oh this is awesome, this is fun. So I I thought it was the per I had a blast. And then Michael Cole is awesome. And then getting to be able to beat the shit out of Austin Theory at WrestleMania. Yep. Oh, I mean yeah. come on. Mm -hmm. Drinking Steve Wazers. Why? He's stummy. I was rude. Yeah, it was. It's all about. It was. Sorry, kid. Your ribs? your ribs okay from Vince? Well, that is the thing. I have a, uh, and I don't want to talk about this publicly because there's something. <laughs> I do have a deformity. Mm -hmm. That's right. Yeah. Now mm -hmm. in my rib cage. Yep. Thank you for here, Vince. Because the point of the football, uh, Vince put. Yeah. Through two of them. Yep. Pierced a lung too, didn't it? Yeah. yeah. That's why I couldn't kick out. Yep. <laughs> now, when there was a beer being offered, what? Somehow that that lung just. Opened back yeah, up yep. helped. and was like, come on, bud. Mm -hmm. Once in a lifetime here. But as soon as I got to the back. Puking blood. And, yeah. Yeah. That was not a sanctioned match, though. So I'm still undefeated in sanctioned matches at WrestleMania. <laughs> Correct. <laughs> Perfect. I'm also getting rumors that uh, Butch might be the hardest competitor in the Royal Rumble. That's not true. Butch is in the. I sure hope so. Oh, so you're just. Chompa? So you let off with I'm getting reports <laughs> just to lead us off. Good a luck bit. getting noticed out of the ring, boys. Okay. What's that? Otis? <laughs> yeah, Otis is my winner. <laughs> Otis, Otis in it? Otis. No, he should be. Bray he doesn't Wyatt have the stamina, fucking... Tony. I would be shot. Well, he's coming up. Oh! Otis was playing cards with Corbin, JBO, and the I boys. I saw that. This oh, past yeah. week. Pit Viper's on. Mm -hmm. I don't know if he's ready for the grueling task of Royal Rumble. Yeah, yeah. It feels he like is. the Fiend is going to take over this year. Is, it, yeah. is, is Bray in it? I assume. Dongo's coming back. Fon Dongo, I follow him on Insta. As do you. He's been wrestling in the indie circuit. He's been doing it. Yeah. He's been doing it. He's still got that He's big a master, a master craftsman, too, building houses, re, like flipping houses. That guy's awesome. Actual contractor. Shoot contractor building houses. And then if you need him, he'll come. Then he's going to jump off the top rope. So, like, Hulk Hogan used to do a leg drop. Yep. Mm -hmm. sure. And you see the way he walks. Mm -hmm. That's because when you do a leg drop, you're landing right on your fucking ass, and your hips are just, mm -hmm. like, like, it is not good. Back. They Everything. talk about, like, DDP used to do the diamond cutter. Yep. And it's RKO, similar. Yep. And I guess DDP told uh, Randy Orton when he was Bang! Doing, like, yeah, he did do that. Yep. Bang. Bang! Yeah, he used to do that whole thing. Uh, he told Randy, like, I would not recommend this to be your – Finisher, yeah. Finisher, because you're just going to be doing, like, you're dropping. You literally, every single time you're in a ring, you're going to have to, if you want to do it. So Hulk Hogan used to do that fucking leg drop, and you just do it, like, 280 times a year, 300 times a year for 10 to 15 years straight. Like, your back and hips are going to get fucked up. Dongo was like, I'll do you one better. He used to jump off the top of the rope and do a fucking leg drop. Do you remember that? What a fucking psychopath. That guy's back, hips. Whole body. The first time I saw him, he was, like, actually jumping, too. Like, not high enough right here. I'm not just going to go. Like, fucking jumping with a big fucking bang. I'm like, this guy's not going to be able to walk. Yeah. yeah. Year or two. But I'll tell you what, he was devastating. Nobody kicked out. No. That thing went... Every time. Ding, ding, ding. Every single time. And then... AJ, you... 
You got a little zipper burn on your penis whenever you saw Donga the first time down there at NXT. <laughs> I saw it. That was a good one. I had to, I'd never heard that one. I had to put that together. That's pretty good. Well, you you took yourself back to when you met him. Yeah. Oh, yeah, I did. Well, oh, yeah. you know what I did see? I saw a great move he did. I was walking with, uh, forget the gentleman's name, but I was walking with him, and then I see Dongo like 30, 30 yards ahead of us. I'm like, oh, yeah, here we go. This is Dongo. This is my dude. I love this guy. And Dongo did the old move to, to old buddy. He's walking. They both see each other. And then as we get a couple feet away, Dongo puts his phone up and acts like he's on the phone and just keeps walking right by him. It was awesome. Was it Danny Birch? How perfect was it for your Dongo experience? You thought this oh, coolest yeah. then guy. They, then they circled back around, hugged and everything. Oh, yeah, you know, I love this move. And they talked about it. I was like, I need to do that. I haven't used it yet. Yeah. But. Dongo's a game changer. Yeah. I don't know if it was Birch, though. Who, who were you walking with? Do you remember who you were walking uh, with? He was not a wrestler. This guy was somebody that liked to run uh, social media accounts, and I love the dude. He was oh. very – Oh, Nikki Tweets. Oh. Oh. I said Gary Vee. Well, former employee. Disciple. He is a Gary V. Disciple. Gary loves it. He paid two hundred fifty grand to Gary. Yeah. No, that, I think he was working for Gary before Gary found out that that's how much. Oh, okay. That's He's fun. got the NFT Super Bowl here in Indianapolis. He does. Can't wait. Oh, yeah. It's in May. All right, let's get the fuck out of here. Hey, that's hockey talk on tonight, eight p.m. Hell yeah! How's the show gonna be? It's gonna be good. We got. It's gonna be electric tonight. We got. Uh, Incredible guest lined up that we don't know who it is yet, but it will be a surprise. He asks out. Sounds like a surprise to you. Let's go. Good tease. Ooh, yeah. Sergeant Slaughter. Sounds like you don't know. I have no idea. Okay. Waiting to see. Oh, but Rupp sent a text. Hey, got a big fish on the line. Mm-hmm. <laughs> That's something special planned. Pittsburgh yeah, Penguins win 7 6 last night in overtime. The Pens are all the way back. You'll yeah. win Latang. Or- you see that? We're- you still into hockey, right? Oh, yeah. He was a hockey guy. Let's go, Pens. Do you see who they beat? Uh, no. Oh, Florida no. Panthers. Beat no. your team. Whoa. Yeah, see, I was traveling last night, missed it. That's why they lost. Probably. Latang also came back. First game back, scores two goals, including game winner in overtime. So, wow. Stud. Seems like your Panthers had no shot at least. Uh, yeah. you're, still, you're still chasing the bees. Do you want to make a putt for the boys, Tebow? What do you want to do? Actually, tie. Oh. Let's go, putt. tie. No, not putt. Shooting? Scan. He's been slinging it. Ty's been Ty throwing. Have, Ty's he's got been, a cannon, I know. Yes, mm-hmm. he does. Remember when I went and played baseball in that amateur, uh, well, professional, I guess. Yeah. Farm league. Yeah, professional. Ty was pitching to me. Hockey balls inside our old studio. They were moving. He prepared me for a 92-mile-an-hour fastball. Oh, yeah. First pitch I see, fucking make contact. Didn't go anywhere. Make contact. Make contact with exactly. it. Exactly. Hardest thing to do in sports, they say. Hit a fastball. Okay. Let me step time. right into the box the here. Ball. Yeah, well, I That's did not hit too. the curveball. And I would not have hit that fucking curveball. Guy threw me curveball second pitch. Do you remember that? Did you ever see this, AJ? Oh, yeah. So didn't you didn't you turn around and ask him right away what was going on? Yeah, I motherfucked the catcher yeah. who called it. And then uh, I asked the ump to throw him out. And then I stepped back into the batter's box. And then he threw the fastball again. I found it. Mm-hmm. Thank you, sir. Please Bang. put that right there. Broke my thumb off the bat because it rattled so hard. Oh. And almost tore my hamstring running the first. Was out. <laughs> then the third time, same exact, same exact situation. Hit the ball. Bounces back. Overthrow to first. I end up on second yeah. with a slide. <laughs> Curtain call. I'm out of the game. Thanks That's my baseball experience, and it was all because of Ty and that right arm that I was prepared for it. Ty, you played baseball, right? Mm-hmm. Football as well? Did you ever throw the pigskin around? Oh, yeah. You've been spinning it today. Mm-hmm. Seems like you got a little bit more. What is it, a little bit more juice today? A little today? bit more mm-hmm. juice, a little more pep. Yeah. What's that all about? No, no Bud Lights last night? Wide. Wide, wide. And, you know, every once in a while, you just get the, uh, the fucking baby duke in your hand. Yeah. It's just like, okay, I, I feel like I'm spinning this thing today a little bit. We're going for a net yeah, over there? Yeah, is that what we're doing? Yeah. One of those three holes, any one of them, whichever one you want to hit, you can go for it. If Ty is able to put a ball into that net, we'll get 15 more people. Wow. Oh. $500 who retweet this video, say something nice to somebody, and put their cash tag in the same reply so we can pay you officially on Cash App. AJ, anything to say to old Ty before he lets it eat? Ty knows that he does not need any pump-up speech. He'll probably drain this first one. You don't need a pump-up speech, he said. Yeah, probably drain. Ty Schmidt out of Waterloo, Iowa. Get in. Ooh. Boom! How about what it? What did I say? He Boom. did drain the first one, Hawker. Dude, what did wow. I do? Well, shake your hand. Why How about it? 
Why they hey, grab you don't me? need him. Ty dropped down nice to throw. the platform, as they like to say. A little sidearm, a little slam. Hell oh, yeah. A little Rich Cannon release. Right. 15 people, five hunch. 15 other nice people, five job. hunch. Wow. Bud Light giving away beer money. Wow. Holy hell, what a winner Wednesday. <laughs> Woo! All right, ladies and gentlemen, George Kittle will take us home here. We talked to him yesterday. It is worth a listen. We can't thank you enough. We will see you manana. Big thanks to Lou and Rumo. All the boys, tomorrow's show is big. Huge. Huge. Be a friend, tell a friend. George Kittle is on right about now. Ladies and gentlemen, joining us now is a guy who, if you were building a team from scratch and you had to employ not only a, a cultivator of culture, sure. but a man to play tight end for you, that's not only going to be able to make miraculous catches, but also just Debo folks around. A man who's a consummate all-pro, one of the founders of Tight End University, a stallion out of Iowa, yeah. ladies and gentlemen, fucking George Kittle. Yeah! Wow. Thank you, Pat. The stallion compliment's honestly my favorite thing you just said about me. You are, though, Thank dude. You. you know, we get to watch you play football every single weekend. You're a fucking stallion, dude. <laughs> yeah. That catch that you made off your face in the bobble, Diggs wanted no parts of you running full speed, mm -hmm. head forward, and they, I do not blame him for that. Whenever you're able to pull off stuff like this, and obviously you just assume that, that you're supposed to catch it, well, I didn't even drop it to begin with. It's insane yeah. how big you are, how athletic you are. At what age did this happen? Did you grow late, or is this like high school all the way through now, you've always been the biggest, most athletic guy on the field? Oh, no, I was usually the smallest, the most frail. That okay. was the majority of my life growing up. No, I got, I had a, I grew two inches in college and put on 70 pounds. So that was kind of <laughs> my coming to. Okay, so you still have that I'm a small guy, chip on your shoulder mentality. Like, you, you know those, uh, the point guards that grow, and all of a sudden it was like 5'10", 5'9", mm -hmm. and then they're 6'4", 6 6'5", 6 still have the handles. Like, you still have all the mobility of a smaller guy it's unbelievable to watch you you're changing the tight end position congrats to you oh yeah. yeah now let's talk about the team you're on let's talk about the team you're on with shanahan we did in the trenches sure. we, we did in the trenches yesterday and all season mm -hmm. with uh, aq shipley and we see some of the play designs for the run game and you're a massive part of it all when shanahan's yeah. laying that all out is it like you all just buy in immediately because it works or is it the right people in there because it's a very run dominant fucking game plan and we're in a world where everybody wants to throw the rock all the time offensive linemen tight end wide receivers like you i ukes down to feel blocking like is it the people is it the scheme what do you think it is uh, i mean honestly it's a combination of both and you got to throw your mentality in there too like you can have like some of the most talented people in the world but they don't have the mentality that on every single run play they're going to block their asses off then a lot of those run plays don't work i mean you see like uh debo took a shallow uh 74 yards for the house to the house against seattle and you had a block downfield by me, and then you had a six-second block by Ayuk on their guy that runs a four one forty, and like you don't really coach that. That's just a mentality that you develop. And so having guys like that that go along with the scheme that you know, Coach Shanahan, uh, Coach Flurry, Coach Furster, they you know they put together for us that run game plan every single week. It's dense, and there's a lot going on to it, but you just got to trust the process. And you know the benefit of it, we, you know, we're in what like week 23 we've been running a lot of these plays for a while we've gotten pretty good at them so if they want to throw some new twists you know a new flavor onto something hey we just tell them to go for it and we'll make it happen yeah you guys ran this deuce counter tray back away from the tight end where earlier in the year it was towards Wild. you yeah it was a great, on like on like the two yard line it was yeah it was like, normally that's happening in the middle of the field i feel like and i only know this from in the trenches with this man aq shipley but he is literally they've broke down he has broken down your offense like every week like yeah the sophistication of this run game is just so much better than fucking seemingly everybody else in the NFL, other than this Philadelphia Eagles team who also has a very similar operation. Have you guys thought ahead about this Eagles game? This is like a lot of dream scenario. This is a dream matchup for a lot of football people. Defense is incredible. Offense is sophisticated and rolling. Have you thought about how big and how, like this is a massive moment obviously with two great teams, George. Ah, it's going to be really fun, isn't it? George, yeah. how are you always so calm? You're looking at the sky cam, middle of fucking divisional round. Look right, look left, little shrug, having a time of your life. You body a guy. Ha, ha, ha. Mm -hmm. You're mic'd up. Are you, you, <laughs> like, does the moment ever get to you? Do you ever think about how big it is? Or are you just enjoying it all? Oh, uh, yeah. I mean, it definitely hits you. But I think that's kind of why I, I just use my love of the game to get through those moments. It's just like, at the end of the day, I'm playing a kid's game, man. 
I can't believe it. Like, I, these are the moments I dreamed of when I was six years old, sitting on the pat back patio with my mom. So I'm like, hey, I'm going to go play in the NFL someday. She's like, damn right you are. Hey, and look at me now, playing in the NFL and the NFC, NFC Championship game, one game away from the Super Bowl in Philly. Link, you know, the link, insane fan base. They hate us. Just they just hate us because we're not the Eagles, and I love that about them. That's 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 the way a fan base should be. So yeah. I mean, I, I can't wait to go play to the link. Um, this is everything that you've ever wanted, everything you dreamed about. So might as well enjoy it, man. You think Purdy's got that same mentality? This dude hasn't even blinked, and let alone being a rookie quarterback. They're saying he's he's not even in conversation, I guess, for offensive rookie of the year. Which okay, I don't understand how that happens. He didn't play long enough in the season. They're saying whatever the case is, he has seemingly been dropped in and just been. He's unconscious almost. It's pretty good. What is that? What is that? Why is that? You think? And has he always been that way? Like I don't. He's only been there a year, I guess. So you don't really know him that much aside from that. But has he always been like that? Um, you know, from what I've gotten from Purdy, like ever since I met him as a like f as a rookie, so like eight months ago when he first showed up at OTAs. Um, you know, being now that I'm in year six, um, I try to you know I try to build a relationship with the rookies, but I always try to like you know I don't. I'm not, I just try to like chirp at them just a little bit here and there to see what their mindset's like. Are they going to shrivel up into a little ball? Or are they going to throw something back at me? And Purdy from day one, just right back at me. And I was like, all right, like you've got something to you. I respect the hell out of it. Let's see where this goes. Like, you know, you, you've got a good foundation. Let's see where this goes. And you get to training camp and he wins the number two spot as a rookie. Um, he's uh, slicing and dicing our defense. He's doing a great job in the preseason games. Like I said, wins the number two spot. And then we signed Jimmy back and, whatever that all that happened with our quarterback and stuff. But then he's just been waiting going against the number one defense in the NFL for like 13 weeks. And then he gets a shot and just talk about a kid who, Hey, his opportunity is right in front of him. He never knew he was going to get this opportunity, but it was right there and he was ready for it. And then he's just consistently been ready for it every single time. And yeah, he's made some crazy plays and his feet are wild. And the way he gets out of the pockets, honestly funny to watch. Cause I'm just like, what are you doing sometimes? But it <laughs> works. And so I'm just like, Hey dude, just go play football. Take care of, take care of the ball. And Hey, we're going to have fun doing it. He's done that. The turnover thing is the big conversation. Mm -hmm. Like, how has he not been confused? Like, how is he? Because a lot of these things, he has to make reads. And everybody's saying, well, the system is going to make him do that. It's like, he gets to his third read, and sometimes that's a 25-yard ball that he has to put right on the money. It's like, is every quarterback a system quarterback? If that's being considered a system quarterback, it's unbelievable. He's not really getting chatted about for the offensive rookie of the year, but he deserves it. And are you talking about his little hezzy? He hits a little hezzy. Every, it's, yeah, yeah, always. And everybody's like, ah, there's no way this – no, whoa, shit. And he gets the edge. Yeah. He's unbelievable. <laughs> He's been fun to watch, dude. He's going to be a story in the NFL. Everybody's going to think, and now this is going to be a story every draft. Remember, yep. mm -hmm. last pick of the draft, mm -hmm. he went on. I mean, this is a whole thing. He's, he's blazing a whole new story and a narrative in the NFL. He's fun to watch. Good dude. We love him. Oh, yeah, he's incredible. He's incredible. He's a dude. He's one of the boys. That's great news. Great hat, too, by the way. Shout out Will and Taylor. They got credentialed. They're going to Radio yeah. Row. Here we yeah. go. Hey. They did Here it. Here we go, hey. boys. They did it. I sent them a text of well wishes whenever they got into it. I'm like, boys, good luck out there. You know what I mean? This is uh, We're paying them $4.5 million. They told us we weren't allowed to use logos on still images. Yeah. So I just, huh. good luck out there. You're fighting a good fight, boys. <laughs> and they got in there. The boys are doing it. Love them. Ty has a question for you. Go Hawks. Yeah, George, too. My favorite one of Kirk's dogs of all time, uh, first and foremost, just seeing how good you are in the NFL just makes my fucking head explode knowing <laughs> how they used you while we were uh, in school at Iowa. That's neither here nor there. Um, speaking of Brock <laughs> Purdy, are you at yeah, all sure. concerned uh, of the you know uh, NFC championship? Does it worry you that, you know, the moment's going to maybe get too big for him. I mean, this guy never beat Iowa, you know, when he was at Iowa State. That's got to concern you a little bit, no? I mean, Iowa, you know, I will say he never beat Iowa, but Iowa always plays the love of their competition. So you never know if was Iowa State better and Iowa just played better or was Iowa State worse and Iowa played worse but still beat them. Hey, we got a that's lot of questions kind of, about Iowa football, by the way. That's, just, that's just kind of big. That's Big Ten football besides, like, three teams. And, uh, you know, just everyone just kind of plays the level of, you know, their opponent. Yeah, that is just is what it is. You know, um, Purdy, I think the best – one of the coolest things about Purdy, like, just if you look at his college career, he started 48 college football games, right? Uh, his first two years, he took, like, the NCAA by storm. And then his second two years, they were kind of hard. Um, he didn't win every single game. He lost some big ones, lost, like, the primetime games. But, like, for a quarterback to do that and then pick yourself back up and then show up the next week and play at a high level, throw five touchdowns, um, hey, one game you throw three picks, the next game you come back and you throw more touchdowns. Like, just to be able to come back from that um, 
that's what you know builds character and that's what makes you a really good football player because football humbles you and it humbles you quick man you can be riding the highest high of your entire life and then the next week you can fumble the ball in the last play of the game and lose your team uh your playoff chances and yeah you're the you should get cut and so like <laughs> this the the difference in football and being able to you know for Purdy does to, to pick himself up you know after a mistake or something like that just keep his confidence if you're confident in NFL like you are doing a really good job if you can keep that confidence because it is hard it is hard and it's a grind it's anxiety but if you can keep your confidence you can play at a high level I think people are forgetting that he's a rookie like I think yeah. people are viewing him as like a veteran backup like oh this guy's finally getting his opportunity yeah. it's like oh this guy just got no. here this dude just got to the NFL, and he's taking advantage of it. We love watching it. So many weapons on your offense, man. You all buy in. Debo back is a huge deal. Obviously. Matt, who's your favorite weapon? Fucking George. Besides me. Oh, Besides okay. Me. All right. We know. Yeah, we know. Come on. I don't want to say, I mean, because, you know, the guy, the big brain that runs the fullback position there is obviously a stud. Of course. Mm -hmm. the Harvard juice. guy. I mean, how do you not love the fucking juice? Yeah. Yeah. Debo's name is fucking Debo. Yeah, right? true. So like, that's pretty cool. That's super cool. You know what I mean? That is like super duper cool. Mm -hmm. McCaffrey. Yeah. Elijah, so good. I mean, there is just and Purdy. Fucking, he's a weapon. Yeah. I mean, we'll count oh, yeah. him as well. You love two, three. Yeah. Fucking Christian McCaffrey is a dog, dude. Mm -hmm. I do it. I do it. Him, not in Pro Bowler, obviously. Fucking not good enough. Uh, <laughs> not not an All Pro. Nope. Not good enough. You know what I mean? Nothing like that. <laughs> He got traded to your team, and then he became like the – he was throwing, catching, running. What, is it just like natural as soon as he got like fish to water with the San Francisco 49ers, like he's supposed to be there? Or why do you think it all works so quickly? Uh, Christian's just – he's really good at football. He just <laughs> he does it better He does it better than what, uh, what most other people do. It looks like it comes a lot easier to him than anyone else. Like I feel like I still – like I, I have to try really hard, and he does try really hard every single day. But some of the stuff that he does, you're just kind of like – Come on, man. Like, yeah. chill. Yeah. But, like, that's just – that's Christian. But I would say uh, my favorite weapon is Trent Williams. But, you know, Hell that's yeah. for us big brain guys. AQ has a question for you. Jesus. AQ. Let's go. Hey, in the play down by – I think it was maybe the one with Debo early in the game. You guys ran the counter trade. You did, like, a jab in, jab out, and got back to Van Der Esch. Yeah. It was unbelievable. We out. Yeah, it was unbelievable. It was unbelievable. Yeah. And it, I mean, it wasn't like crazy when you look at the film, but I mean, it ends up being a six, seven, eight yard game, whatever it was. One thing I love about when I watch your guys' offense, you guys always have one little wrinkle. Everybody's running the same shit, but you guys always have one little thing. It might be IU cracking the first stack back, or it might be one little thing to try and get plus one on the front side. For you guys, when you come into game planning, how awesome is that when you show up every week and there's one new thing? It just kind of keeps it interesting, right? Yes, except when sometimes our run installs are like 65 pages for first and second down. That gets aggressive sometimes. <laughs> but at this point in the year, we've run most of them. Like we're pretty familiar with them. And there's only like there's only a handful of new plays, I would say, with like like confusing wrinkles. But it does make it interesting. And they're just like one of the things I love about this offense is it doesn't put anyone in a terrible position like to succeed. Like everyone's in a position to succeed. Like one of my least favorite plays in the history of the NFL, this run play, it, we call it punch or defenses call it crunch. And everybody just Wham. goes hip to hip and tries to drive block the D lineman in front of them. And 99% of the time it leaves a tight end one-on-one -on -one with the Nick Bosa defensive end. And he just gets absolutely murdered and has no chance. And that's what like 60% of the NFL teams do. And I'm just happy to be in an offense where we're going to run outside zone. So if he jumps inside, Trent Williams is going to kill him. If he jumps outside, hey, you're going to be able to throw him out. We're going to run gap scheme. And if you get a six technique, you can easier release around him instead of trying to eat a six technique. And then, hey, your pulling guard will just kick him out. You go up to the backer, wheel him out, and that's an easier block for everybody. It's just like we're putting guys in positions to succeed. And it honestly blows me away that not everybody does some of the stuff that we do because I don't really think it's that complicated. Doesn't awesome. it just make sense whenever AQ was laying it out all year? It's like, oh, he's setting him up to have left. Leverage. Like, oh, we are yes. adding leverage into the actual play design. And sometimes what we've learned from AQ is they'll even motion somebody in. All right, let's get a linebacker out of the way where that would normally be sitting. Now we got a safety in here. Oh, and this safety is coming from over here. We're going to run guy from over here. So it's just natural leverage already there. It's just like it's a sophisticated run game. And the one that AQ was talking about here is uh, on this Debo run. This is your little pump fake game. Obviously, everybody sees his ass over here. You got a little shimmy here, a little bait him in there, right? Make him jump. 
But yeah, there there's six sex there's six techniques for just eating the sea gap all day. And so when you're running, you know, we're and like we're see we're pulling Trent and uh and Banksy. That's just so much fun. Counter T. Um yeah, yeah, there you go. But yeah, so we're just running basically, you know, counter power. And now Trent Williams gets to be the lead blocker on a linebacker. Totally. And then Debo gets a one on one with a safety. And I mean, I will say that's a hell of a play by Wilson. He's a yeah. he's a good football player. A lot of, um, a lot of but, good football players in the NFL. You guys seemingly mm-hmm. have your way with a lot yeah. of them, though. It seems to be going your way. Early in the year, you thought this team was going to be like this? I mean, just what we had to develop was just, you know, like you have to relearn how to win sometimes. Yeah. And, like, yeah. that's just, that's a big part of it. We started the year, uh, you know, Trey Lance is his, his first true starting stop, and so our, our offense was a little bit different just because of some of the things that Trey could do. Um, and so we were learning how to do with him, and then – a Trey gets hurt. Jimmy's back in. Jimmy hasn't practiced with the team. He's had like one week of practice and then he gets thrown in. We honestly played terrible on what was that Sunday night football, Monday night football against the Broncos. But then after that, we've been playing at a pretty high level. We've lost one other time since. I mean, I think we lost. Yeah. Our last last was versus the Chiefs, but it just took us our office a little bit to I don't know, find your identity. And our defense has been playing at a high level, kept us in all those games. But um, it took us a little bit. And now that we've got that identity, everybody's playing at the level they need to be playing at. I mean, it's just fun to be rolling right now and scoring a lot of points. Yeah, not only scoring a lot of points, too. Your defense is not allowing a lot of points. And I was at that Seattle game. Hey, I was at the Seattle game. I like how much your team talks shit. I enjoy oh, yeah. You know what I mean? I enjoy that about your – it seems like the Niners are like a team of – bunch of dogs mm-hmm. just everywhere across the board. The boombox <laughs> thing coming out, fucking aw- – yep. it just – Unreal. From the beginning all the way until the end, it's like the Niners are here almost. It's like a whole thing, and you guys are awesome to watch. Musty television. Uh, only $49 million or something. Watch you guys, I think. That's it? Yeah. Numbers are down. Ah, Jeez. Next time. Bummer. I'll, yeah. do, I'll try to do something dramatic this week to get nice. the ratings up again. Hey, that Joker tattoo, we talked right before we started this whole thing. That thing got a good shot on national TV. I think oh, yeah. a, a lot of convos that took place were like, is that guy have a Joker? Oh my God! Yes, it's like he the, does. Is That's that the sweet. nicest Joker yeah. tattoo of all time? Your your ink in art is fantastic. Connor has a question for you. Yeah, George David Lombardi, beat writer for the Niners, came on. And he talked about how like Nick Bosa and Trent Williams started doing you know post game you know conversations, sharing some game, and then you would jump in there and Fred Warner. Mm-hmm. How awesome is it to kind of talk with guys who are the best player at their position in the NFL to kind of learn from them on what you could do to make yourself better because realistically you guys have five six seven guys who are the best in the league at their position i mean um i'm gonna first off Trent williams nick bose are like on a different level than like almost everyone else like i throw aaron donald up there and you know maybe mahomes like there's a couple and like there's a couple guys that are up there but nick bose and Trent williams are both just elite of the elite and i will say it's like Trent williams I sit next to him on an air on the airplane. I sit right behind him and the amount of film that he watches on every single defensive end. And he breaks down all of their moves. Hey, this is their main pass through bat pass rush move. This is their counter uh, to whatever you try to do to stop their move. And then some guys have like a third counter. He knows all of their moves. And so then he knows how to set them up and then he eliminates all their counters and allows them to only do their main move. And then since he's a better athlete, stronger, faster, has ballerina feet, he just dominates you. And that's the like that's the film you watch of Trent Williams. Like he knows everybody's move and all their counters. And you have Nick Bosa who has, hey, he has leverage on you because he's like six three. He's stronger than you because he squats seven hundred pounds. Uh, he's got great hands. He does all the little cool hand slaps and all the Aaron Donald knife fighting stuff. He does all that cool stuff. And so then when you combine that speed, that strength, and that agility, okay, good luck blocking him. And so then when they sit down and talk about it, you're just kind of like, I can't do everything that they do but I can hear their thought process and it can change the way I think about my job. And then I can learn something from them that way. Like I'm not going to learn like Trent William. He does his ninja moves where he shoots off the ball. Like he's going to block you. And then he just jumps out of the way and throws you down. Um, I might try that. Maybe not this week, <laughs> but I might try that. Uh, Who knows? I don't know. You you busted out not this week, I guess. Then the next time would be the Super Bowl. Yeah. I mean, not yeah, a bad uh-huh. time to give it a go. Smart. You know what I mean? You're sitting in that inner circle there learning some moves from Trent. Why not take it to the biggest stage that you possibly can? Last question here for you, George. Um, Bose is a jungle cat. This isn't the question. But that's what my <laughs> – that, that was my – Diggs has a question for you, and it's going to be a good question. But you brought up Bosa there being 6'3 and squatting 700 pounds. Watching him from where I was standing at the booth – he sprawled out in that sprinter stance, dude. 
He's fuck. He looks like a junk, like an actual panther out there at the end of the thing. Like uh, that's a good one. He does. It's fucking unbelievable. And then he's just faster than everybody. Freak. Stronger than everybody. And he's absolutely jocked. jocked. He's jocked right now. What a guy. What a specimen. Has a chef, a nutritionist. And it appears to be working for old Paisan. Go ahead, Tone. George, I need you to debunk something because the internet was saying uh, that you were cheating and you were ineligible oh, on yeah. the uh, bobble catch. Will you let them I know? I saw that, that, man. Will you let Gosh, them know they're Dallas wrong? Fans are, they're so angry. I mean, everyone's like, well, there's not enough guys in the line of scrimmage. Okay, at the top of the formation, we have a wide receiver on the line of scrimmage. You have our five offensive linemen, and then me, and then we're in a, we I mean, we're in a West <laughs> set, Queen set, whatever you want to call it. Juice is, hey, was Juice a little tight? Sure but he wasn't covering me up. And so then I'm an eligible receiver. So let's stop complaining about the rules and saying that we're cheating. And you guys are just fun. I love fans. Yeah, you guys fans. Are fun. Hey, Hell yeah. The game's getting dissected at different levels these days. A lot more yeah. people, a lot more eyes. And all of them are saying you guys are awesome to watch. We appreciate you taking time to join us here, George. Wow. Pat, it's a pleasure. Thanks for drinking Bud Light. Why? Awesome. Hey, hell I'll yeah. I'll drink my Gatorades. Yeah, you're in the middle of a... I'm retired. You're in the middle of a very important time. Yeah, yes. close it out. Could you imagine yeah. the same? Wait, Pat, is that your WrestleMania photo up front? Uh, yeah, with Steve. You're in it. Maybe. I said I was just two rows behind you, man. I wonder if you're actually in this. I was Folks, screaming my screaming for you. I appreciate that love too. You showed it to me before uh, the match, after the match, and during the match. You're the man for that. I appreciate that. How about me fucking with Steve Austin chugging beers on the ring? Like, could what? you imagine? It was a joke. Oh, dude. No, I can't even imagine. You're probably, you've never felt so cool in your entire life, have you? The coolest, dude. I'm standing up there. <laughs> oh, my God. Yeah. Here we go. <laughs> Just no big deal. Oh, it was amazing. Pat, I got a close, I got a close second for you, though. I was sitting in the stands with Stone Cold's brother. And he was just what? housing him with me, and it was so much fun. <laughs> okay, so you're drinking with so, the, the Austin family. What? Oh yeah, dude. Me and Kev, we we're we we're having a great time. Uh, he was he was like eight beers deep by the time I showed up for the first match. He was eight deep, and I was like, <laughs> dude, you're gonna have a great day. Did he sound like uh, Steve? Why? Was, was there a lot of that? Oh, uh, it was fantastic, dude. I was it was that that was one of the best moments. I'll see you at uh, SoFi. You're gonna be in L.A. I don't know, George. Is it, you know, it's maybe, a loaded question. George, we don't know, George. You don't <laughs> know. Maybe. Hey, we'll sit next to each other, maybe. Huh? Maybe get a suite, maybe? No, I like to be in the ring. You know, if we just put a table out there and we can throw someone through it. Why? I'm in. What? Yeah, that should happen, right? I think at this point it, it needs to happen. With You had the Goldberg shirt, obviously, the Steve Austin shirt. I believe there was, uh, I believe there's obviously been more. Both of us massive wrestling marks, bro. Massive. That should have already taken place. I assume there's already something in the works. I, I, I hope there is something in the works. I don't know of anything yet, but if you hear of anything, you, you have my Twitter number, Instagram. You got me. Just hit me up. Kittle's going over. I don't do the booking, but yeah. okay, we will yeah. certainly put you've it got a, You've got a good influence there, Pat. Ladies and gentlemen, <laughs> I do not. I do not. George Kittle, you're the man. Yeah. Good luck. Yeah. See you, fellas. Thanks for having me. See you, George. Appreciate you, buddy.